All right, welcome back everyone. I move that we reconvene this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds Commissioner Sanchez. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes, we are back. Um, and we are moving into a string of special use matters, starting with calendar number 232-22-S. This will be Councilor Nick Patikas. As Councilor gets settled, I'm gonna go ahead and read the Department of Planning and Development's recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed barbershop. If anyone is on to object to this matter, please just raise your hand and we will uh, get you promoted. Okay, Councilor Fatigas, whenever you're ready. Thank you, sir. Again, Nick Fatigas, uh, on behalf of the applicant, yeah. West Town. Yeah, one second. Barber okay. Supply LLC. I'm just making sure, Nick, really quick, whether the people with their hand raised are for this matter. I am thinking that they're not. Um, but let me go ahead and confirm. So, um, I know Dion Marshall, your matter 146, so you don't need to have your hand raised. Um, however, there's a Nicole, let me promote you to panelists, Nicole, and you can say whether you're objecting or what your um, role is here. Hey, Nicole, you're promoted. Can you just unmute and let us know if you're objecting or what your role is here? Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Nicole. This is not the barbershop that I was opposed to. It's actually the location at 8128 Southwestern. So oh, my okay. mistake. That's okay. No worries. Um, so just to help you out, that will be... Um, Yeah, one second, Nicole. So that's matter 146. That's a continued matter. So you've got a bit left in the call before we get to that, just as a heads up. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, Councillor, go right ahead with 232. Thank you again, Nick Fatikas, for the record. I'm on uh, here on behalf of the applicant, West Town Barber and Supply, LLC. The applicant has a contract to purchase the grade level retail unit at the subject property, again, located at 1907 West Chicago Avenue. And the applicant's proposing to establish a uh, barber shop within that space. In order to do so, the applicant is seeking a special use because there's at least one other um, licensed personal service use within a thousand feet of the subject property. I have two witnesses uh, testifying this afternoon on behalf of our applicant, Mr. Gerald Scaffa, and our MAI appraiser, Mr. Joe Ryan. Um, and so, Gerald and Joe, if you want to, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you want to yeah, swear sorry. the two witnesses in. Yeah, first up, um, Gerald Scaffa, can you state your name and address, please, spelling your last name? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, we can. Okay, Gerald Scaffa, S-C-A-F as in Frank A. I'm at 625 Edinburgh Lane in Prospect Heights, Illinois, 60070. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we've got Joe Ryan, who we haven't talked to yet today. So Joe, can you please state your name and address? Joseph M. Ryan, MAI, President, LaSalle Appraisal Group with offices 
9455 South Hoyn Avenue in Chicago. Thank you. And you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And we acknowledge your expertise based off of many past appearances. Thank you, Chairman. Great. Thank you. Okay, Chairman, uh, or I'm sorry. Okay, Gerald, um, you're the managing member of the applicant, West Town Barber and Supply LLC. Yeah. And again, you're proposing to locate a personal service use within the existing property at 1907 West Chicago, correct? Yeah. In terms of uh, background, you uh, have held a cosmetology uh, license or certification for 22 years. Correct. Yes. And actually, for the last six years, you've also held a Illinois barber's license. Is that right? That's correct. And in addition to uh, overseeing the proposed uh, barbershop's day-to-day -day operations, you'll actually also be providing services. Is that right? Yeah. And those services include hair cutting, styling, and washing, as well as beard washing, uh, trimming, and styling uh, as well, correct? Yeah. And in terms of operations, you plan on hiring uh, five to six licensed professionals to help you on, on that day-to-day -day basis? Yes, I am. And uh, the barbershop will operate um, Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and on Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Is that right? Yeah. So closed regularly on Mondays, right? Yeah. And Gerald, is it your understanding that my office provided the uh, board with witness statements on your behalf? Yeah. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements we provided? Yes, it would be. Thank you. Uh, Joe, um, you or the scope of your assignment in this case was to evaluate whether the requested special use met the general criteria for special use approval. It was, yes. And you physically inspected the subject property as well as the surrounding area? I did. You prepared a written re uh, report summarizing your findings and conclusions, correct? I did, yes. And Joe, briefly, it's your uh, general opinion that all of the approval criteria are being met with this application, right? I examined them individually in the report, and yes, they do. Uh, it's, is it also your understanding that my office filed a copy of that written report with the board? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the findings and conclusions contained in the report? Yes, it would. Uh, Chairman, that concludes the applicant's case in chief. We'd be happy to answer any questions you or the board members have. Uh, about the project. Great, thanks so much. And Mr. Scappa, can you remind me one more time what your intended hours are? Uh, yes, from uh, Tuesday to Friday, we'll be open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, thank Close you. Down. Great, thanks so much, sir. Um, any, any questions from the board? Okay, thanks for coming in today and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thank everyone. you. Okay. Now we're now going to go to calendar number 233-22-S. Um, before I read the department's recommendation, first, if anyone is on to object, please raise your hand. Um, second, I believe, um, Alderman Talia Ferro, this is the matter you're on for. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, great. So, just to confirm, because I think we have an agenda typo, is this matter in the 29th Ward, Alderman? It is. It's 6006 West North Avenue. Great. That's what I thought, too. Um, so I'm just going to uh, revise the, the where the agenda says Ward 39. I'm going to revise it on the record that it should be Ward 29. Okay. Um, and with that, Alderman, would you like to speak? I'm going to read DPD's recommendation first, but would you like to speak at the beginning of the matter or the end of the matter? Um, I would I would like to speak in the beginning of the matter. Okay, perfect. Um, so let me get the recommendation on and make sure we have counsel and then we'll go straight to you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, so for 233-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. And Councillor Walker, do we have you? Yes, I'm present. Great. Councillor, is it okay with you that I have the alderman speak first? That's fine. And good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so Alderman Talia Farrow, could you please just state your name and role in the city? Um, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. My name is Chris Talia Farrow. 
Um, I am the alderman in the 29th ward in the city of Chicago. Great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay. So what brings you here today? Um, I am I'm here speaking in objection to uh, the proposed uh, opening of a barbershop um, at 6006 West North Avenue. Uh, but first, uh, I'd like to thank you, um, uh, Chairman and members of the board, uh, for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, one of the things that I've, I've always tried to do um, in the 29th Ward is, is to really support businesses. Um, uh, I, I still believe uh, firmly that, uh, you know, the west side of Chicago and, and particularly in my ward, uh, we are going to be more balanced and as, as well as uh, we're going to thrive with small to medium sized businesses. Um, although we do have, uh, you know, two multi, multi-million dollar or even billion dollar uh, businesses in our ward, uh, what allows our ward to thrive and, and is, is the nature of the small businesses that are within the ward. So um, I always lend my hand to support um, our, our small businesses and medium-sized businesses that, that are throughout my ward. Um, but one of the things that, that leads me to object into this particular, app, um, particular applicant is um, I, I have in my ward, just from the 5600 block where my ward begins at Central Avenue, uh, right to right where my office is at 6200 West North Avenue, uh, which is about six blocks. I, I have a total of 11 uh, barbershops and, and hair salons. Um, that's not including the number of, you know, um, nail salons, uh, which I didn't include in that number. Um, and the, um, the nail salons and the, uh, the nail technician um, academies or schools. Uh, and I think it's just an over, in my opinion, it's just, um, it's just too many for uh, that small condensed area. Although one of these barbershops is across the street um, in Oak Park, um, I'm, I'm starting to be a little bit more concerned about the businesses and about the number of uh, uh, barbershops and, and hair salons that are um, in such a small, in a, a, a small, um, uh, should I say distance um, in close proximity to one another. Uh, and they, in, in some instances, they have been very problematic in my ward. Um, and on, the, on North Avenue itself, uh, we had a shooting um, where a person was murdered in the barbershop on North Avenue. Um, although it was on the Oak, side, Oak Park side of the street, uh, we've certainly had some issues on the north side of the street as well on North Avenue. Um, so for that simple reason alone, uh, not necessarily the violence, um, because that, you know, although it, um, there has not been a whole lot uh, of violence in our barbershops and hair salons. Uh, I'm more concerned about uh, the close proximity to one another um, within that short distance. So uh, with that, um, Chairman, I, I do object because we do have uh, a lot of barbershops and hair salons uh, within that six blocks, six block radius. And, I'll, and, and may I add, my the, the community has spoken to me about it as well and have objected. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. Um, and because you're here in objection, are you able to stay on for the extent of the counselor giving the matter in case um, the board has questions of you after the, um, the applicant gives their case in chief? I am. Okay. Wonderful. So, what I'm going to do process-wise is we're going to have the applicant give their case in chief. We're going to ask questions of the applicant. Then we're going to revert back to alderman as objector um, in order to ask any questions of the alderman at that time um, as applicable. And then depending on if there's questions, we'll circle back to the applicant who can rebut that um, and close out. And um, so with that, I, I just want to give now Councilor Walker, the floor is yours to lead your case in chief. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate that. So my name is uh, Attorney Walker, Tamara A. Walker. My offices are at 1016 West Jackson Boulevard in Chicago, Illinois. And as stated, I'm here today on behalf of Shug Sharp's Timeless Touch, LLC. And the owner of that location is, or that business rather, is Mr. Bashir Jahid Bari. He is the owner applicant of the address, the subject address that you have on your screen, 6006 West North Avenue. He's seeking approval, as you all well know, 
of a special use application in order to establish a barbershop uh, that's also uh, will be used as a hair salon and it's located within a thousand feet as the alderman stated of other existing personal service use businesses. So I have with me today to testify um, Mr. Jahad Bari, as well as a land use expert of Mr. Kareem Musawir. And if I may be permitted, Mr. Chairman, to preliminarily address some of the objections raised. I, I do intend to address most of them through the testimony, but if I, I wanted to give a, a brief little statement, if permitted, Chairman. Yep, go ahead, Councilor. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate that. So to the Alderman's concern, as we will present in our testimony today and throughout our presentation, um, we, uh, Mr. Barry has a already built up clientele that includes um, some very notable people throughout Chicago, including some celebrities. Um, he often does hair services for weddings and very personalized service. As you saw, the facilities are set up in a very clean and professional way. So I believe that all businesses should be allowed to thrive, whether there are other businesses who can also thrive. It's clearly a business that clients feel very personal about who their barbers are. So despite the fact that there may be other barbershops or other services available within a close proximity, people want their particular person. That's who you form a particular bond with. And oftentimes in the black community, especially barbershops and beauty shops can be a community foundation where people meet and address social needs, social concerns. Um, so for that reason, we respectfully uh, intend to present reasons why we should overcome the alderman's objection. Perfect, thank you, Counselor. Um, so with that, do you wanna get um, your, your the applicant's testimony on? Yes, I would like to call him uh, now. Great, it, to ease the process, um, um, how about I swear in both the applicant and Kareem, and then you can just go from there. Yes, that's fine, thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, so um, Mr. Bashir Jihad Bari, will you please state your name and address, spelling your last name? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yes, my name is Bashir Jahan Bari. It's B A S H I R. Last name is J I H A D hyphen B A A R E E. And my address is 317 South Campbell Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60612. Great, thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great, okay. Um, now, Kareem, uh, Mr. Musawir, will you please yes, give your name and address? Kareem Musawir at 221 North LaSalle Street. I'm land use planner and zoning consultant in Chicago. Thank you. And, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. And we acknowledge um, Mr. Musawir's expertise based off the many past appearances to the board. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Counselor, go right ahead. All right. I'd like to call my first witness, Mr. Bash Bashir Jihad Bari. And he's already stated his name for the record. I can have him do it again. Um, can you please state your name and spell your name again, sir, just to make sure for the record. Yes, my name is Bashir Jahad Bari, B-A-S-H-I-R. Last name is J-I-H-A-D hyphen B-A-A-R-E-E. -E. And apart from the subject address of 6006 West North Avenue, what is your address? 317 South Campbell Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60612. Okay, and you are the owner and operator of applicant Shug Sharp's Timeless Touch LLC that's located at 6006 West North Avenue? Yes, I am. All right, and you're coming before the Board of Appeals today, the Zoning Board of Appeals seeking approval of your application to establish a barbershop that's located within a thousand feet of an existing personal service use that's located in a B1-1 uh, neighborhood shopping district? Yes. Okay, so now let's get to your personal background a little bit. Um, it's true you've been cutting hair for over 30 years? Yes. And you started off in your home before you were even licensed, is that correct? Yes. And you've been a licensed barber for over five years now, is that right? This is true. Okay, and you've worked at several barber shops since being licensed um, yes. throughout Chicago? Yes. And what about um, any other places? Have you also worked in Elgin and in Rockford in barbershops as a licensed barber? Yes, I have. I okay. Also, I also before operating as, as a barber, I've owned barbershops as well. Okay. How many barbershops did you own? Three. Three? Yes. Where, where were those located? 
in uh, Rockford, Illinois, church, uh, 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 two downtown, uh, Rockford, Illinois, one on the north side of Rockford, Illinois. Okay. Now, also, uh, during the pandemic, when businesses were shut down, is it true that you found an alternate way to still be of use as a barber? Yes, well, I was called up, I was called upon upon the city to be, well, I, I'm actually the surgeon's doctor of Chicago. So I, work, I currently work in the medical district right now. So I have two hospitals in the area I am. And I'm also referred by doctors to other doctors and surgeons and things like that. So during the pandemic, I was awarded a badge to be able to work during the pandemic to work for uh, the city workers, um, the um, city of well, some of the some officials, city workers, police officers, uh, mandatory workers like doctors, um, medical staff, things like that. So I had the um, I had the badge from the uh, what is that? Uh, I had a governmental badge to be able to come outside and operate and work to to, uh, to service mandatory workers. Okay, so you were deemed essential. Your services that you provided were deemed essential, and you were providing these services to essential workers like doctors, city employees, medical personnel, because barbershops were shut down at that time. Is that correct? Yes, I was. I was able to travel and operate, either work at a per, working at their personal space or operate at a, at a space that was only um, committed for two people at, at a particular time with the proper uh, apparatus and um, um, equipment to be able to uh, fight COVID. Okay. Right. So you were you put yourself at personal risk to be of service. Is that a fair statement? Yes, this is true. I had to be back and I also had to be monitored and, and uh, tested and vaccinated by the by the uh, city and um, UIC and also um, um, Rush Hospital. Okay. So it's fair to say that you're very well versed in the post COVID standards as it relates to personal services. Yes, I am. I'm currently I'm current I'm currently on a, on a on a uh, staff, and I have to uh, be basically revived on uh, COVID standards. Like, like, as right now, we're going through the monkeypox stage right now to see if it's going to be uh, contagious during 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 my uh, tonsorial services. Okay. Now, is it true you growing up you started cutting hair before you were licensed? So, is it true you've always dreamed of being a barber? always dreamed of being a barber. This is something I've been doing all my, my entire life. Before I've done anything else in my life, I started off cutting hair. Cutting hair was my, it was my ability to buy my first everything in life. Okay. And because of your passion, you've been able to build up a, a very good following, a good clientele. Is that correct? I, I, amazing following. I'm from from, from, uh, from Iowa, from uh Freeport, Illinois, to Beloit, Wisconsin, to Madison, Wisconsin, all the way back down to uh, Carpenterville, Illinois. I have an extremely large clientele, mostly professionals. If you can, you can pull my name, Google my book, see them, apps like that. I have over maybe three or 4,000, um, um, what do you call those? Um, comments. Yes, I have a lot. I have a lot of uh, people that give testimony that are public and Googleable about my services. Right. Now, uh, you often work weddings, providing services to members of the wedding party. Yes, I do weddings. I do. Um, I do. Uh, bar mitzvahs. I've done um, uh, religious events. I, I do also go into the hospitals and also do some of the children that have been hurt. And I do um, elderly people that can't walk into the um, businesses that I do have contracted to do at old folks homes, stuff like that, since I'm certified to be uh, COVID friendly or, or okay. should I say protected by it. Right. So it's fair to say that your existence in this ward would not take away because you already have an established clientele. Is that correct? Not at all. What I'm trying to do is come into the come into the community with one, with my own staff and clientele, and also be able to bring up and teach some of the young guys from the neighborhood and start to become barbers. Or because since COVID had happened, a lot of people have learned to uh, they have learned to detour from their actual dreams in life. And I want to give people a chance to be able to continue those dreams, but use barbering as a stepping stone, as it has been for me. Because I, I also do other things as well as barbering. Okay. So now you have seven barbershop workstations towards that end. So you can provide workspace for other people who want to be barbers. Is that right? Yes. And I'm also, and I'm also continuing my education to become a licensed instructor. So I'll be teaching phone for what I want to do is eventually be able to bring a barber school into that area. Hopefully if I'm allowed to. Okay, great. 
And what would be your hours of operation at the business if allowed to open? It would be Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7. And from on Saturdays, it'd be 9 to 5. Okay. And now, uh, what about Sunday and Monday? Sunday and Monday will be closed for cleaning and, and um, cleaning and um, just basically servicing the business for whatever. Um, also, we'll be saying that we'll be doing educated classes or things like that if allowed to by the city. If not, we'll just be having to close down for, you know, just for cleaning and if and uh, rec- uh, relaxation for the, uh, for the staff. So you also work as a mentor to your staff and to young men in the community in the area? I do. I also work with Larry uh, Larry Roberts, uh, Barber College on the South South Chicago, which I'm licensed through to be a licensed educator. So I also have nephews and other young people who are, are into the barbering, going into the barbering um, field, considering there a lot of them were detoured with their economical uh, dreams before during the pandemic. So they felt like barbering was a little bit something that, can, that they can use right now to, to uh, take care of themselves. And they are in school. So right now I go up to the school and I teach uh, off and on. I get pointers. So I hopefully be to be able to incorporate those students in my in my in my establishment soon if I'm allowed to or I have to move somewhere else. Okay, so let's talk about the facility a little bit more. So, in addition to the seven stations, workstations that you have uh, inside the building, you also have a reception area. Is that correct? Yes. And you have um, wash areas, other areas to be able to provide the service. Correct. Yes. Yes, I have a private. I have a private bathroom area. I have um a back a back office. I have a place to to, to be to counsel my to counsel barbers. I have a I have a relaxation area. I don't have like the the average one room barber shop. I have it built for safety, cleanliness, and hygienic um standards. All right, and let's talk about the parking. The strip mall that you're located in, you have about sixteen off off street parking spaces. Correct. 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 Okay. And would that be sufficient for the number of people that you intend on being in your business at any one time? That's very, that's, that's more than I need for a business, at, uh, more than I need because we do, I, I mostly do appointments to my clients. I don't really have a lot of walk-in clients unless the, uh, the, the community would, would like us to be that way. We can also do that as well, but we're mostly going to be doing appointment only um the way that that was set up so we have is enough parking and we also as and it also coincides with the beauty stuff it's a beauty shop that's in the facility and it's also a mini mall a market in the facility that the best thing I, I feel will be coincide with my business where we, it, we all can make money hand in hand where we all be sharing the clientele and the money that'll be um purchased in that area because a hair, a hair salon, next, a hair, a barber shop next to a beauty supply is a win-win for two businesses, and then everyone has to eat. So I already talked to those people in that area already, and they were more welcoming than anything. Have you personally had anyone um, give you an objection? Has anyone ever said we don't want this business around? No, I haven't. Okay, and then uh, we obviously had to go through the posting requirements. Did anyone in the community? ever send you anything or post anything on the door of this proposed site that they objected? I never heard anything that negative towards my business being um, coming to that area until today. Okay. And just to be clear, you noted that there was a beauty supply or a beauty shop in your facility. Were you referring to the strip mall or are you referring to your actual facility? Oh. No, in the strip mall, there is a beauty okay. supply store where people come to and they buy their hair and their beauty supply needs they take home. Gotcha. Also, people right, also with barbers, with barber being in the area, barbers have to buy their supplies and also they help sell clients their needs to that help to help uh, take care of their hair, skin, and things like that. So they will also help people purchase stuff from that business, even though they would be they would be in a different business. Gotcha. So you're saying that your presence there would help enhance the business uh, of the beauty supply that we see that sign listed in the strip mall. Our barbershop was it, it would definitely be a gathering place, considering that I have a lot of I have a lot of uh, clients that are essential workers right behind, right in front of my establishment, uh, what's that in front of my establishment, on the corner of Ash of Austin. There's a um a car hire store called Cons. I've been normal people for the last maybe 35 years of my life. I actually own the, know the lady where very very well. She's welcomed me up a business as well because most of my clients here comes to her store and they buy their car hardwares and they buy their construction clothes and things like that. Also, with those guys needing hair, 
I mean, needing things for supplies for them and their families, also food and also quick things like that. Right. That corner can feed, that corner can clothe them, groom them, service them as far as their hair, hair, their hair skin, and um, needs, and also feed them. So I don't see any reason, uh, reason why anyone can't um, be satisfied in that corner in more than one way. Got you. So you're, what you're saying is that you intend on helping the businesses, not taking away from the pre-existing businesses in the area. Yes, I believe hand-to-hand business is, is, will, will, will be a very, very productive um, a part of that community if we were able to be allowed to come to that corner. I believe it will be a powerful statement in that corner. On top of it, I'm a very established um person in Chicago as well. And I know they'll bring a lot of very more professional and more established clients that would like to come to that area that haven't been able to come to that area or even know about the area. Right. Okay. Now you uh, did meet with the alderman previously and he shared some of the same objections that he did here today. He spoke with me about those objections. He didn't give me the actual one that he said to date with a personally one. He more so said that it was the community, but I haven't heard any of that from the community. I've, I've talked to several people in the that have been the back the, the, the back blocks in the neighborhoods and that have had those letters that the investigator has uh, set out to talk to the community. I talked to some of the people personally. I talked to the people along the backside of the barbershop. I also serviced the staff at the Export Fitness in the Brickyard Mall over in that area. Mm-hmm. And I also have an aunt that owns property in that area. And I've been living in that area since I was eight years old and I'm 45 years old. So I know majority of the area personally from growing there and actually going to Bifer School that used to be established. It's actually a John Hay, I believe, that's on Central and Iowa. So I've been in that area and with my deal with my family for over four decades. Okay. Got you. So you've well researched this particular dream that you're following. Is that correct? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. All right. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any further questions of this witness. I can move on to the next. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And before we go on to um, Mr. Musawir, are there any questions uh, from the board for Mr. Jahadbari? Okay, Counselor, go right ahead. Thank you. So I'd next call Kareem Musawir. Yes. All right, Mr. Musawir, can you please state your name for the record? Yes, Kareem Musawir. I'm a land use and zoning consultant at 221 North LaSalle Street. And you've testified in that capacity many, many times before this board, correct? That's correct. All right. I had a different voice then. I'm sorry, say that one more time? I had a different voice then because I recently had a bronchial infection. Ah, well, your voice is still powerful and commanding all the same. So, (laughs) So moving to this assignment, your scope here was to determine whether the requested special use would comply with the criteria in place for special uses set forth in the Chicago zoning ordinance, correct? That's correct. And in order to do that study, you physically inspected the subject property in the surrounding area, right? Yeah, yes. And as a result, you prepared a written report that summarized your findings and conclusions. Yes, I did. And your report has been submitted to the board, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Now, with respect to the special use standards, do you believe that this project meets the standards for approval of an application for special use? I do. And And, I'm sorry, go ahead. And the reason is because, okay, so there there are, as the alderman indicated, there are some other uh, small barber shops and beauty salons in the area. Uh, One uh, a block away on in each direction, but uh, the, the issue here is whether the establishment of this facility will have a detrimental effect on those businesses. And I don't believe it would because of the fact that the applicant is already an established clientele that he's bringing to the neighborhood, that he's bringing to this shop. All right. Um, is there anything else that supports your opinion that you'd like to testify about? Yes. Well, it's in, it's, in a, it's in a B1 district, which would ordinarily allow the business, except for the fact of the proximity to the others. Uh, personal service uses, as you've indicated, there is a beauty salon in the mall 
as well as a small uh, retail um, store. And um, the 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 uh, Allen Street, the Off Street parking there is is sufficient enough to take the burden of their of, of both the uses or all three uses off the public way. So that should not be a concern of the communities. Uh, with this operation of clientele by appointment, uh, it also um, lessens the impact of uh, coming and going onto the facility. The, the, and then he's grown up there and he's, uh, he's, he's a, a person from the community who wants to live and, and establish his business in the community that he grew up in. And as you can see from his presentation, he's a very personable young man. I, I believe he would be well in the community and I believe the business would be positive, uh, addition to the business strip at this location. All right, thank you. So the fact that it's appointment only as opposed to walk-ins that did play into your opinion? It, it does because of the fact that um, and many of his people uh, drive, uh, to will be driving to the location, even though it's well serviced by both the North Avenue, North Avenue bus, as well as the Austin Avenue buses. Uh, people tend to travel a bit to get to their barber or their beauty salon, like, like you said, they want their person, you right. know, they, they, they will travel to get to them. So uh, with the parking lot that's available there, that, that would take that, uh, that burden off the public way in the event that he was operating appointment only. All righty. So now if you were to continue to testify, would your testimony be consistent with the findings and conclusions contained in your written report? It would. All right. So Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions at this time um, and no additional witnesses. Okay. More, yeah. more, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, I was just going to say, go right ahead. Okay, no, I'm, my apologies. I was just going to say, I, I anticipate there may be some questions. We're more than happy to answer them. Um, and we're obviously hoping that you approve this application. We believe that the applicant is, as Mr. Musaweer said, a stellar candidate, and he won't be a detriment to other businesses. He would be a benefit. Great, thank you. Um, before we move um, to the objection side of things for questions, um, are there any questions from the board for the applicant? Uh, this is Commissioner Esposito. I have a couple questions, maybe just to clarify. Um, Maybe I misunderstood Mr. Musa Weir, but is there or is there not another salon in this specific mini mall? No, uh, uh, Commissioner, no, it's not within the mini mall. There is a beauty supply store there. Okay, thank you and, for clarifying that yes. for me. Yes, sir. Um, and then I, maybe this is a question for the applicant. Uh, the photographs and references show that the uh, the space is already outfitted as a salon is that correct yes is it being operated as one or is this from a prior tenant can you explain the build out okay the build out happened um as this during the and during the end of the pandemic when we were seeking i was seeking the business license the um downtown was closed so everything wasn't like how I did my previous business. I would go downtown, I would get an application, I would do my um, advertisements, I would deal with whoever I had to deal with hands-on. But by the city being closed down and most of the businesses being closed down, everything was online. Now, with everyone being online like that, you have an abundance of people because the entire world has to go online. Me not knowing the situation and not, and not being aware of it, I had to go that, do that process. And during that process, I had to wait and basically hear about, as I go through email, I was, I was getting, getting informed of how the process was going through email. Um, as the process was going, they would, I got all the way to zoning. Like once the zoning process went through, I would go through the same scenario, maybe another 90 days or so of being in limbo with email emails. During this time, I had to use my accountant who, who had um, previous um, dealings with this matter to use, use her, um, I guess her power was her, 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 she, her know-how to help me establish getting a business license. Now, during this time, um, maybe like 10 months in, I, I had to, uh, we were forced to go downtown because they finally opened with, without memo. 
And when we went downtown, they actually said they did they, they were going to be starting over and I had to do the application. Well, long story short, I had to do the application maybe three or four times due to the closing and the opening of the um the businesses, the business rules downtown to open my license. So during this time, I'm paying booth, I'm paying rent on a business, hoping to be able to open it soon. Now I had my money saved up and I also had some of my equipment already to open up the shop. So since I had this in the round, I was paying for storage and I'm paying for a shop to close the storage. I just took the I just took all the equipment I had and I put it in the shop. There's no there have not been any construction done. There hasn't been anything that takes a um license or a um a special use permit or permit anything because I haven't done any construction in the in the shop. Only thing I've done is place shares, place stations, and that's it. Few lightings, little things like that, and I put security outside the shop. The only reason that was done is because to, to eliminate the business of having a storage and having the barbershop because I have to pay a twenty-two hundred dollar rent at the barbershop and also have to pay a five hundred dollar storage. I'm in limbo right now between opening up the shop. So even if I have, so at least if I can, if I have to. My dream is to open up the shop. So sure. I so I closed down the um the storage, took all the equipment out of the storage that had been sitting there for so long, and I basically used the shop as the storage because that's where the stuff is going to be at eventually anyway. Thank you. So that's why. But there you go. Clarifying that. Um, can you just then uh, tell us how long have you been renting this space for? Right now, I've probably been renting this space almost almost maybe a year and a half, maybe two years. So I've been having to work work at my job, work at my other at my job. Sure. And had to come out of my pocket and save money and pay the rent up. So right now I'm losing twenty two hundred dollars of my of my income to pay for this business because of the situation I was put into. Because me and the landlord would believe that this place was already zoned for this, but we could never cross check it or double check it because the zoning had changed according to what I was told. It had changed because that wasn't Old Park anymore. Now that, it wasn't Old Park in Chicago. So now to clarify what it is to know what to do. The way the information is, is not accessible to us because downtown is closed and the only answer we can get is through email and it takes 90 days or so to get an answer. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Great, any other questions from the board before we move over to the objection? Okay, so um, Alderman Palafiero, I we've already, we've got the base of your objection I want to ask you if you have anything substantively new to add, or else I think that the board may have some questions for you directly. No, it, um, Chairman. You know, I, I, you know, I, I can't um, in any way um, say anything bad about bad about you know the applicant's uh, background. Uh, you know, and I, you know, I believe he has a stellar background, but you know, as an alderman. Um, I, I think it's very important that, you know, we provide, um, you know, um, business opportunities for a lot of folks. But when, when we do have, this would make the 12th in a six blocks radius. And if I add nail salons, at, at least 18, um, I think that ordinance is there for a reason. And we can't, you know, as a, as a board and we can't, as aldermen, continue to waive this 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 ordinance so that you know there'll be 20 next year or 25 um and they're just too closely you know they're just too closely uh, related yes there's one on that block there's another one trying to come at, at on the end of the block um he's at 6006 at 6024 at 6024 west north avenue there's another one opening and so i i i do have to emphasize, and I do want to emphasize to the board that we have too many barbershops. And, and yes, there, there's a, a place for social gathering, but they're also a place where we've had problems. You know, right in Mr. Brashear's neighborhood, there were two young men just shot uh, within a year and a half. And then right across the street last summer, there was a young man shot in a barbershop and killed. So although, yes, they are a traditional place where Blacks come together and and, and, and have great times and events. But these places often turn into gathering places after hours where there's parties, uh, where there's social gatherings with alcohol being served. And that's the problem that we deal with. Not just the barbershop there itself, but what happens when it closes as well. So I, I, I still object and I, I look forward to any questions that the board may have. 
Great, thanks. And, and so um, even just hearing your thinking about our standards as it relates to your objection, you're, you're making a general argument that this um, would have a negative impact on the general welfare of the community. Is that correct? And my and my uh, and I have had residents of the community call me when there was postings and say, "All of them, we don't need another barbershop. We don't need another nail salon. We don't need. There's too many in our neighborhood, and 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 that takes away the opportunity for other types of businesses to flourish in the area. So yes, it is a it is a generalized complaint, um, but it's a real complaint. Uh, I don't I don't think you can find too many places in the city where there is 18 personal service businesses or personal use service businesses within that short block rate, within that short radius. There's not too many places where you can find that. Thank you. Okay. It's like, um, it's like having 18 currency exchanges on one block. Yeah. Other, other questions from the board for the alderman? Okay, we, it looks like we've got the information we need there. So Alderman, before I move back to Councilor, I just wanna thank you for spending the time today and sticking on the call to talk with us. Um, we're gonna move back to Councilor Walker for, um, for a closing, a brief closing, because I think we've got a lot of information here to weigh. Um, so Councilor Walker, you can go right ahead. Thank you. So I wanna do my closing in two parts. So first I wanna, talk about my applicant's presentation. As you can see from the photo on the screen, um, it's very clean, orderly, and professional. And I would say that beyond the alderman agreeing that my client's credentials are stellar, he's gone above and beyond, uh, not only with paying out of his own personal pocket, it seemed from the testimony that he purchased the, or started renting the business right before COVID hit and you know, kind of got stuck. And instead of abandoning it and, and making it yet another property storefront that's sitting vacant, he took the hit and paid out of his own pocket despite generating zero dollars in income from this location. And I think that speaks a lot, not only to his intention on running the business, but who he is as a person that he, number one, had the financial means and capability to do so. But more importantly, the commitment to stick through the process where a lot of people would have thrown up their hands. And, you know, despite the fact that there are other personal services in the, in the area, there are other areas I would submit that I don't, you know, have specific evidence of, but I, I definitely have been in areas, I, I used to live in Gold Coast, and there's quite a few nail salons in that location, there's quite a few in Streeterville. So you can definitely make the argument that personal services can become oversaturated. However, again, people... Um, tend to have loyalty to their particular service provider. And that's a very important element here. In addition, I would point out that not only is my client a barber, but he's also an instructor and a mentor in a community where those services are sorely needed. With all due respect, I'll move to the um, alderman's objections. So I, it, it, it does feel as if we're having to defend against um, generalized allegations of violence and things that may have taken place in other situations. I would submit that those other barbershops where the aldermen cited that, you know, drinking after hours, that type of thing goes on. You know, my client is almost 50, um, been in the business for quite a number of years, owned and operated businesses in multiple cities, distinguished himself by being a personal service provider to our most essential workers of the city. Um, there's been absolutely no showing or evidence, and I find it a little demeaning, to be honest. While understanding the alderman's point, I don't think that you can um, extrapolate issues with one particular barbershop to all of them. I, I, that's, that's not how this country is set up. That's not how the ordinance is designed. Um, so I would submit that, you know, we have a violence issue in Chicago that's very serious and needs to be addressed, but that should not be ascribe to all barbershop situations that that's not fair that's not uh, uh it's not fair it's not meaningful it's demeaning to the black community and service providers within the community um and it's also unfair to the 
patrons to the people who live in that community. I'm quite certain that everyone in that community wants the violence problems addressed. We all do throughout the city. So to put this on my client's back is a reason why he shouldn't be able to thrive in his business, but also more importantly, continue to mentor others. As he stated, he intends on employing staff. He has seven stations set up. This is not just about him. This is about impacting his community as he has already been doing. Um, in his other locations and as an instructor. So there's been no showing that he has any intention at all to um, have this as an after hours location or any sort of parties or anything. This is a very serious person who went through a pandemic, provided services through a pandemic, distinguished himself to be known as the barber to the surgeons and has a very specific plan in place in a post COVID environment because of what he learned during that experience. That's why he set it up as, as appointment only. So it's not a walk-in situation. It's not a party gathering space. And to suggest otherwise is just patently unfair. So we would ask that um, the panel or the board, I'm sorry, um, grant our special use application in spite of the alderman's objections, which alderman obviously is looking out for his ward. We completely understand However, we feel as if we fall outside of the objections made by the aldermen. And, and I would also submit that I was the notification person on the posting. So if people had complaints, I would have been the contact person in my office. Um, I have an office staff. I received no complaints to my office. Um, Mr. Musa, we received no complaints. My client received no complaints. So with all due respect, I don't know if the alderman is citing specific concerns uh, from the community to this project. It doesn't seem as if, it seems as if it was more of a generalized thing, which again, you know, we would submit that we should be above a generalized argument. Um, but I can definitely say as an officer of the court that I never received anything at all. So uh, with that being said, we would ask that you grant our special use application above objection. Thank you. Yep, great. Thank you so much, everyone. And thanks for um, sticking with, uh, with the process as outlined. Um, we have a lot of information here, so we're going to take this under consideration. All righty. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to calendar number C34-22-S. Um, this will be with Tom Moore. Um, while the counselor is getting situated, I'm going to go ahead and read the department's recommendation. Meantime, if there is anyone on to object, um, please just raise your hand and, and I will get you promoted. Okay, I'm promoting an Alan Goldberg. And I just wanna um, ask Alan, once you accept your promotion, if you can um, identify if you're objecting or what your purpose on the call is today. Okay, we're most to Javier Ramones as well. Um, Alan, go ahead. Uh, my name's uh, Alan Goldberg, and uh, I'm a property owner across the street, uh, and I'm here as an objector. Okay, thank you. Um, good. We will, we'll get to you. I'll outline the process. Um, now I'd like to confirm is, is Javier Ramones an objector as well? Javier, you can unmute. Yes, I am. Okay, got it. All right. So, um, how, and, and now you can remute yourself. There's some background noise. So, if you're not speaking, please just mute. Um, we'll run this in our typical process that we do when there's an objector. So, first, the applicant will put on their case in chief. The board will ask questions. I'm going to go ahead and mute people who aren't speaking. One second. Okay, great. Um, while the applicant gives their case in chief, the board will ask questions as they please. Then we'll move over to the objectors to give their objections. When you do so, you're able to ask questions of the applicant. Um, we ask that objections just aren't um, repetitive. Uh, and then we will move back over to the applicant for rebuttal and a brief closing. Throughout this time, the board may be asking questions. So with that, I'm gonna read the department's recommendation and I'll let council more take it away. 
For calendar number 234-22-F, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed care plan. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name for the record is Tom Moore. And Mr. Chairman, we should have Antonio Diaz and then uh, Mr. Ryan. Uh, yeah, we've got Antonio and we've got Joe Ryan. Uh, would you please swear Mr. Antonio Diaz? Yep. Um, Antonio Diaz, will you please state your name and address spelling your last name? Okay, so I just unmuted myself. Hi. Uh, my name is Antonio Diaz. My address is uh, 1547 West Farwell, uh, apartment 1 East in Chicago, Illinois, zip code 60626. Thank and you. Could you quick just spell your last name? Of course, yeah. Uh, Diaz, D I A C. Perfect. Um, and do you swear or affirm and tell the truth in today's proceedings? Uh, yes, I do. Great. Thank you, sir. And we've got Joe Ryan already sworn in and we've acknowledged his expertise. So he continues to be sworn. Thank you. So, um, Antonio, um, you are a lifelong businessman. Is that right? Uh, yes. You are not a barber or a hairstylist. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's right. I'm not. And uh, just so the board knows a little bit, can you just name a few of the different businesses you've run uh, during your career? Uh, right now, I'm running a restaurant. I own a restaurant. And before that, I had real estate. Okay. And the restaurant is just a couple of doors to the east of this vacant uh, store. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. And uh, <coughs> you decided that... Um, uh, as you saw that vacant store there, uh, you decided that uh, you'd like to open a barber shop there. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes. And while there is a hair salon across the street, uh, uh, your your primary um, focus would be uh, males. That is uh, a barber shop for men. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes, that's correct. Yes. And your understanding of the uh, place across the street uh, that Mr. Goldberg owns the building and um, uh, the um, is that it's more uh, focused on women. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes. That, that's what I understand. Yes. Okay. And um, you will only hire um, licensed uh, cosmetologists. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes, that's correct, yes. And you do, you have one already that you've said, if you, if the board grants you the variance, you have one already that you uh, have told him you will hire him. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes, that's correct, yes. Okay. And that person is in no way associated and has never been associated with across the street. Is that right? Ah, uh, yes, it's correct. It's not associated with the business across the street. Okay. And uh, how many chairs would you eventually have if, if the board grants your uh, special use? Uh, five. And um, you would you would be the businessman, but, um, and manage this as a business. And, uh, but, but you'll have nothing to do with the, you'll only hire professionals to do the actual cutting. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct, yes. And why do you think um, a male barbershop uh, uh, could serve the convenience of the neighborhood or is needed at this location? Uh, well, I talked to, I mean, I run a restaurant and I talked to a lot of my clientele over here and there is a need for a barber shop that uh, salons don't give very specifically the same service, you know? Okay. And um, how close is the nearest barber shop that you know of? Uh, to be honest, I don't know any nearby. Okay. And you've talked to, uh, because you run the restaurant, uh, the store owners up and down your side of the street come in and, and, and frequently, is that right? Uh, yes. And so you've talked to them and, and uh, I, at least on your side of the street, not associated with the uh, place across the street, that you're aware of no objections, is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. I have no objections, uh, but I know. And you also uh, met with the alderman, is that right? Uh, yes, I did. 
And Ms. Uh, Alderman, and, uh, yes. And she told you that she had no objection. Uh, that yes, that's correct. And you also uh, went to and asked uh, for support from the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, yes, the Business Alliance, which is like the Chamber of Commerce, yes. Okay, and uh, what happened there? Uh, they, they totally support me. They actually just yesterday asked me if I wanted to be on the board because they think that I have another business. But uh, they also told me that they were going to give me a letter of uh, support. But uh, somehow I think they are kind of busy and uh, I, I didn't get the letter on time, I guess. Okay. And um, you're going to, uh, this is, you're, you're not far from the L here, is that right? From whom? From the L? I know, it's like, it's half a block, yes. Okay. And so this, this uh, will, uh, people can walk to your store and they can take the L to it and it'll, it'll help the pedestrian uh, nature of, of that uh, series of stores along uh, Morris Avenue, is that right? Uh, definitely, that's what happened when, uh, when I brought the restaurant in this area. Uh, it, has made, it has made the area a lot nicer. Okay. Um, Okay, and you and I worked out an affidavit where you went through all the criteria necessary for the board to grant this special use. And if you were to continue to testify, you'd testify consistently with it. Is that right? Uh, yes. Um, uh, Joe Ryan, are you there? I am. And uh, at my request, you um, did a little study of whether or not this uh, a barbershop at this location could meet all the criteria necessary for the board to grant a special use. Is that right? I did, yes. And what did you find? Uh, the property is well suited uh, for this personal use. There's personal uses in the neighborhood uh, to within a thousand feet. Uh, I looked at the demographics within a mile. There's 75,000 people live there with an average income of $68,000. So there's more than enough density in the area, population and uh, income to support more than one personal service location or use in this location. Okay, and in your opinion, will this have a negative effect on the surrounding properties or the surrounding property values? No, I examined each of the criteria needed for this board to grant a special use and it met all of them. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that is our case in chief. Oh, it, Mr. Ryan, you made a, re a written report which we filed with our findings of fact. And uh, if you were to continue to testify, you'd testify consistently with it, is that right? I would, yes. Mr. Chairman, that's our case in chief. Great, thank you, anybody. Um, any questions from the board for the applicant at this point? I guess I, I'd ask the applicant really quick, if you could just give a, a quick summary um, over, again, over your hiring practices, how you intend to, to, to hire. Uh, the question is for me, right? Yep. Uh, yes, well, I, um, first, uh, I run a business, so, and uh, I want everyone that I hire to have uh, a license. And then uh, from then on, that will be the first step. And then from then on, it's like, making sure that they are friendly customer servers, you know, but that, that will be the first step. Okay, great. And how many hires do you intend to make? Should you, should you be able to open? How many hires right away? Um, I'm, I'm looking to four or five. Okay. Okay, great. Any other questions from the board for the applicant? Just one on, on this note of hiring, do you have anyone in mind that you're going to hire if you get this uh, special use? Uh, if I get it, I have two people already in line. One of them uh, is a friend of mine that lost his salon during the pandemic. And the other person is uh, a person that comes here in, in the restaurant. It's a lady. So. And are um, both of those uh, people, are they licensed? Uh, yes, they are licensed, both of them, yes. Okay, and how, how long have they been uh, cutting hair? Uh, the, the male, 
he has been cutting hair like for 25 years and he worked before in salons and then he had his own. And the lady, I haven't really vetted her yet completely, but uh, she told me she has a license. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? I got a quick question. Sure. How long have you been in business on, um, on Morris Avenue? Uh, five years. Five years. Very good. And how long have you been in, uh, in Chicago? Uh, around like 30 years. Very good. Thank you. And do you live in this part of town too? I live like two blocks from here, yes. Very good. So you're very, very much part of the neighborhood. All right. Uh, thank yes. you. You're welcome. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, so now I'm going to turn over to the objectors. Again, just to make a reminder, I'm, I'm going to start um, with, um, at, with Mr. Goldberg and, and then move on to the next. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, you're able to state your objection and also you're able to ask any questions of the applicant that you may please. Um, so with that, Mr. Goldberg, will you please state your name and address? Could, could I defer to the Ramones? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. First. Yep. Um, absolutely. Okay. So H Javier Ramones or, or Miriam, um, whichever of you would like to speak, please just state your name and address and I'll swear you in. And you're, you're on mute. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. My name is Javier Ramones. Uh, that's R-A-M-O-N-E-S. I live at 6736 North Whipple, Chicago, Illinois, 60645. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, you can go right ahead and state your objection. And again, you're able to ask questions of the applicant as well. Okay. Um, first of all, we um, we bought the business across the street over there at 1411 West Morris uh, a little bit over four years ago. And um, during the time when we had first uh, bought the business from Jose, uh, the last name is Correa, one of the first things I told him, because he had been in the neighborhood for over 15 years, I told him, oh, please make sure that if um, um, you decide to open up a shop, don't open it across the street because everyone knows you and they're going to come to you. And um, our business is not only uh, women's, women's hair, but it's also family. So we do a lot of men's and we also do a lot of children. So it's a, a family place. Uh, yes, you know, uh, ladies come in and we specialize in, in highlights and we have a person on that, but there's also uh, males that come in and, and that's the way the business has always been. But uh, anyway, we bought the place and unfortunately, um, a couple of days later, a week later, whatever, um, um, they shot and they killed a, a retired uh, teacher that was um, walking towards the L. So uh, me being, uh, well, now just retired from the police department for, for 23 years, um, I was in shock. And I'm like, man, why, why, why did we get this, you know, this store here with, with all these problems? But as, uh, as we've been there for all this time, um, the neighborhood has really picked up and uh, it's been cleaned and the police have done a great job. So um, the neighborhood is really, um, was going very well in the beginning until uh, the pandemic hit and uh, COVID uh, really affected us. And um, we shut down, of course, and um, we were um, struggling. And we've been struggling even until now that if we've opened up again, um, it hasn't been um, easy at all as far as uh, keeping up with the rent and the maintenance and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm really thankful for Al that Ellen, um, the owner of the place has really um, helped us out tremendously as far as being patient and waiting for us to, uh, okay. when we've been behind, you know, on, on the rent. Okay. Of course, we, um, we don't want to continue on that route, but we see that if this competition comes and, and, uh, and I understand, you know, everyone needs a chance, but he opens up really close to us. We're really going to be affected as far as, um, what the outcome is going to be as far as uh, the income, you know, for the property. So I don't want to keep on, you know, um, damaging Allen or abusing, you know, his, his um, being um, generous with us, but, you know, I don't want to continue on being delayed and, and falling behind. And if that's the case, we might have to shut down, you know? Yeah, thank you. And, and I just want to point out, so under, um, 
under law, we as a board are not able to weigh competition as an objection. Correct. Um, and the, de the detriment of competition, we can't on any matters as a board. So um, do, you, do you have a different framing of your objection um, or any, any objections that don't have to do with the direct financial impact of your business? Well, my, my only objection would be is that uh, the gentleman, Antonio, mentions that uh, he's only going to do uh, men's. Well, we also do men's. And, and one of the, the questions, I guess, were brought up was that, um, that there's not gonna, he's not going to affect us or there's, there's no competition. Of course there is, because we also do men's here, I mean. And do you have any do you have any questions for the applicant before we go to Mr. Goldberg? Okay, um, my only thing was that I had heard that that he was going to hire this guy Jose that sold us the business. Now they say that he's not going to hire him no more. That's fine, but you know, it really doesn't matter who um, who he hires. I mean, it's it we're right you know right across the street from us. So okay, thank you, thanks very much, and um, I want to go to Mr. Goldberg as well. Um, and uh, so, Mr. Goldberg, if you're still on, can you state your name and address? Alan Goldberg, 606 Mulford Street, Evanston, Illinois, 60202. And I'm the owner of the building at 1407 11 West Morse and 6920 to 34 North Glenwood. Great. Thank you, sir. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, so you can go ahead and state your objection as well and ask any questions. Okay, I'll just uh, have a statement. Uh, I'm the owner of the mixed use building, as I, which I just described, which is in within 250 feet of the proposed hair salon. I'm a commercial real estate broker, property owner, SSA 22 commissioner, a director of the Rogers Park Builders Group and the president of the Glenwood Avenue Arts District. I have good relations with the owners and businesses on this block and in this community. So it's with great mixed emotions that I submit this objection to the proposed special use variation to permit a hair salon within a thousand feet of another hair salon because I, I'm a friend and customer of the applicant, uh, Mr. Diaz, and I'm a friend and, and customer of the, of the property owner who, who owns the building. Um, so I don't make this objection lightly, uh, but I'm, I'm here to stand and support um, the, my tenants, uh, Javier and Miriam Ramones, um, who purchased the salon, uh, which has been the finally here salon has been in this building at least since 1999 when I purchased the building. And it's been my understanding that neither I or neighboring property owners um, were allowed to rent to uh, other hair salons. Um, and uh, for the most part, we've abided by that. Um, you know, there is there is another barber shop about a block south on uh, near Farwell in Glenwood, um, and there is a nail salon uh, on the fourteen hundred block of Morris Avenue. Um, so, you know, to speak to the the Ramones, uh, you know, they've been here for the last uh, four and a half years, and they've survived the COVID, and. Uh, you know, they purchased this building in good faith that uh, that the zoning laws uh, would be upheld. Um, so, you know, as it was, as Mr. Ramones stated, it has come to our attention that, uh, you know, the individual who sold them the business um, is potentially going to work at the salon 
Um, and uh, I mean, I don't think that's right. Um, you know, when, so anyway, that's my objection. I, I, I understand, you know, I think that the zoning laws are created to serve the public good, to not have an over concentration of, uh, of certain businesses in a business district that helps create the health of the business district uh, and providing a, a variety of services and businesses to the community. So with that, I, I am objecting to this uh, special use request variation. Great, thank you, Mr. Goldberg. And do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, no other, other than, uh, you know, I just, uh, no, not any specific questions at this time. Okay. Okay. So to stick with process, we are going to move back to the applicant. Um, uh, and, and Tom, you're able to make your rebuttal. Um, and the board will then ask questions if they have them and only a closing if you wish so. We just ask that there's there's no repetition in closing if you choose to make that. Thank you. So uh, let's go straight to the point. Um, uh, Antonio, uh, are you going to hire, I think his name was Jose Ferreira, something like that? Uh, no. Okay. There was... Uh, from from the neighbors, there was a rumor to that effect, and the alderman confronted you with it. Is that right? Uh, yes. And he did come into the restaurant that I run over here and asked me if I would rent a chair, which I didn't give him a specific answer. I said, you know, mm -hmm. let's look into first if we are going to get the, the license. But when okay. I had the meeting with the elder woman, Miss Maria Hayden, she suggested that it will create conflict, and I, which I didn't know. So it came to my attention. So I, uh, and then I invited him to the meeting as well with her and he didn't show up. So to me, that was the first step where I can hire someone that is not responsible, uh, you know, to come to the meeting for his actions. And so you promised the alderman that you would not hire him, is that right? Uh, yes, yes I did. Okay, and so you do, you will not hire him, is that? I will not hire him, yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, uh, that's all I have in rebuttal. Um, briefly, oh, uh, that's all I have in rebuttal. Okay, any questions from the board? Yeah, I, I know this question was asked, but I just wanna ask it one more time. The business association in the neighborhood and the aldermen are on board on this, right? Uh, uh, yes, they, yes. yes, they are, yes. I had a meeting with both of them, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I heard that a second time. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Any is, other questions from the board? This is Commissioner Esposito. Uh, who is the alderman of this war? Uh, Ms. Maria Hayden. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you everyone for your time and sticking on today. We will go ahead and take this under consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, thanks everybody. Yeah. All right, we're going to move to calendar numbers 235 and 236 22 Um, This is with Councillor Nick Topekas. Um, Councillor, so as you get situated, I just want to ask the question if there's anyone to object on these matters, please raise your hand and we'll make sure that you get the opportunity to speak. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, promoting, well, they're already promoted. So Michael, uh, Michael, if you could unmute and let us know if you're here to object. Uh, thank you, yes, I'm here to object. Okay, um, anyone else, just so that I can have a little bit of an inventory. Okay, um, so again, I know we just did this, but really quickly, the process when we have an objection um, the applicant will give their case in chief. The board will be able to ask questions of that case in chief. 
will then turn over to the objector to state their objection. At that time, the objector can also ask questions of the applicant. Finally, we'll move back to the applicant who will give the rebuttal and closing statement only if they wish to have a closing statement and if it's not repetitive. Um, during this whole process, the board may ask questions. So with that, Council Fatigas, I know you know that process fairly well, so you can go right ahead. Thank you. Um, again, for the record, Nick Fatigas from the Law Offices of Sam Banks. I'm here on behalf of the applicant 2848 West Chicago 2 LLC. Uh, the applicant owns a subject property at 2842 through 50 West Chicago Avenue. The subject site consists of a single zoning lot that measures 100 feet wide by 150 feet deep. The property is a transit serve location because of its uh, specifically being located along Chicago Avenue, which is a designated transit oriented development bus route. The subject site uh, again is improved with a two story commercial building and an off street surface parking area. And the applicant is proposing to construct a two story residential addition above the existing two story building that would add 15 apartment units at the property. The issue is that the footprint and massing of the existing two story building create hardships or practical difficulties for the proposed addition. So in order to permit the project, the applicant is seeking variations to increase the allowable building height by 10% and reduce the number of non-residential off-street re required parking spaces from two to zero. Uh, there will be two witnesses testifying uh, this afternoon on this case. On behalf of the applicant, Mr. Victor Lus Lusenko and our project architect, Mr. John Hanna. Um, and Chairman, if you want to swear in Victor and John, I could then uh, call call both as witnesses. All right, yeah, Mr. Lusenko, will you state your name and address, please, spelling your last name? Yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Yep, we can. Uh, my name is Victor Lusenko. I'm at 1318 West Thorndale Avenue in Chicago, Illinois, 60660. Great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, then we go to John Hanna. John, will you state your name and address? Sure. John Hanna, 180 West Washington, Chicago, Illinois, president of Hanna Architects, Inc. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. Thank you. Great, thank you. So uh, again, Victor, you are the managing member of the applicant 2848 West Chicago 2 LLC? Yes, correct. And that, and that entity owns a subject property at 2842 through 50 West Chicago Avenue, is that right? Yes. And as I described it, the property consists of a single zoning lot uh, that's currently improved with a two-story commercial building, is that right? Yes. And you're proposing to construct a two-story residential addition on top of the existing structure, right? Correct. Now, the residential addition would contain 15 apartments and be supported by eight off-street parking spaces? Yes. And because this is a transit-served location, the proposed residential parking ratio actually complies with code. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Still, in order to permit the addition, you're seeking variations to increase the allowable building height and reduce the non-residential parking count, and again, from two spaces to zero, correct? Correct. And we'll get into the um, height issue with Mr. Hanna, but with respect to the proposed parking reduction for the non-residential uses, you really don't expect there to, have, to be an actual or real impact um, on either your tenants or the surrounding area, is that right? Yes. And that's because none of the existing tenants are high volume in terms of on-site employees, and they don't independently generate high volumes of customer vehicle related uh, traffic. Is that right? That's right. And again, so we're clear for the record, the three existing tenants are uh, a real estate office that you are a part of, correct? Um, yes, development office. The, the development real estate office. Uh, also yes. a marketing office and a retail thrift store, correct? Correct. And again, um, to further make that point, the uh, technical requirement in this case is two off-street parking spaces, right? Yes. And again, we're looking to just reduce those two spaces to zero, right? Correct. Correct. And provided the board grants the requested relief, you intend to lease the uh, apartments on the open market? Yes. And you provided the board with an economic analysis 
summarizing your cost projections and anticipated return. Is that correct? Yes, we did. Uh, Victor, is it your understanding that my office filed witness statements on your behalf in this case? Yes. And if we were to continue to testify, would your testimony be consistent with the statements we provided? Yes, it would be. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, John, are you on as well? I'm here. Um, again, you're a licensed architect in the state of Illinois? Correct. And you designed the proposed two-story residential addition to the existing two-story commercial building located at the property. Is that right? That's correct. And is it your professional opinion that the existing building's height dimension, together with the existing building's footprint on the subject lot, create the practical difficulties or particular hardships in this case? Uh, that's correct. And more specifically, in, um, in order to permit consistent floor to ceiling heights for the two proposed residential floors, the applicant is seeking to increase the allowable building height from 45 feet to 49.5 feet, correct? Uh, that's correct. And that four and a half foot increase, um, again, is within the 10% allowed per code. Is that right? Um, that's true. And, and also, um, that additional height is, on, is, is critical to our design because the existing uh, two-story structure already measures 24 feet in height, correct? Uh, uh, that's correct. Um, so again, because our starting point is higher than typical new construction, we're, we're required to go higher than what is otherwise allowed um, as of right. Uh, that's true. And uh, the applicant, as you know, is also seeking a variation to reduce the number of non-residential parking spaces. Correct. And that requirement, um, really it's based on the total square footage of the two-story commercial component, correct? Correct. Uh, but that's, again, an issue in this case because the size of the building uh, and its footprint on the lot limit how many parking spaces you can add on site. Right, that's true. So your design solution was to provide the required amount of parking, of off-street parking for your residential units and then seek relief for the non-residential component. Uh, that's true. And it's your professional opinion that the resulting four-story mixed-use building will still be consistent and compatible with the neighboring mixed-use buildings uh, along West Chicago Avenue. Is that right? Uh, yes. And John, is it your understanding that my office filed witness statements on your behalf in this case? That's true. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements? Hey, Nick, 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 real quick, your, um, your sound is fading out. I'm so sorry, Chair. Can you hear me better now? Yes, yes. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my last question, again, John, if you were to continue to testify, would your testimony be consistent with the statements we provided? Uh, that's true. Great. Um, Chairman, that, that actually uh, concludes the applicant's case in chief. We'd be happy to answer any questions you or the board members have about our program. Great, thanks. Um, just for, for um, clarification on the heights. So the two floors that would then have consistent heights, the two residential floors, what would those ceiling heights be in the unit? Uh, they're nine foot six ceiling heights. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Questions from the board for the applicant at this time. Okay, let's move over to the objector side of things. Um, I'm going to start with Mr. Santonocito. Um, so, Michael, if you could state your name and address, I'll swear you in, and then you can state your objection. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. My name is Michael Santonacido. The last name is spelled S-A-N-T-O-N-O-C-I-T-O. -O -O. Um, I reside at 807 North Francisco Avenue, Unit 3, which is adjacent to the subject property. Um, and our objections, I say, are... Uh, really, really, really on quick, sorry, I'm going to swear you in really quick. Oh, yes. Do you, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, our objections, um, I use R as the president of the condo association at 807 North Francisco, um, are focused more on the parking situation than the building height itself. Um, I've looked at the plans, um, which Mr. Fatikas was nice enough to email over to me several months ago. Um, and, you know, we don't really have any anything to, to say about that, but we are concerned uh, about the effects of these variances on the, the parking situation here. 
Okay, great. So on that, do you, do you have any questions um, uh, for the applicant related to the parking? Uh, yes. So Mr. Lysenko had mentioned that um, there probably wouldn't be much impact because there's currently two required spaces and that would be going down to, to zero. And with the um, amount of people that are either employed at these businesses or uh, come to shop, that's, that's pretty low. Um, how did he reach that conclusion? Because um, even though there are only two required spaces, almost every time I look out the window, there are many more cases. I think even in the pictures that were up on the screen at the beginning, there were, uh, I counted four cars. And right now, uh, when we had the lunch break, I counted, there were five passenger vehicles and three commercial trailers in that lot, which would no longer be able to park there because that would be um, per the plans dedicated to residents. Great. Chairman, okay, I, the applicant can go ahead and take that question. Okay. Chairman, yeah, we, we did. Um, I'll let the applicant answer and then I can follow up. As, as my understanding is that non residential uh, spa uh, units uh, only have two spaces uh, per section per, um, per code, and we are asking to reduce them to zero. And these businesses only have a uh, few people employed there. Like for example, the, the storefront only has one person and the second floor office has typically two people and a uh, few people in the, in the back space of the building. So we don't see how that will create a congestion. For the Victor, party. remind me, what, what is the type of business? What is the type of all these businesses? Yep. The storefront is a, the storefront business is a um, sort of thrift store. And um, I assume they sell, sell things online, um, work with donations. So there's only one, one person in there at all times. It doesn't create too much traffic and so they don't uh, they don't open their doors to customers they have open doors to customers okay, okay. and the second floor uh, office is a real estate development uh, office typically typically has two people in it and um, third business is a marketing company um, that has um, not not quite sure how many people but it's only um, two to three people, I assume. And it's a marketing company that, uh, that creates um, advertising. Okay. Chairman, if I could just add to that, one of the ways, or the reason we approach this as a variation was because we do feel that the uh, limitations of the building on the lot, again, restrict or prohibit how many additional parking spaces could be provided. I point out for the board that because Chicago Avenue is a transit served location, we would have been eligible to ask for a parking reduction specific to the uh, residential units. The reason we didn't do that is because we thought that there would be more of a potential impact for residents, residents, permanent residents, people living in the building um, that would you know, potentially need a parking space. And we didn't wanna see that traffic or that parking flow over into the community. So the idea was let's reduce the parking for the, the retail non-residential component by way of a variation and avoid a further reduction or a more significant reduction by TOD, by Transit Oriented Development Ordinance. Um, and again, I think uh, Victor uh, spoke to it, but the limited size and the limited number or volume of uh, employees that are at the property um, help justify, you know, even with those numbers, the technical legal parking requirements only two spaces. So we thought it just made better sense to reduce those two spaces before the residents the, the ability to park in those spaces. And again, utilize transit oriented development through the bus, uh, bus line that our uh, property immediately is adjacent to. Okay, thanks everyone. Michael, did that answer your question? Um, yes and no, it did raise a few other questions. Because okay. um, uh, I understand that the, the current legal requirement minimum 
uh, is to non uh, non residential off street parking. Uh, but my point is that what's currently being used is more than two and that was evident, even in the pictures that uh, I, I think it was one of the first few slides that were shown. Um, I, I can say right now, um, there are currently uh, so if you go back, you can see, I count maybe four in that lot that are all right there. Uh, some of those cars I can look out the window right now and see are still there. Uh, there are some cars that are associated with the businesses that are parked on the stretch of Francisco between the alley that runs behind this property and uh, Chicago Avenue, which is the only uh, north-south non-permit parking right around here. So even though the reduction in required number would be going down by two, my concern is that the uh, this combined with dedicating so much of that lot to residential would push both tenants, uh, commercial tenants and residential tenants out on Chicago Avenue, out onto Francisco Avenue in front of our building. Um, uh, I, I will say the, uh, Mr. Lusenko was correct that one of the companies is a, a marketing company that uh, makes sort of commercial advertisements, but it's not traditional ones. It's um, like retrofitting trailers like jet streams or something that would have sort of full commercial branding. So as of right now, that parking lot is usually full with a couple of trailers that are like currently being worked on. Um, and, you know, it's almost always full. And this is, of course, without the addition of 15 units, um, half of whom would presumably own one car. So, you know, we, we, we object for that reason, just because we are concerned that even as of right now, outside of my front window, there are at least one a, a car that I recognize as being associated with the developer. Um, so there is an overflow parking impact. Uh, we're concerned that that would get worse. Okay, thank you. Yep, um, objection heard. And we thank will you. definitely consider, I want, is there anyone else who would like to object on the call? Just raise your hand or unmute. Okay, so Councillor, um, sticking with process, this is your time to move into rebuttal. Um, and after you rebut, I want the board to ask or to have the opportunity to ask some final questions. Great, thank you. Uh, so again, our, our program here is, it's going to change the way the site functions. There's no question about it. But what's unique about the program is that it retains that manufacturing slash um, marketing component where work's actually done within the building as opposed to outside in the parking area. There's no question that the, the site is gonna change, we think for the better. Um, with respect to the retail component and with respect to the parking reduction, again, although this isn't a traditional transit-oriented development special use reduction, we are asking the board to at least consider that Chicago Avenue as a designated TOD bus line is going, this is helping us follow that pattern and trend to allow more uh, transit-oriented, not only customer, but uh, even employee use in the immediate area um, that isn't relying on parking. And again, I, I follow uh, with the statement, we thought it would be more of a ne potential negative impact to reduce the residential component than the two off-street parking spaces required for the retail component. Um, so, and I, I hope that that point is made clear um, for the board. Um, I don't believe there's any other point on rebuttal, and we'd be uh, happy to close close our case on that. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions from the board for anyone who's spoken? Uh, this is Commissioner Esposito. Can you describe how deliveries would be accommodated to the commercial spaces? I think the way it's been envisioned is the retail space would be able to presumably be able to use deliveries at the front of the property if there's available um, parking in front of the building, if there's an available space. Otherwise, uh, again, as a C1 zone property, there is use of the public alley that runs immediately behind the property. Um, and we would be, as a uh, landowner, as the uh, person ordering these deliveries, we would be able to direct our uh, delivery away from Francisco so that we're not interfering with 
deliveries uh, to the properties immediately to the east of us. Um, so I think that that's something we can manage again through operations. Um, there's sufficient loading and unloading at the rear of the property. Um, and then again, for a more limited retail component, um, uh, depending on if the uh, space is there, we could use the front of the property as well. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, thanks everyone. We've got what we need here and we will take this one under consideration. Great, thank you. Yep, thanks very much. Thank you very much for the time today, everyone. Thank you. All right, let's hop right into um, calendar number 237-22-S. Before I read the Department of Planning and Development's recommendation on this matter, um, if anyone is here to object, please just raise your hand and I'll have to promote it. Okay, Fred Lev, when you are fully promoted, could you unmute and just confirm that you're on to object? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so before I read the department's recommendation, um, again, this, this process, sorry for being redundant. I know we've done it a few times in a row, but we're gonna do our full objectors process. Um, what this entails is the applicant will give their case in chief get all their, their witnesses on. Meantime, the board will be asking questions on the substance of the case in chief. Once that's concluded, we'll move over to the objector who's able to make their objection. And also if they please ask any questions of the applicant. Um, finally, we'll move back to the applicant side of things for a rebuttal and a closing if they please. The board this whole time can ask questions um, as they wish as well. So with that, I'll read the department's recommendation. So 237-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed adult use cannabis dispensary, provided that number one, the special use is issued solely to the applicant, GRI Holdings, LLC. Number two, all on-site customer queuing occurs within the building. And number three, the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and documents dated July 13th, 2022, prepared by Sanka Architects, Inc with landscape plan prepared by Studio G Landscape Architecture. Council, whenever you're ready. Great. Thank you, Chairman. Again, for the record, my name is Nick Fatikas and I'm one of the attorneys at the Law Offices of Sam Banks. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, GRI Holdings, LLC. The applicant has a lease uh, with an option to purchase the subject property located at 612 North Wells Street. The property is improved with a one-story retail building uh, formerly occupied by Carson's Ribs and a, an accessory surface parking lot. The applicant is proposing to establish an adult use cannabis dispensary within the existing building. In order to do so, we're seeking a special use because the subject property is located in a DX5 downtown mixed use district. Uh, we have six uh, primary witnesses available to testify uh, this afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Gabriel Martinez, our operations consultant, Mr. Ross Morreale, our security consultant, Mr. Paul Ohm, our land planning consultant, Mr. George Kissel, our MAI designated appraiser, Mr. Terrence O'Brien, and our traffic consultant, Mr. Peter Lemon. Um, Chair, that was a lot of names. If, if you want to swear in the witnesses, I can begin my uh, case in chief. That's sure thing. I'm going to go down my list, Counselor, and then let me know if I'm missing anyone. Um, so first up, Gabriel Martinez, will you please state your name and address? Gabriel Martinez, 6849 North Saginaw, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Um, Ross Moriale, will you state your name and address? Sorry about that. Uh, 5875 Collins Avenue, uh, 
Miami Beach, Florida, 33140. Thanks. And can you state your name as well, spelling your last name? Ross Morreale, M-O-R-R-E-A-L-E. -E. Great, thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great. Okay, Paul Ohm, will you state your name and address? Council, remind me Paul Ohm's role. So Paul is the, uh, with P4 Security, he's the security consultant. Okay. Um, I know one of his colleagues, Stefano Vitelli, may also be, I don't know if they're joining separately or together. Let's see. And if not, I could, I could reach out um, while we work through the initial witnesses as well. Yeah, yeah reach out, I'll, I'll get everyone. Um, uh, Chairman, there's some people unknown phone numbers. If if they are one of them, they can press star nine to raise their hand up from the phone. Oh, great! Yeah, good reminder. So yeah, if you are on the phone and you're meant to be on this matter, um, press star nine. Okay, Councilor. Yeah, try to reach um, Paul or. Um, their colleague, and I'm going to keep going down the list. Great. So, Peter Lemon, will you state your name and address? Sure. Uh, Peter Lemon uh, with Kimley Horn and Associates, office address at 111 West Jackson, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. Thank you. Um, George Kissel, will you state your name and address? Um, certainly, Chair, I am sworn from a prior matter, though, if you want to. <laughs> That's right. It's been um, sometimes the days blur, even though there's a month in between. So we have um, already um, sworn George in, and he remains sworn. Same with Terrence O'Brien. We've sworn Terrence in and acknowledged his expertise. So he remains sworn and acknowledged. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> um, and then finally, we've got on my list, Paul Sanka. Paul, will you state your name and address? Paul Sanka, 40 Landover Parkway, Hawthorne Woods, Illinois, 60047. Uh, Paul you. Sanka, Sank Architects, thank you. Great, thank you. And do you swear from to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay. Um, counselor, um, do we have Paul Ohm or his colleague? Just reach out to them. I was told that they were signing in. Okay. I don't want to delay the, the, the hearing. And I believe by the time we get to them, they'll be uh, in. Uh, they'll be okay, in the hearing. Yeah. And, and I agree. It's also not technically required, but I'm sure it would be helpful to have them on. So um, whoever's listening in the background, just do your best to get Paul Ohm or their colleague on and Perfect. counsel with that. You can go right ahead. Perfect. Okay, um, my first witness, Mr. Gabriel Martinez. Gabe, are you still with us? Yes. Uh, Gabe, you are the Chief Executive Officer of the Applicant, GRI Holdings LLC, is that right? That is right. And again, that entity has a lease with an uh, option, option purchase uh, for the subject property at 612 North Wall Street? Yes. And your plan is to establish and operate an adult use cannabis dispensary at that property, is that right? Yes. Now, before we get into the actual operations, is it true that the applicant is a qualified social equity applicant under the terms of the Illinois statute? Yes. And again, ownership is made up of a number of service veterans, female owners, as well as minority owners, correct? Correct. And your general makeup um, allows you to actually exceed the social equity qualifications uh, set by the state, correct? Yes. And Mr. Chairman, again, while it's not controlling uh, for today's hearing, I wanted to make sure the board was aware uh, of that ownership structure because it was the same information presented to the community through our community engagement process. Um, Gabe, with respect to the site, uh, as you know, it's improved with a one-story retail building with an accessory surface parking lot. Yes. And your plan is to adapt and reuse the existing 6,435 square foot building uh, so again, it can operate as a dispensary, right? Yes. And 
The dispensary will uh, operate daily between the hours of 9 a.m. and 10 p.m.? Yes. And um, as we've discussed with the local community organization, um, you may look to shorten uh, the hours of operation based on need and demand, uh, provided the board approves the use and the business begins to operate, correct? Yes. Now, you initially intend on hiring upwards of 20 employee and staff members to help you run the day-to-day -day operations? Yes. And those roles range from uh, security associates to inventory and product directors to store managers, right? Yes. And each of those employees will be trained pursuant to the requirements of the state statute, including ongoing professional development and continuing education, correct? Yes. Now, as part of this process, is it true that we work closely with the River North Residents Association as a community partner regarding the application? Yes. And during that review process, you agreed to staff the dispensary with two armed security guards during all, hour, all hours of operation, correct? Yes. You also agreed to provide an armed guard uh, during overnight hours when the store is actually closed for business. Yes. And again, we'll discuss the security roles in a few minutes, but uh, these commitments were made of, as part of our uh, overall commitment uh, and agreement with the River North Residents Association, right? Yes. Uh, Gabe, all in, the applicant is prepared to invest upwards of $2 million in site and security improvements uh, to bring the store, uh, to make it operational? Yes. And these improvements extend just uh, beyond just the building and include the surface parking area, perimeter landscaping, fencing, outdoor lighting, and the installation of a security camera, correct? Yes. Uh, that's a security system with multiple cameras. And again, we'll get into the details on that uh, shortly. Right? Yes, yes. Um, Gabe, is it your understanding that my office prepared witness statements on your behalf in this case? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements we provided? Yes. Thank you. Um, my next witness, Ross Morelli. Ross, are you with us? Yes, I'm right here. Great. Um, you are the manager of GRC Ops LLC, is that right? Correct. And GRC is a general consulting and management firm specializing in the cannabis industry, right? Yes. Now, your role with the applicant has been to assist in developing the operations and customer service plan for the proposed dispensary again at 612 North Wells, correct? Yes. Um, so in terms of, to kind of get into it, in terms of a typical uh, customer transaction, a customer would come to the store and walk into the entrance vestibule located along North Wells Street, correct? Correct. And that entrance vestibule is a 210 square foot area at the front of the building that's separated from the rest of the dispensary sales area, right? Correct. Now, before a customer is allowed into the dispensary sales area, he or she would be identified or would uh, have to check identification with one of your staff members, correct? Correct. And again, the staff member is confirming proper uh, identification as well as verifying the age uh, 21 and over, right? Yes, both of those things. And to be clear, this will be done inside the building with at least one security guard present, right? Yes. Now, assuming a customer shows the proper identification, they'll be led into the sales room, correct? Correct. And from there, a customer would be able to um, view the available product, consult with dispensary staff, and ultimately make or pick up their order, correct? Correct. And your, your business model contemplates really three primary ways a, a customer would be able to purchase um, product at the, at the dispensary, right? Correct. First, a customer can place an order online and head right to the pre-order uh, counter. Is that right? Yes. They can also use one of the self-order kiosks located within the sales area. Correct. Or they can make an order uh, with one of the service pro professionals at, at the main sales counter, correct? Correct. Um, after making a purchase, each customer will be directed to leave the dispensary through the doorway located on the north side of the building, right? 
Yes. And then they'll walk or walk back to Wall Street or get into their car, which will lead them back to Wall Street either way. Correct. The point here is that customers will exit and enter the dispensary through separate and distinct doorways, which in turn allows you and your security personnel to better control customer movements and keep the store safe and secure during all hours of operation. Is that right? Correct. Now, Ross, while we obviously want to provide a welcoming, safe environment, is there an average transaction time in, in the, for cannabis dispensaries? It, yes, it depends on which uh, mode you order, but typically uh, four to seven minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, to complete. Um, some customers know what they want uh, and some make pre-orders and those are quicker transactions while other customers prefer to come into the store and ask questions. Uh, but the shopping experience is, is somewhat limited um, based on my knowledge of, of the industry. Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. No, no, no problem. I mean, it's limited in the sense that there's uh, multiple products, but but one type of product being purchased, right? Correct. Um, now, during peak times, you're anticipating serving between 20 and 25 customers at any given time? Yes. And given the uh, 210 square foot entrance vestibule, along with the 1700 square foot sales area, you believe you have the capacity to handle that type of volume, correct? Yes. And separate from the physical building, your program also provides customers with an on-site parking option, correct? Correct. Again, the site uh, has a 15 space surface parking lot located immediately adjacent to the building that you or the, the applicant has exclusive control over, right? Yes. And that uh, parking lot is also important to the operations because it allows you to control and conduct deliveries entirely on site in a secure way, correct? Yes. So all of the deliveries um, to the building will occur at the rear of the secured lot um, near where the trash enclosure is shown on the uh, site plan, right? Correct. And again, because the parking lot is fenced on three sides and does not provide or have any kind of alley access, all of the deliveries will be conducted and contained wholly on site, right? Correct. And again, without speaking for the neighbors of uh, the River North Residents Association, that was an important point of uh, operations discussed during our review, correct? Yes. With that, Ross, is it your understanding that my office has filed a witness statement on your behalf in this case? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements you provided? Hey, Nick, your your sound is doing the, the fading thing again. I'm so sorry, Chair. It's okay. Ross, would your statements be consistent with the uh, statements already provided to the board? Yes. Thank you. Um, it, Chairman, do you know if Paul's with us, or if not, I can I can skip to. Yeah, Paul. Paul, um, uh, I saw them on. Um, yes, uh, Paul's here. There we go. Great. Okay, Paul, can you state your name and address, please? And yeah. integrated into. Oh, sorry. Someone's got to mute. Um, if you're not speaking, please mute. Um, and go ahead, Paul. Uh, Paul Ohm, 3720 Sarah Street, Franco Park, Illinois. 60131. Great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. And Paul, uh, you are a co founder and executive vice president with P4 Solutions. Is that right? Yeah, I'm the executive vice president and a principal in the company. Correct. And P4 is a nationwide security consultation firm and security service provider. Correct? Correct. Correct. Now, while you have experience in various corporate and private security matters, you also already provide security for sev several cannabis dispensaries and cannabis-related businesses um, in the state of Illinois and specifically also in the city of Chicago. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Your role uh, with the applicant has been to assist it in developing a security plan for the proposed dispensary. Is that right? Yes, correct. Now, as we discussed with Ross, your plan provides for an armed guard to be stationed at the entrance of the building? Correct. And again, they'll oversee the customer ID verification process and then allow the eligible customers into the sales area, right? Yes, correct. 
uh, that post allows the guard to keep sights not only on the entrance vestibule, but also uh, the frontages on Wells Street and on Ontario Street, correct? Correct. You'll also uh, have a stationed uh, second armed guard at the exit of the uh, dispensary located along the north side of the building, right? Correct. And that guard will oversee the pre-order pickup area and specifically the exit area uh, within the store, correct? That's correct. Um, but what's convenient about that post is that it'll also give the security guard a direct view of the parking area immediately adjacent to the building, right? Correct. Now, again, based on the applicant's commitment to the neighbor neighborhood association, um, is it also true that you'll be providing an overnight armed guard for this location? Correct. Um, so there will always be uh, at least one arm, armed guard on site, again, two during uh, operating hours and then one overnight. Is that right? Yes, correct. And for the record, P4 uh, ensures that all of its guards are properly trained and qualified to provide security services and handle uh, weapons, correct? Correct. And uh, in fact, many of your guards are ex-military or law enforcement professionals familiar with, again, security protocol, as well as handling weapons, right? Yes, correct. Now, in addition to the two regular uh, security guards, the plan you're providing also calls for the installation of over 50 surveillance cameras on site, correct? Correct. And those cameras will monitor not only the inside of the dispensary, but the surface parking lot, the street frontages, and the alley that runs behind our building to keep an eye on uh, activity in and around our property, right? Correct. Now those cameras will be linked uh, to your company's command center to ensure constant 24 hour monitoring? Yes, correct. And they'll also be linked to the city of Chicago's OEMC network and shared with local police whenever necessary, right? The external cameras, uh, yes, part of the uh, uh, the shield program with the city of Chicago, yes. Great. And on that point, P4 already has an active and ongoing relationship with local law enforcement and specifically with the 18th police district. Is that right? That's correct. And you fully intend on continuing to build that relationship and cooperate with the police department whenever needed. Is that right? Absolutely correct. Yes. So lastly, Paul, is it your professional opinion that, that the proposed security plan will allow the dispensary to operate in a safe and secure manner? Yes, correct. Is it also your understanding that my office filed a witness statement on your behalf with the board? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, would your testimony be contained in those written statements? Yes, correct. Very much. Um, Chairman, my next witness is Mr. George Kissel. Uh, George, you are a, a land planning consultant by trade? Yes, I am. And uh, you're familiar with the subject property at 612 North Wall Street? Yes, I am. The scope of your assignment in this case was to evaluate whether the requested special use uh, would comply with the general criteria for special uses, as well as the additional criteria for cannabis related uses. Is that right? That's correct. And based on your inspection of the subject area, you believe all of those approval criteria are being met. Is that right? That is correct. And uh, more specifically, the proposed dispensary is not going to be located within 500 feet of a school or educational institution? Correct. Uh, it's also not located within 1,500 feet of another social equity applicant uh, or operator. Is that right? None that is existing. Correct. George, you did prepare a uh, written report detailing your findings and conclusions in this case? I did. And George, uh, if you can very briefly summarize the uh, conclusions you made based on your uh, in-person inspection of the area, general familiarity with the, the area, um, and the proposed use. Uh, sure. Um, in, arri in arriving at the conclusions that are contained in the uh, report that was submitted, 
I examined the broad and local land use context, including a detailed inventory and analysis of the uses that are within 500 feet of the subject property, analyzed the land use characteristics of the proposed use, evaluated the proposal with respect to the standards for the DX5 downtown mixed use district, and evaluated the proposal with respect to the additional criteria for the approval of special uses. This report submitted contains sufficient detail and evidence in support of the conclusions. I'll try to be brief and just touch on some of the major points. So um, as was mentioned earlier, uh, first and foremost, there are no schools present within 500 feet uh, from the property line as required by section 17901293. The closest school to the subject property is Elite Sports Academy at 420 West Huron. It's about 1,325 feet away. With respect to other sensitive uses in the area, we know that there's a facility that treats individuals with substance use disorder across the street at 609 Wells. It's an outpatient facility that provides counseling and methadone treatment. Uh, given the mixed use nature of River North neighborhood and the preponderance of entertainment uses, including bars and restaurants that serve alcohol and an existing dispensary less than 300 feet away at 216 West Ohio, all of these uh, are existing potential triggers for those who are suffering from substance use disorder. The addition of another adult use cannabis dispensary does not change the fundamental land use characteristics of the area, nor would it negatively affect um, that facility. It should be noted that immediately adjacent to the north and south of the treatment center is a martini bar and a sports bar. The proposed use will be located in an existing building that has occupied the site in its current form since about 1980. It was previously the home to Carson's restaurant. Uh, the existing structure is in character and scale, the surrounding mixed use neighborhood in which it's located. And it's consistent with the character of the surrounding area with respect to its physical attributes. The proposed use is in the interest of the public convenience in that the steady increase of retail recreational cannabis sales in Chicago indicates significant demand for addi additional adult use cannabis dispensaries. The provision of an additional Dispensary is certainly in the interest of the public convenience for retail customers. As the only currently available facilities are the 10 existing uh, medical dispensaries that have been issued on same state licenses for recreation sales, plus eight more recently approved facilities for a total of 18 in the city. To provide a little context uh, for the board, city of Chicago with a population of 2.75 million and 18 dispensaries translates to 0.33 dispensaries for 50,000 people. For reference, a recent study found that the top cities for dispensaries per capita to be Missoula, Montana, which with a population of 75,000 had 18.1 dispensaries per 50,000. That's most of any city. Medford, Oregon with a population of about 82,000 had 17 dispensaries per 50,000 people. Pueblo, Colorado with about 112,000 had about 16.6 .6 per 50,000. Eugene, Oregon, with a population of about 175,000, had 16.1 per 50,000. And Denver, with a population of about a little over 700,000, had just about 15 per uh, 50,000 people. This would be River North's fourth dispensary with a population of about 90,000. That translates to 2.2 um, dispensaries per 50,000 people in that area. It's certainly noted that there's an existing dispensary located around the corner from the subject property. State regulations do mandate a 1500 foot buffer between dispensaries, but that 1500 foot buffer is waived for equity applicants, which is the case in this instance. Given the state's rules and the intent of those rules, it's important to allow equity applicants the same access to markets as non-equity applicants and allowing the, an equity applicant dispensary in this location certainly accomplishes those goals. Providing adequate facilities to satisfy demand is in the public interest, given the amount of additional tax revenue in general is generated by recreational cannabis sales. That revenue generation is particularly advantageous in this location as it's frequently visited by tourists and out of town business travelers. We know the subject property, as we mentioned earlier, is in a vibrant high density mixed use area in the River North neighborhood. A mixture of street fronting retailers, bars, restaurants, high rise residential, commercial and hotel uses make it a highly desirable location for multiple uses. Locations well served by the regional expressway system, public transportation also. 
The addition of a complementary use, such as an adult use cannabis dispensary, will draw more consumers from around the city of Chicago, as well as tourists and business travelers from out of town. It will serve the local daytime population of employees, as well as local residents. All of this in the interest of the public convenience in this particular location. Proposed use is similar to other retail uses in terms of its land use characteristics. Retail in general uh, are compatible with other com commercial uses such as restaurant, entertainment, office and service uses, as well as resi residential uses and did not constitute a land use conflict, particularly in a vibrant mixed use area like this one. Any issues that would arise from a, a use such as cannabis facility um, would be due to the management of the operations, not the land use itself. Um, and we know that land use or that uh, adult use cannabis dispensaries, unlike other retail uses, are highly regulated with requirements for enhanced security and defined procedures for deliveries and loading. These additional requirements, which include trained on site security personnel, as we've heard in prior testimony, along with robust surveillance systems, provide a benefit to the area in terms of enhancing surveillance systems um, during hours of operation as well as after hours. You know the hours of operation, they're 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. These hours are compatible with the adjacent uses and not in conflict with other commercial entertainment and service uses in the area. The use will operate in a similar fashion as to other retail uses in the area, but with much more structured and regulated procedures for security deliveries and loading. The proposed use is modest in size and similar to many nearby uses in the general area. The proposed use is less intense than restaurant uses nearby with an anticipated average daily transaction count of about 360. Given the location of the property near transit, the close proximity of daytime employees, tourists, and residential populations, significant amounts of vehicular traffic and on-street parking are not anticipated. Delivers will occur on-site in a walled service area at the rear of the subject property. Transportation study prepared by Kim Lee Horn in February of 22 found that the proposed dispensary is not expected to generate significant volumes of traffic during the morning and evening peak hours, and that traffic and pedestrian activity generated by the proposed dispensary is expected to be read readily accommodated by the adjacent streets and intersections. Outdoor lighting will be consistent with pertinent ordinances and will be out of character with surrounding uses. Given all of this, the proposed use is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of operating characteristics hours of operation, outdoor lighting, noise, and traffic generation. The proposal makes no physical changes that would negatively impact pedestrian safety and comfort. The building's primary entrance will remain at its current location on Wells Street and actively engage the street frontage. Uh, given the length of time that the subject property has been vacant, the return of an active use should only serve to enhance the comfort and safety in the vicinity of the subject property for pedestrians. Um, the enhanced security requirements referenced earlier will also provide an added measure of safety to the pedestrian environment. Given all of that, the proposed use will enhance and promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Based on all this, and I'm sorry for the long-winded nature um, of, the, uh, of, the, of the monologue, the proposal is consistent with all the applicable standards for special uses, the additional standards for adult use cannabis dispensaries, and that the proposed land use will have no adverse impact and that no public uh, purpose of any kind would be served by its denial. George, um, it's your understanding that a copy of the written report has been submitted to the board. Is that right? Indeed it has. And again, if you were to continue to testify, that testimony would be consistent with the uh, findings and conclusions contained in the written report. Yes, it would. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair, my next witness is Mr. Terrence O'Brien. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Terry, um, again, you were the scope of your assignment in this case was also to evaluate whether the requested special use uh, will comply with the general criteria for special uses, as well as the additional criteria for cannabis related uses. Is that right? That is correct. You also inspected the subject area um, as so not only the subject property, but also the surrounding area. Yes, I'm familiar with the subject area for this specific case. I inspected the property on January 8th of this year, and then uh, this past Wednesday, uh, July uh, 13th, I re-inspected the subject and surrounding area. I've also testified on various zoning cases in the surrounding area, including the current uh, dispensary at 216 West Ohio Street. And 
Terry, so that we're not redundant in our testimony, um, your your conclusion in your written report is that all of the uh, special use and additional cannabis related use criteria are met by this application. Is that right? Well, I guess the best way to say it is I agree totally with Mr. Oprah, with the, the land planner. And I would also point out that more specifically, that there are some benefits that will occur as a result of the proposed special use, include employment opportunities, put to productive use of property that is currently vacant. It will also provide additional real estate taxes and sales tax revenues and so forth. And in my opinion, it will uh, be harmonious and compatible with all of the existing land uses in the subject area. Thank you very much, Terry. It's your understanding that a uh, copy of your written report was submitted to the board already. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, sir. And if you were to continue to testify, your testimony would be consistent with the findings and conclusions contained in your written report. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my uh, last witness is Mr. Peter Lemon. Uh, Peter, you're still with us? I am. <laughs> You, um, you are a professional engineer specializing in traffic, transportation, and parking evaluations and consultation. Is that right? Uh, correct. And you testified uh, in that capacity before uh, this board on many occasions in the past. Yes. Uh, you're familiar with 612 North Wall Street? Yes, ma'am. And the scope of your assignment in this case was to provide an assessment of the existing traffic patterns and traffic capacity uh, in the subject area, as well as provide a um, professional opinion as to whether or not the proposed use would negatively impact those existing conditions. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And um, generally speaking, it's, it's your professional opinion that the proposed use will be very well supported and served by the existing uh, street and uh, infrastructure, um, as well as not create an undue amount of new traffic in the subject area. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And you also believe the accessory parking lot will operate in a uh, safe and uh, efficient manner that also helps alleviate the potential for traffic uh, congestion or backup related specifically to the subject property. Right. Yes, I agree. And uh, in your general opinion, or I'm sorry, in your professional opinion, um, you believe the special use has been designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort, correct? Correct. Uh, Peter, uh, you also prepared, again, a written traffic analysis or report um, summarizing your findings and conclusions in this case? Yes, I did. And uh, it's your understanding that my office has submitted a copy of that written report to the board, correct? Yes, that's my understanding. And if you were to continue to testify, would your testimony be consistent with the findings and conclusions contained in your written report? Yes, it would. Great. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes the applicant's case in chief. Again, we do have a number of witnesses. Um, I did not call uh, our project architect as this is a special use, but again, if there are any questions related to the build out of the uh, interior build out of the space or any of our professionals, we'd be happy to answer those questions at this time. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you, Counselor. So any questions from the board before we move over to the objector? Okay. So let's go over to Mr. Fred Lev. Fred, can you state your name and address, please? Fred Lev, F-R-E-D-L-E-V, 200 West Ohio Street, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to, state, to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, as outlined at the beginning, you now can state your objection. And if you please ask any, or and if, if you would like to ask any questions of the applicant. So go right ahead. Uh, yes, I have prepared a brief uh, statement to be read. And uh, any questions I have will uh, uh, follow. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, go ahead. I have owned the uh, property next door to the proposed dispensary for almost 25 years. Two years ago, a dispensary seeking a lease from the same current landowner appro approached the alderman and community to request the same use at this very same site and was soundly rejected. The reason for the rejection is as poignant and valid today as it was then. 
the proposed recreational drug dispensary would sit directly across the street from the CAP Medical Clinic at 609 North Wells. CAP is a drug addiction treatment center that has served Chicago and the River North community since 1976. Under the Chicago Zoning Ordinance 17-13-0905, special use applications such as this can be granted only if the proposed use satisfies a list of, of criteria, which include the use being in the interest of public convenience and will not have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood or community. There can be no clearer, no gla more glaring contradiction of community interest than, the, and a, than a zoning board to approve a destination shop directly across from a drug addiction center. I repeat that directly across from a drug addiction treatment center. As to the interest of public convenience, there already is a dispensary on the same block, 200 feet around the corner on Ohio Street. And let me repeat that. There already is a dispensary on the same block, 200 feet around the corner on Ohio Street. So rejecting this application will therefore have no substantial impact on the public's convenient access to cannabis products properties, uh, products on this very block. However, there may be significant consequences for the many individuals who visit 609 North Well Street seeking to recover from drug addiction. They will go for treatment, attempting to wean from drugs, and hoping not to relapse, only to find a marijuana shop as the first site they see when they exit the clinic. Respectfully, this would seem cruel and taunting to allow this special use door-to-door -door access from addiction center that's been helping Chicagoans for nearly 50 years. Not only might granting, not only might the granting of this special use permit adversely impact the general community, but given the immediate proximity of another dispensary on the same block will in no way serve to increase public convenient access to cannabis property products. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Lepp. And um, uh, also, do you, do you have any questions you'd like to ask of the applicant? No, other than the fact that I've owned the property for 25 years, there's one dispensary on one side of me and now another dispensary on the other side that serves the same type of, uh, of um, interest um, I, and, and, a, and a dispensary, uh, which like I said, uh, is situated directly across from a drug medical uh, rehab clinic. Uh, I, I have questions about, is it servicing the community? Is it servicing the River North where you have a, a, a dramatic rise in crime all you have to do is open up the newspaper every morning and see what happened the night before or the day before or the weekend before. I mean, it gets to a point where these dispensaries think that they're just retail outlets selling trinkets. They're not, they're selling drugs. And the community does not need another dispensary 200 feet away from another dispensary. And then you have, and then you have high rise uh, development on the same intersection at Ontario and Wells, you have two high rise luxury apartments that have families and small children right across the street on the same intersection. You tell me, does a, does a dispensary have any uh, positive effect on the community? Yes, I've owned the property for 25 years. Yes, I see what's happening uh, daily. I've okay. spoken my word. I've spoken my my uh, opinion, and I've listened to uh, your opinions and your experts um, respectfully. Um, I can't tell you uh, how negative I think this particular uh, operation would be on the community uh, uh, and the surrounding residents. 
Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Levin. We've we definitely as a as a board um, have we've got your objection. We're not we're not voicing any opinions at this time. We're just gathering information for when we deliberate. Um, I want to see if there's any other objectors on the call who would like to state objections. All you need to do is raise your hand, and we'll make sure you have the opportunity to speak. Okay, so to stick with our process as outlined, we're gonna move back to the applicant for rebuttal. Um, at that time, after the rebuttal, I'd like the board to ask questions if they have any. Um, and from there, the applicant can make a closing if they if they please. Um, so with that, Councillor, go ahead and, and move to your rebuttal. I have about uh, three or four points to make on rebuttal. Um, Mr. Lev raised the issue about the treatment center uh, and the impact our proposed use would have on that treatment center. I'd point out for the record that as of right now, the treatment center has not lodged an objection or and or is not present to testify uh, one way or another regarding our, our pending application. Um, I'd also point out, and Mr. Kissel spoke to it as well as Mr. O'Brien, that there are a number of existing licensed establishments in the immediate area that serve alcohol and at least one other licensed cannabis operator within 300 feet of the property. With all due respect to Mr. Lev, the uh, potential for um, triggering or temptation already exists on the subject block. What makes us different than a restaurant where you can go in and order a beer and drink that beer on site is that state law currently prohibits the on-site consumption of the product that's being purchased at the dispensary. And I think that's a very important distinction to make based on our proposed use versus what, can all, what could be permitted at the property without uh, any additional input or special use relief. I'd also point out regarding the impact on the neighborhood we worked for over six months with the resident, uh, River North Residents Association. I'll be very honest, our starting point was a little shaky. There were concerns raised about security and about operations. It's my understanding that that's one of the reasons a prior applicant unrelated to our case um, brought a, a potential uh, special use case forward and ultimately withdrew its request. What's different about this applicant is that it was willing to work with those community members, develop a security plan that made them feel more comfortable specifically. And again, I'm, uh, my own, I'm not speaking for RNRA, but uh, our impression was that having an overnight guard was critical to the uh, uh, security of the neighborhood. And that was something that we negotiated with um, RNRA who I, I hope you have a copy of their letter. That's an organization that represents over 7,000 residents in the River North neighborhood. They, we worked with them again for a six month period to get the plan to where it is today. And the conclusion of the River North Residents Association's letter is that our use will not have a deleterious impact on the neighborhood because of the operations, because of the security commitments that we've made um, that are, distinguish us from other potential operators at this or any nearby property. Um, and I'd also point out for the record that while I appreciate Mr. Lev's uh, positions regarding um, the standards for special use, I believe that Mr. O'Brien in particular, uh, Mr. Kissel have provided sufficient uh, testimony regarding the compatibility of our proposed use with uh, neighboring land uses, again, specifically on our block and is in this very particular area of River North. Um, Chairman, I, unless there's a question by the board, I'd be more than happy to provide a, a brief closing um, and, and we'll, I'll leave it to you. Yep, no, thanks, Councilor. So I do wanna offer the board the opportunity to ask any, any questions that they've got on their mind. Okay, I think we've got a lot of information here. Um, so with that, um, Councillor, would you like to take a closing? Uh, just simply stating that we, we really do appreciate the opportunity to make our presentation. It comes after um, a six month community review process that we believe 
uh, produced a very safe, secure, uh, and viable uh, operation uh, proposed at 612 North Wall Street. We really, again, thank you for the time and consideration of uh, this request. Yep, thank you very much for everyone, everyone for your time today, for staying on the call, um, for the in-depth analysis and in-depth objection. Um, we appreciate the substance and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you, sir. All right, we're gonna give um, the board a little bit of a break. Uh, we're gonna move to a 15 minute recess. So this will go to 3.20 central. Um, uh, and when we get back, I do think we can power through some a little more quickly because I don't see, at least on my inventory, um, too many objected matters. So with that, again, recess to 320. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. See everyone at 320. Thanks.
All right, welcome back everybody. I move that we reconvene this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, we are back. Um, and we're moving right into a special use, 238-22-S. Um, do we have Councillor Paul Kopak? Yes. Great. Hi, good Paul. afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Hope good everybody's afternoon. well. Good you, afternoon. You, you too. So as everyone gets situated, I want to first say if there's anyone objecting on this matter, please just raise your hand and I'll have you promoted. Um, and meantime, I'm going to read the department's recommendation. So for 238-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed, the proposed one-lane drive-through for proposed Starbucks restaurant, provided that the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Starbucks Corp, and the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site and landscape plans um, and landscape details dated May 4th, 2022, prepared by Watermark Engineering Resources with life safety and accessibility plan, AKA furniture, equipment and floor plan and floor penetrations plan prepared by NOR and elevations consisting of two sheets and roof garbage enclosure plans prepared by Agama Designs. Mr. Chairman. Yep, Councilor, go right ahead. I think uh, Alderman Cardona is on the line. I would um, defer to him if you, if you uh, prefer. Yeah, I, I see Alderman Cardona on. So Alderman, if, if you could just unmute, I'll, I'll swear you in. I'm unmuted. Great, can you um, please just state your name and role? Um, my name is Alderman Cardona, Jr. Alderman of the 31st Ward. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay, Alderman, would you like to speak? You could speak now on the matter or afterwards. It's really up to you. Um, I could speak okay. now because because I'm in <laughs> two committees. Yeah, um, sure. So I'm here uh, in respect to the development. Uh, we did have a community meeting, a robust community meeting back in, I believe, November, December. I can't really, really recall with the neighbors that's surrounding the property in question. And um, basically... The, the residents there do support uh, the development that's going to be going on in that particular location. Um, I have not got any feet. Well, the feedback I got was there and supportive, but I have no feedback, anybody against it. So on that note, um, it was, it was a good, uh, it was a good community meeting. Um, and basically we also had a open door policy afterwards listening to the residents uh, who did not make it um, um, and uh, listening to their concerns via either phone or email. And um, most of them were all, all of them that, that emailed us were in support or called us. Yes, we don't want to start. Oh, sorry, there's some feedback of someone else speaking. Uh, there we go. Okay, Alderman, uh, thank, thank you for coming. Was that, was that, did you have anything else? No, I have nothing further to say, but um, hopefully I can get your support and basically get this uh, development going. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, we know it's a busy day, so we appreciate you coming. All right. You take care. Bye. You too. All right, Counselor, you can, you can take it away. Kevin, just a question. Uh, um, I don't believe there are any objectors. As the Alvin mentioned, we had sent out letters to a thousand feet. Uh, we had about 60 people attend and everybody seemed to be in support. If uh, there are objectors, I certainly can go into detail. Otherwise, if you would like, I can short uh, circuit this. Yeah, please that. just short version is great. I'm gonna be asking that of, um, you teed me up well, cause I'm gonna be asking that of lawyers going forward today. Um, so, so with that, go ahead with the short. Thank you very much. The proposed uh, subject site is approximately 18,853 uh, square feet, located at the intersection of West Parker Avenue and North Cicero Avenue at 2737 to 51 North Cicero and 4746 to 56 West Parker Avenue in the Belmont 
Craigie community. The applicant proposes to construct an, a uh, 2,204 square foot one story brick restaurant building with accessory one lane drive through window and menu board. Proposal includes also a bicycle rack, 21 off street parking spaces, one of which is ADA, ADA accessible. Uh, I, we attended the intake meeting with Nancy back in um, March of this year. Uh, we adapted the uh, adopted. I'm sorry. The uh, comments from the landscaping uh, um, department of transportation, as well as um, the planning department, into our, our proposal. Uh, I believe we have. Uh, Nancy's support on that. I have three witnesses today. First one would be Kelsey Mon, who is uh, representing the applicant to Starbucks Corporation. We have our uh, architect, Alberto Agama, and finally our consultant, Mr. Kareem Musawir. Uh, would you like to swear all three in at the same time? Or yep, I'll do that. Um, yep, so Kelsey, Kelsey Mon, can you state your name and address, please? Yep, this is Kelsey Bourne. Uh, address is 111 North Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60606. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Dan Klein, will you state your name and address? Dan is not going to be here today. Okay. Um, we, like I mentioned, Mr. Chairman, will be Kelsey, uh, Mr. Musawir, and we have our architect, Mr. Agama. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Agama, will you state your name and address, please? Yes, uh, my name is Alberto Agama. I am uh, located at 129 Commercial Drive, Suite 8, Yorkville, Illinois. Okay, great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Um, last but not least, uh, we have sworn... Mr. Musawir in and, and acknowledge his expertise yeah, and remain sworn. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kareem. Uh, Kelsey, would you please state your name for the record? Yep, this is Kelsey Morn. Kelsey, what, if this special use is granted, what would the hours of operation be there, please? Uh, about 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. And that would be seven days a week? Correct. And about Approximately how many employees would you have at any one time? On it? Uh, we'd roughly. be hiring about 25 employees total. And there would always be either a manager or an assistant manager uh, in the normal course of business there for the community and for the uh, people yes. who want to come in. I have no further questions for Ms. Warren. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, we prepared an affidavit that we filed with the board, and if you were called on to testify any further, you'd testify in substantial compliance with that affidavit. Is that correct? Yes. I have no further questions for Ms. Ms. Morin. Thank you. Green? Yes, sir. Oh, would you, good afternoon. Would you please state your name? Kareem Musawir, land use consultant and zoning consultant at 221 North LaSalle Street in Chicago. As part of your representation for this uh, special use, you did in fact visit the property, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you prepared a report on that property, is that correct? I did, yes. And would that report uh, indicate that this projected uh, special use would meet all the criterion set forth in the special use standards the City of Chicago Zoning Ordinance, is that correct? That's correct. And if you were called on to testify further, you testify at substantial compliance with that report, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I have no further questions from Mr. Musa Weir. If, uh, that really uh, has our case in chief. If there's any questions from Ms. Warren, or Mr. Musawir or our architect were prepared to answer those questions. All right, thanks, Councilor. Um, any questions from the board on this matter? Is 
Okay, we've got the info we need. So we will take this under consideration and thank you very much everyone for your time. Thank you very much. Yep. So just for one matter, we're gonna go out of order um, for a, a special circumstance that has come up. So I'm now gonna call calendar number um, 195-22-Z. Um, so Councillor Nick Patikas, when you're, when you're here, you can uh, go ahead and get started. Meantime, if anyone is here to object on this matter, again, 195-22-Z, um, please raise your hand and we will get you um, speaking rights. Chairman, this is uh, Nick Fatikas. Yep, we've got you, Nick. I, I, I really do appreciate the consideration. I'm gonna try and make this as um, short and concise as I can. Um, I'm here uh, on behalf of the applicant, Roscoe Bell Properties, LLC. The applicant owns a subject property at 2237 West Roscoe. The subject lot measures 72 feet wide by 125 feet deep. The eastern third of the site had been improved with a three-story multi-unit residential building. The remainder of the site though had been vacant uh, and had been uh, demolished and was vacant and otherwise unimproved. Now the property itself is located in the Roscoe Street Overlay District, uh, special district number 10. And that's important in this case because it actually imposes a 1400 square foot minimum lot area requirement instead of the typical 1000 square foot minimum uh, lot area requirement uh, imposed by the underlying B2-2 zoning district. Now, the applicant is proposing to develop the property with a new three-story, seven-unit residential building. And in order to permit the uh, seven-unit total, the applicant is seeking a variation to reduce the minimum lot area per unit from 1,400 square feet to 1,285.71 square feet, plus or minus about 115 feet of technical minimum lot area in our uh, requested reduction. Um, I have two witnesses available to testify. The first is Mr. George Pop, and the second is our project architect, Mr. Christopher Bremer. Um, and if you can swear in the witnesses, Chair, I can begin the, uh, the case. Great. Yeah, Mr. George Pop, will you state your name and address, please? Uh, George Pop, 6629 North Minnehaha, Lincolnwood, 60712. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Um, Christopher Bremer, state your name and address, please. Christopher Bremer, 1016 West Jackson Boulevard, number 312, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. Uh, George, again, you're the managing member of the applicant, Roscoe Bell Properties, LLC. Yes. And that entity owns the subject property commonly known as 2237 West Roscoe, right? Yes. Uh, the site measures 72 feet wide by 125 feet deep. Yes. Is that right? Correct. And you're proposing to develop the property with a new three-story, seven-unit residential building, correct? Correct. And uh, you're seeking a variation specifically to permit the seven-unit total at the subject property. Correct. Right? Uh, provided the board uh, approves the variation, your plan is to sell the proposed units on the open market? Yes. And you've provided the board with a economic analysis, uh, again, including your projected costs and expenses, as well as your anticipated return for this project. Is that right? Correct. Uh, George, before we conclude your testimony, is it true that we've worked with the Roscoe Village Neighbors Association and Alderman Wagaspak's office specifically on this proposal? Correct. And the uh, plan being presented to the zoning board today, dated 6-15-2022, includes all of the design elements and details that we negotiated with the community uh, through that process. Is that right? Correct. And based on those negotiations, again, you're, you're not aware of any pending objection. To the contrary, I believe there's a letter of, of no objection by oh. the alderman and community on record. Is that right? That is right. Uh, George, is it your understanding that my office filed a witness statement on your behalf in this case? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements we provided? Yes. Great. Chris, you uh, are the uh, architect of record for this project? That's right. You previously testified in that capacity before this board. Is that right? I have. And you designed the proposed seven-unit residential building at the subject site? 
Correct. And is it your professional opinion that the unique lot dimensions and corresponding lot area total, together with the additional minimum lot area requirement imposed by the overlay district, create the practical hardships or particular difficulties in this case? Yes. And that's because typically a 9,000 square foot lot located in a B2-2 zoning district would support nine residential units, correct? Correct. Um, and in this case, again, per code, we would be entitled to a six unit building, right? That's right. With the variation, which amounts to approximately an 8% reduction of the technical requirement, that's how we would get to a seven unit total, right? Right. And again, that 8% reduction is obviously within the 10% uh, reduction allowed per ordinance, correct? Correct. Otherwise, though, the proposed building was specifically designed to meet the height and bulk standards imposed by the overlay district as well as the underlying B2-2 zoning district, correct? That's right. And for those reasons, you believe the resulting seven-unit building will be consistent and compatible with the neighboring multi-unit residential buildings in the subject area, right? Yes. Chris, is it your understanding that my office filed a witness statement on your behalf in this case? That's right. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements we provided? Yes, it would. Thank you very much. Chairman, um, that concludes the applicant's case in chief. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you or the board members have about our program. Great, thanks, Councillor. Thanks, everyone. Any questions from the board on this matter? Okay. We'll take this under consideration and I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate it as well. Of course. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone. Let's hop back into um, right back into regular order. And I think this is, uh, I believe it's back to Councillor Paul Kopak. Um, let me just confirm that. Yes, it is. So, as he gets situated, I want to first say for 239-22-S, if anyone's here to object on the matter, please raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read the, the department's recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed body art slash tattoo facility. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Paul Kolpak representing the applicant, legendary art galleries, Mr. Ingenata Funderburg. Today we're requesting a special use application in order to establish a body art tattoo service located in the B3-3 community shopping district. The applicant uh, was located prior at 2411 West Madison in the near west side community. He's an established art showing, showcasing visual art from local artists since 2016. Mr. Funderburg, the owner and applicant, has been a tattoo artist for over 20 years. Uh, actually, we represented him when he opened his uh, Tattoo K at 4127 Madison, which he uh, ran for from the years 2007 to 2016. He then closed that to expand his new larger location which the applicant intends to dedicate 70% of to the art gallery and proposes to utilize the remaining 30% of the site for the proposed tattoo body art use. Subject lot is approximately 3,047.5 feet with 1,600 square foot store on the first floor of an existing four-story brick building, recently constructed with first floor retail use and second through fourth floor residential. The applicant currently operates an art gallery on the first floor and proposes to add a three station tattoo facility at the rear of the first floor site. I would uh, ask that I have two witnesses today, uh, the applicant, Mr. Funderburg, and our land planner, Mr. Kareem Musawer. And I would ask you to swear both of them in, Mr. Chairman. Great, Mr. Funderburg, will you please state your name and address, um, spelling your last name? Uh, Janata Funderburg, uh, Funderburg, F-U-N-D-E-R-B-U-R-G. Thank you. And what's your address? 3317 Jackson, Bellwood, Illinois. 
60104. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay, great. And Mr. Musawir remains sworn in and um, his expertise um, is acknowledged. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Mr. Funderburg, um, you've been practicing in the, in the body art uh, industry and tattoo industry for approximately 20 years. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And you, this is unique. You're, you have an art gallery and you're going to also do body art. Uh, how many people will be working for you in this industry? In this? Uh, three artists and probably a shop manager. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of one or two of the stations to be uh, revolving, bringing guest artists in from, um, from different shops, different states. And what would your hours of operation be? I'm thinking 12 to nine. Is that seven days a week, Mr. Funderburg? Uh, no, six days a week, um, mm -hmm. uh, Monday through Saturday. And be closed on Sunday. And yes, you sir. met with the alderman and he really likes this concept of, of the art gallery being there as well as adding the tattoo uh, component, is that correct? Yes. And the community, you've had nobody objecting to uh, giving you any notice of any objections. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Mr. Funderburg, our office prepared an affidavit uh, that you signed and we presented it to the uh, board. If you were called to testify, you testify in substantial compliance with that affidavit. Is that correct? Correct. I have no further questions for Mr. Funderburg. Great. One, one quick question for Mr. Funderburg. Are the hours the same for um, the, in my view, first off, am I viewing it correctly that the, um, the art studio is open door so anyone can come in um, and, and shop or view your art? Uh, yes, the art, the art, uh, the gallery is open door. Yes. So will the hours of the gallery be the same as the hours of the, um, the potential tattoo services? The hours of the gallery uh, as it is right now is uh, 12 to seven. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the tattoo gallery will be uh, by appointment only. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any other questions from the board? Okay, Councilor, go ahead. Mr. Musawir, would you please state your name? Kareem Musawir. I'm a zoning and land use consultant at 221 North the South Street, Chicago. And you were retained in order to uh, look at the property and to file a, a report regarding the standards for the special use. Is that correct? That's correct. And you did, in fact, go to that side of that property. Is that correct? I did. And you submitted that report. And in your opinion, the findings in that report meet the criterion set forth in the uh, special use standards of the uh, zoning code of the city of Chicago. Is that correct? That's correct. And if you were called on to testify further, you testify in substantial compliance with that report. Is that correct? Yes, I would. I have no further questions for Mr. Musawir. That ends our case in chief, and we're ready to answer any questions. Great, thanks everyone. Um, any questions um, for anyone really from the board? Okay, Mr. Funderburg, we got what we need here. So we'll take this into consideration. Thank you very much, everybody. Be well, be safe. Thank, Thank you. you as well. Thanks. Okay, let's hop to calendar number 240-22-Z. This is with Councillor Tom Moore, I believe. Um, so let's make sure that we've got uh, Councillor Moore on. Um, if anyone is here to object on this matter, 240-22-C, please raise your hand and we'll make sure that you're promoted and able to speak. So Mr. Chairman, uh, hopefully we have uh, Josh Bradley and his architect, Jesse. Yes, let me, let me take a look at this, Tom, one second. Josh is here. 
Great. Um, do we have Jesse as well? We have to get Jesse promoted. Yes, Je Jesse, I'm, you were just promoted. Um, and, and just to, I just wanna make sure that we don't have any objectors on this. So if you're a phone number and, um, and, and you wanna get promoted, um, Kamal, correct me if I'm wrong, but they should press star nine, right? That's correct, star nine. Yes, Jesse McGrath is here. Great, thanks. Okay, Councillor, you can get started um, with uh, the regular regular version. Um, nobody's identified themselves as an objector. Would, would you please then, Mr. Chairman, uh, swear the witnesses? Yes. Okay, Josh Bradley, can you state your name and address? Yes, sir. Joshua Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y. I reside at 928 West Eastwood, apartment 4E, Chicago, Illinois, 60640. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great. Okay, Jesse McGrath, state your name and address, please. Jesse McGrath, 2343 West McLean Avenue. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Um, Councilor Dora, ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bradley, you own the uh, four unit building at this address, is that right? Yes, sir. And um, you currently have four parking spaces for uh, this property, is that right? That's correct. And um, the, uh, it came to your attention that this property is in the um, pilot uh, ADU um, area. And so um, you, um, look to see if you could qualify and add a uh, coach house over a portion of your garage. Is that right? Yes, sir. And um, so you hired Mr. McGrath and you've presented the plans. And uh, it, uh, as far as you know, everything is compliant. However, um, the, uh, there's no way you need an external stair and there's no way to get there. That is considered at this point, the, um, uh, the city's ordinances consider that a, a unpermitted obstruction without a variance. And that's why we're here to re seek a variance to access the um, ADU, proposed ADU a coach house. Is that right? That's right. The uh, the existing structure, which you're seeing on the screen right now, is a, a three bay garage, one bay of, of which is a, a pass through, a drive through to access the other two permitted parking spots. And the other two bays are the other two uh, parking spots. What, what we plan to do is essentially um, replace that structure very nearly uh, the same, um, except for side variant, you know, side setbacks and things. Um, but the plan is to essentially to keep the existing parking layout because it, it's kind of the only way to do it. Well, and as a matter of fact, um, in the ADU program, uh, you do not, the ordinance does not require you to add a parking space. That's one of the advantages of it, but you cannot diminish or lessen the existing parking spaces for the existing units. Is that right? Uh, as far as I understand it, yes. Yeah, and, and um, you can't, if you were to use an internal stair here, it would eliminate or it would uh, impinge, encroach into one of the existing parking spaces. Is that right? That's correct. I mean, if you look at the uh, 37 and a half foot that we have on the alley side there, uh, it is either taken up with parking space, required parking space, uh, uh, setbacks from the side or, or the required driveway of, of nine foot. Um, so there, there's no way to do the internal stair without removing a parking space. And you um, have uh, talked to your neighbors and to the community group and you're aware of no objections. As a matter of fact, the community group was excited to uh, 
have an ADU unit, the uh, uh, chairman of it asked if you, when you get it done, if they, you could have a house walk so other people could see the possibility of doing this. Is that right? I, I can't necessarily speak to her excitement, but she seemed interested in what we were doing and, and was excited that, you know, we could bring um, an affordable unit to the area and uh, to want to show it off and, and see if other people may be interested. Okay. Um, uh, that's all I'll ask. Oh, and you and I worked out a um, affidavit where you addressed all of the criteria necessary for this board to grant uh, this uh, variance if they saw fit. And if you were to continue to testify, you'd testify consistently with it. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, Jesse, um, you're an architect who has appeared before this board before. Is that right? That's correct. And um, when Josh asked you to design this ADU unit, what was your um, practical hardship or practical difficulty or hardship that you had to work around? Uh, that we had four parking spaces that we needed to maintain and two of them were inward on the lot as permitted and passed through the Department of Zoning and Buildings. Uh, and they require a driveway or pass through to get to the existing structure. Uh, the foundations were not uh, ample to support a two story structure. So we had to start from scratch and the um, stair, the only way to get up to that um, ADU is an exterior stair because uh, putting one on the inside and complying with that zoning code would diminish our number of parking spaces. Okay. And uh, this, if this um, variance is uh, granted, um, your plans would otherwise comply with all the regulations and ordinances of the city. Is that right? That is correct. And in your opinion, it'll fit right into the character of the neighborhood, albeit the first of the uh, first uh, of the pilot program. Is that right? That's correct. Um, and you and I worked out an affidavit where you addressed all the criteria necessary for the board to grant this request. And if you continue to testify, would you testify consistently with that affidavit? Yes, I would. Um, Mr. Chairman, that's our ch case in chief. Okay, thanks. I've got just one question and then maybe the board has some more, but we've, um, we've got a letter of opposition in regards to um, uh, an encroachment being made by the ComEd um, with some sort of power line. I'm wondering if you can give a summary of that and whether there's been additional communications in regards to that. Mr. Bradley, are you aware of that? Uh, I'm not. As a matter of fact, um, I know that we informally discussed, you know, the architect and I discussed whether something may be in the way um, and the line, you know, visibly running from the pole kind of runs along the line of my neighbor and I. Um, so we, we, I don't think we saw that there was going to be much of any sort of impingement of this. And I'm certainly not aware of any easement. And, um, and Je Jesse, are, if, if there is, if a, if a line has to be moved, is that something that, um, after going through whatever bureaucracy is doable? Yeah, we can move the, the, the comment drop on our building to any corner or any side. That is not a problem. The building would still work. Um, and I'm also not aware that there was any issues with comment. Okay, just so you all know what I'm referencing, um, it's from a neighbor called Bob Ritter. Yeah, I believe that's my neighbor to the north. Okay, um, and, and just so you know, just so you you know, and we can get it on the record and maybe have it addressed, but um, the letter basically says that uh, an encroachment, he has concerns regarding encroachments created by the utility service drops from the poles in the alley to the building at 4329 North. Um, he brought it to the attention of ComEd and the owner of 4329 North when the building was being rehabbed a few years ago. 
um, at which time the encroachment wasn't limited, eliminated. Um, and he's just generally concerned about new um, constructions um, and, and the way they affect the trash containers. So maybe a better um, way to direct this since this, this person isn't here is um, how, if you see any issues with this project and um, trash containers for, for neighbors. Actually, yeah, uh, the trash containers are a concern for myself as well. And if you see from the drawings, I don't know if we could switch to the um, plan view, but we've actually created space on the lot um, for uh, the refuse. Um, so on the north side of what will be the future uh, garage, uh, kind of hard to see, uh, but it's in the lower right corner there. Uh, we've created uh, essentially another aisleway there for the uh, for the garbage cans. Okay. Okay, and the so new power line, so we'd be, we'd be pulling power from a, across the alley, and the pole is about a foot south of the neighboring property line on the north side of our subject property. And since we have a, what, four to five foot setback, we, our line would not be encroaching. I can't speak to the existing line that's going to the building, but that's something that, you know, a uh, any owner can take up with the, the ComEd department. Even the neighbor could, could call ComEd and have them move that for free. Okay, great. Um, thank you and thanks for pointing out the, the trash containment area that you reserved on a lot. Um, any other questions from the board? Okay. We'll take this under consideration. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time today. Thank you Thank for you. your time. Thank you very yep. much. Yep, enjoy the weekend. Let's go now to calendar number 241-22-Z, and this is at 1430 West Grand Avenue. If anyone's here to object on this matter, 241-22-Z, please just raise your hand. We'll make sure you can speak. Okay, with that, Counselor, I see um, both your witnesses, uh, so you can get going. No one's raised their hand to object, so um, we'll request the fast version. Certainly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I do have a, an opening statement or a summary that I think should frame the issues uh, for the board's consideration this afternoon, as well as streamline our presentation, so I will uh, proceed with that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you want to swear in the witnesses now, please? Yep, absolutely. Okay, so first up, um, Ms. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Neal, will you state your name and address? Jacqueline Neal, address 1430 West Grand Avenue. You spell my last name N-E-A-L. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceeding? Yes, sir. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and Andrew Wang, will you state your name and address? Andrew, you're just still muted. Andrew Wang at 5639 North Tallman. Great, and do you swear or, swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Andrew, we didn't get you there. Um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? <phone rings> Counselor, am I, am I missing sound or did you get that? It does, it looks like, uh... Andrew Wang has been muted. Andy, okay. can you come up? Here we go. All right, again, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep, Andrew, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? So sorry about that, Andrew Wang, yes I do. Okay, great, thank you. Great, uh, and thank you again, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, for the record, Matthew Alley, the law firm of Shane Banks, Kenny and Schwartz. I'm appearing today on behalf of the 1430 W Grand Condominium Association, the applicant for the variation for the property located at 1430 West Grand Avenue. This, the association seeks to establish a garage rooftop deck, which is allowed by right. And while there is a code compliant way in which to establish the stairs to access the garage roof deck, the property's rear yard also contains a fully grown tree that provides multiple benefits to the residents of the property including recreation for the children that reside there, privacy and shade for all residents and adjacent neighbors, 
and the health benefits associated with trees generally. The placement of this tree precludes the applicant's ability to build code compliant stairs accessing the garage roof deck. Therefore, strict compliance with the Chicago zoning ordinance uh, would require the removal of this mature tree, which would be a hardship to the applicant given all the benefits it affords. Furthermore, the applicant previously engaged a general contractor where a bridge connection from the rear staircase to the garage roof deck was explicitly agreed to. Uh, the GC has been paid approximately $13,000 for having nearly completed the build out of the roof deck. However, once the GC realized that the elevated walkway could not be built by right, the plans were shifted to instead build code compliant stairs that would require removing the rear yard tree. Uh, once the association learned of the shift in plans, they halted the work in order to determine if the elevated walkway could still be possible, uh, which led to this variation application. Uh, therefore, an additional hardship facing the applicant is the money already spent to build the garage roof deck that does not yet have a way to access. Strict compliance with the zoning ordinance, if the applicant chose to retain the tree, would then result in the applicant losing that $13,000 along with another approximately $3,000 that it would cost to demolish the roof deck work that's already been completed. Therefore, the applicants seeking this variation to reduce the required rear yard setback from 37.5 feet down to 25.85 feet, uh, which would allow for the proposed elevated walkway from the rear porch to the existing rooftop, existing garage rooftop deck while retaining the tree. Uh, this application is supported by ZBA precedent, as this board has previously found the desire to preserve a tree constituted a practical difficulty and particular hardship. This finding was then upheld by the First District Appellate Court, which stated the rear setback poses a hardship due to the need to create privacy and to preserve an oak tree. Uh, this application is also in keeping with the character of the neighborhood, as elevated walkways or above grade connections to garage roof decks are common on the 1400 block of West Grand. There are three other garage roof decks on this block, and all three have either an elevated walkway or an above grade connection to the garage roof deck. This includes the immediately adjacent neighbors to the east at 1428 West Grand, which has a similar elevated walkway from the rear porch to the garage. This application also aligns with city policy around the retention and growth of tree coverage, which is a stated objective of the city's Bureau of Forestry and embodied in the city's 2022 Climate Action Plan and the recently announced goal to plant 75,000 new trees over the next five years. Uh, finally, the applicant has discussed this project with Alderman Laspada, who did not express any concerns with the requested variation nor the elevated walkway. The alderman also indicated his desire for the rear yard tree to be retained. Uh, the applicant has also received multiple letters of support from nearby neighbors, uh, seven in total, including all three neighbors that live in the immediately adjacent property to the east, uh, which would be the most impacted uh, property uh, by the relief being sought. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, recognizing the, the thoroughness of my opening statement, as well as our submission of the detailed findings of fact, the, community, the significant community support I've already uh, indicated, as well as uh, your indication that no objectors uh, are present. If that's still the case, uh, we can proceed with the short form examination of witnesses, or uh, if the board would prefer, we can uh, proceed with long form questioning as well. Yeah, please go with the short form and then we'll move to the board um, in case there's any questions. Certainly, certainly. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to uh, address uh, the applicant, uh, Ms. Jacqueline Neal. Uh, Ms. Neal, you are the president of the 1430 W Grand Condominium Association, correct? Yes, I am. Uh, the association governs the three-story residential building with basement containing three dwelling units and a detached three-car garage located at 1430 West Grand Avenue, correct? Yes. The association is also the applicant for the variation being sought under this matter, 241-22Z, right? Yes. And you have owned uh, unit one within the condominium building since July of 2013. That's right. Ms. Neal, you heard my opening statement and summary of this variation application. Uh, do you concur with my summary of this matter? I sure do. Right. Um, and Ms. Neal, did you also submit an affidavit to the ZBA prior to today's hearing? Yes, I did. Are the statements made within that affidavit true and correct? Yes. And do you adopt as your testimony here today the statements contained within your affidavit? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, unless there are any questions from the board for, for Ms. Neal, I'd be ready to turn to our second and final witness, uh, Mr. Andrew Wang. Yeah, you get Andrew on and then we'll go to the board. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Wang. 
Uh, you yes. are an architect licensed by the state of Illinois, correct? Yes, I am. Uh, are you also the project architect and reviewed the plans subject to this variation application for the property located at 1430 West Grand Avenue? Yes, I am. You also heard my opening statement and summary of this variation application. Do you concur with my summary of this matter? I do. Uh, Mr. Wang, did you submit an affidavit to the ZBA prior to today's hearing? Yes. Are the statements made in that affidavit true and correct? Yes. And do you adopt as your testimony here today the statements contained within your affidavit? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that would conclude the applicant's case in chief. We would welcome any questions from the board regarding our proposal or our submitted proposed finds of fact. Great, thanks. Um, one quick question for me, just because I'm hearing that um, the tree is is kind of the um, the root of the hardship. Um, I'm realizing that pun as it comes out. Um, do you know anything about the health of this tree? And also, are, are you just assuring the board that um, you have no intentions to take it down? So I do have no intentions to take it down. The tree looks bright and beautiful and healthy. I know the winter picture probably doesn't um, share that quite as much but it's blooming um, full of leaves and provides a lot of nice shade and privacy for both um, 1430, but as well as the neighbors bordering us. Okay, great, thank you. This is Commissioner Esposito. Could, could we flip through the photos once again, please? And again, can you reiterate why a stair can't be put and what kind of tree is that? Those are my two questions. Why is stair is incompatible with the tree? And what kind of tree is this? Sure, uh, and we, we can take those questions in order. Uh, first, Andy, um, and could we scroll one photo to the, I guess, uh, advanced one photo? Yeah, so we, we see how the garage is built here. And, and where the access point to the garage would be. Uh, Mr. Wang, the access point to the rooftop garage deck would be above the entrance door to the garage that um, would be on the eastern side of the property, correct? Yes, that's correct. So the bottom of the stairs would be just about where the um, children's playhouse is. And in order to um, excavate for the footing there, basically we chop out all the roots of the tree. So we would lose it. Uh -huh. And so then, with, with, that, with that staircase needing to abut the and then run parallel to that rear rear wall, rear wall of the garage, uh, the, it, there's not enough space there to uh, the, the stairs would need to occupy where the tree is now. Correct. That's correct. Uh, the width of the stairs, uh, 44 inches, required by code, and the tree is just within that within that 44 inches. Um, and Ms. Neal, do you, do you happen to know the, the type of tree uh, that, that we're trying to retain here? I wish I did, and I do not. <laughs> Just looking at the leaves of the tree, it looks as though it's a relative of the elm family. So um, um, it's a single, single leaf um, type of tree. It blooms in the spring um, and has green leaves until the summer, and then they turn purple. I'm not sure if that helps anybody. <laughs> and the structure to the left, what is that? Are we talking about the, the tree house? Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. So the tree uh, facilitates a couple of recreational features for the children. One is a tree house, which we see. There's also a photo of, of a tree swing. Uh, and so certainly uh, adds to the use and enjoyment of, of the uh, resident children. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, we have what we need here. Um, thanks very much everyone for your time and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you everyone, have a nice afternoon. You too. Thank you, you everyone. Too. Yep, thank you. Okay. So let's move right to calendar numbers 244-22-Z and 245-22-Z. <clears throat> this is going to be with Councillor Warren Silver. If you're here to object 
on 244 or 245, please raise your hand. We'll make sure you get a chance to speak. Um, the option to object, object by phone, you have to push star nine in order to raise your hand. Um, and with that, counselor, check to see if we have your witnesses. And we do. Um, counselor, I'm not seeing any hands for objections. So if you could please um, do the short form on these, we'd appreciate it. Uh, sure, and uh, good afternoon, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, for the record, my name is Warren Silver, S-I-L-V-E-R, um, the law firm of Brown Udall Pomerantz and Del Rahim, representing 3443 and Ashland Landowner LLC, uh, who is the applicant in this matter. Uh, with me today, uh, our Michael Brahenny is the representative of the applicant and Mark Peters, uh, the uh, project architect. Um, uh, if I can provide a brief summary of the project, uh, this is uh, uh, one of uh, several projects in this immediate area that this developer is doing on the site of the old Loyola Press building, which has uh, been raised since those uh, uh, pictures were taken. Um, this segment, um, this particular project is for a five-story residential building with 42 dwelling units. Um, it will uh, have approximately 41,360 square feet in floor area. Um, there will be 12 on-site parking spaces and 51 bicycle spaces. Uh, it's a transit serve location uh, directly on the uh, Ashland Avenue uh, bus border roadway segment, which includes the uh, uh, number nine Ashland bus and the number nine X Ashland Express. So it is a very transit friendly site and also very, very close uh, to the uh, Lincoln Avenue, uh, Belmont Ashland uh, district, uh, mixed use district. And people can walk to, walk to that and also um, close to Brown Line stops at Southport and Polina. Um, <clears throat> this was the subject of a type one rezoning um, back at the beginning of this year. Um, and uh, there was extensive community process uh, with the West Lake, Lakeview neighbors. Um, and the project has received the support of Alderman Tunney who I understand has transmitted a letter of support to the, uh, to the, uh, the board. Um, part of uh, the discussions with the community um, that led to this variation was the desire that the building, <coughs> excuse me, that the building be set back a bit um, from the, uh, the front lot line. And because the project is taking advantage of the transit friendly, um, uh, the, the transit serve location uh, breaks uh, for parking and for floor area bonus, um, there is a requirement that the uh, project comply uh, with the building location standards among others for uh, pedestrian streets, even though this isn't a pedestrian street. Um, and so the building has to be uh, on the sidewalk or no more than five feet away. Here though, uh, in order to create a wider pedestrian area, uh, the building is uh, 10 feet away at the, at the sides uh, with a recessed uh, entrance plaza uh, that's 15 feet set back from the sidewalk. Um, in order to accommodate that design request to the community on a lot, that was only um, 100, less than 107 feet deep, uh, which is shorter than a standard uh, city lot. Uh, it was necessary to request uh, rear yard uh, setback relief uh, to reduce the rear yard setback uh, to 25.08 feet for floors with residential uh, use rather than 30 feet. 
Uh, we also, to deviate from those pedestrian street standards, require a variation, um, which is a, an administrative adjustment um, uh, being heard as a variation. Um, uh, with that, I would like to call uh, our witnesses, and if you, uh, you would uh, please swear them in. Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, if you could swear the witnesses, please. Yep, Michael Brehenny, will you state your name and address, please? Mike Brehenny, 2521 North Halstead, Chicago, Illinois, office address. Yep, um, no, that's, that's, that's totally sufficient. Will you just spell your last name for the court reporter too? B-R-E-H-E-N-Y. Great, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay, great. Um, and Mark Peters, will you state your name and address? Uh, Mark Peters, 1135 North California Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, and uh, Mike Brehenny, uh, you are one of the managers of uh, the entity that is the manager of this applicant. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you were designated by uh, the other managers to be the project representative for this uh, purposes of this hearing. Correct? Yes, correct. Um, uh, would you uh, agree in uh, that the summary uh, of the project that I presented uh, a moment ago is uh, accurate in all material respects? I agree. Okay. Um, and uh, we established that it's a transit friendly project uh, with uh, 12 parking spaces for 42 apartments uh, because of uh, the uh, provisions of the zoning ordinance allowing for those reductions uh, through the type one rezoning process, correct? Correct. Um, and um, the, uh, uh, the density of the project is in keeping with the surrounding projects, not just those that you're developing, but also other projects in the immediate area across the street and in adjacent blocks. Is that correct? Yeah, it's keeping within the character of the neighborhood within a couple blocks either way. And uh, the same is true of the, uh, uh, the ground floor residential use uh, here. Uh, it's a B2 dash three zoning, so it's a, a, as of right, but the project is in keeping with the surrounding area, correct? Correct. Um, and uh, the hardship comes from the, the short lot and the desire of the community to set the building back from the, the front lot line, is that correct? Yes, there was a request from the aldermen in the community to have the three buildings look separate. Um, and the way we did that was by setting back the center building. And, and you would not have been able to get that uh, if uh, that support from the aldermen in the community for the type one rezoning uh, or these variations if you hadn't done that, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, this is a, a project that you're seeking to develop in scale uh, with the surrounding area on a large parcel that affords substantial <laughs> opportunity for needed new housing uh, rather than simply to make more money. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, um, thank you. Um, like to call Mark Peters now. Yes. And uh, uh, Mr. Peters, I know has uh, testified before this board uh, with respect to other projects for this applicant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you like him to go through his qualifications or will you accept him as an architect uh, witness here? Yeah, so yeah, we, we, um, we're we totally good. We only acknowledge the expertise of, of land planners. So um, okay. let's we'll say we know Mr. Peters, but there's no need. Okay, thank you. But uh, Mr. Peters, you're the architect of record for this project, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, the uh, project couldn't be designed uh, in accordance with the zoning ordinance standards because um, of the community's desire to move the building back off the front lot line and the shallow depth of the lot at 106.85 feet. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, in your judgment, does the project uh, fit in with the surrounding development? Yes, it does. There's other four and five-story buildings of residential in the area. Okay. 
Um, and uh, the project uh, would not have been uh, feasible as, as we, uh, we went through be because of the community's desire and the short lot. Are these unique circumstances not typical of properties in the area? Yeah, these are, these are unique circumstances. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the project is designed to fit in with the surrounding area. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, no further questions for this witness. And uh, at this time, uh, we've concluded our presentation in chief. And if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to entertain them. Great. Um, questions from the board? Okay, we've got the info we need on this one and we'll take it under consideration. Um, thanks very much everyone for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep, thanks. Okay, we're gonna go now to calendar numbers 246-22-Z and 247-22-Z. Um, if anyone is here to object on these matters, please just raise your hand and, and we'll get you promoted. And if you're on the phone, because there are two call in numbers, if you're on the phone and hoping to object, um, you've just got to press star nine and your hand will raise. Okay, counselor, you can um, you can go right ahead. Um, and again, unless an objector pops up, I, I ask that you uh, just give the short form on these. Uh, sure, uh, happy to do that. Again, Mr. Chairman, for the record, uh, my name is Warren Silver. Um, I'm here uh, for Silver Law Office PC, representing uh, Molly Curry and uh, James Jacoby, uh, the applicants. And uh, uh, is uh, our architect, Benjamin Himshoot, on the call as well? Yes, I'm here. Yep. Okay, uh, terrific. Um, uh, so the, uh, the brief summary of the project is as follows. Uh, these are uh, two residential buildings uh, zoned RS3. Uh, one is a uh, two flat that used to be a church, uh, as you can tell uh, from its, uh, its shape there and the big steeple with the cross at the top. Uh, and then the property uh, just to the right of it in the picture there uh, is a single family home. Uh, the applicants uh, acquired uh, the two properties uh, separately in uh, separate transactions from separate owners. Uh, these are uh, separate zoning lots uh, that uh, we are uh, asking you to hear uh, the, the two variations, uh, one for each property um, as a consolidated case because they revolve around the same facts. Um, it was the applicant's understanding that the uh, that this house at uh, 2441 had been uh, constructed uh, as a residence for uh, the church, perhaps the pastor. Um, uh, and uh, for that reason, they decided that uh, a fence uh, should surround the entire property um, without being divided in the middle. Um, uh, and uh, the uh, they wanted a fence that would uh, be uh, in concert with the, with the scale and design of that church building. Um, the difficulty with that, though, is that it required a, a fence uh, that was uh, uh, taller uh, than the six-foot limit that's permitted. Um, and uh, accordingly, we needed uh, variations for uh, the side yards in order to allow that fence. Um, uh, at this point, I would like to uh, call uh, the applicant uh, and the architect. And if you would swear them, please, Mr. Chairman. Yep, so um, Molly or James uh, Curry, could you state your name and address, please? Uh, this is Jim Jacoby, last name J-A-C-O-B-Y. Address is 2445 North Washtenaw. Great. And do you um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Is is Molly on as well? She is not. Okay. 
Um, Benjamin Himshoot, will you state your name and address? Yeah, Benjamin Himshoot. Uh, last name is spelled H-I-M-S-C-H-O-O-T. And uh, my office address is 6136 North Clark Street in Chicago. Great. And you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. And so first I'd like to call Jim Jacoby. Um, and uh, uh, Jim, you, uh, you and Molly are uh, the applicants and you're married to each other, correct? That's correct. Okay, great. Um, and uh, the uh, facts of the project as I described them in my brief introduction, uh, accurate? Yes. Okay. And um, uh, you acquired the properties um, uh, in you bought the church in uh, December of 2016. It was already uh, rehabbed into uh, apartments. Is that correct? It was rehabbed to a single family home. Yes. Okay. The church? The church. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, did you convert it into two apartments? Because it's zoned as a two flat. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, you bought the, the uh, 2441 um, uh, from a different owner uh, in March of 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. And you're not combining the properties. Uh, rather, you're keeping them separate. We're keeping them separate. The only interest is celebrating the history of the two properties in that 2441 was the rectory where the priest lived. Okay. Um, and uh, did you check in with uh, your neighbors uh, uh, about this this project? We did. Um, our neighbor to the north, uh, who is Juan Moreno, actually lived uh, in the lower unit here for 12 years preceding and has subsequently purchased uh, the lot north to us and is, is building a home there. He's very much in favor. Our neighbor directly to the south, uh, Jake and his wife, um, Jake was actually a choir boy at the church uh, in the 70s. So we couldn't have much closer connection to both of our neighbors and both are very much in favor. Okay, great. Um, and uh, uh, <clears throat> um, the practical difficulties or particular hardships here, uh, if you were required to remain in strict compliance with the zoning ordinance, or that the, uh, the fence uh, within, within the height limit would be totally out of scale with the, the church building, is that correct? That's correct. And th that would uh, just be unattractive for the neighbors as well as for, for yourselves as property owners. That's correct. That's correct. Um, and are you looking to make any money through uh, getting this variation? No, we're no. Molly and I will be here until we're not here anymore. It's, uh, yeah, it's your principal residence, and there are no plans to sell anytime soon. Um, and uh, uh, we've submitted an affidavit uh, that we prepared for you and proposed findings of fact, and you had an opportunity to review those as well, uh, correct? That's correct. And if you were to testify further, you would adopt uh, the, your affidavit as, as your testimony, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, if I can call. Uh, ben Hemshoot now. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, Ben, if you could just uh, quickly uh, state your uh, your qualifications, your education, years of experience in architecture briefly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I am registered as a licensed landscape architect uh, in the state of Illinois. Um, I hold a master's degree in landscape architecture. Um, I have my own firm uh, here on the north side of Chicago, and I've been uh, in construction and landscape architecture industry for about 20 years now. Okay, great. And you were engaged by uh, the applicants for a landscape architecture project that included, among uh, several other things, uh, uh, the work on this fence. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, I was engaged by the applicants uh, to kind of create a master plan for the site. Um, and try to honor the history of the site with the, the two different parcels, but being able to bring them together and unify them as, as one site. Um, and part of that um, process was also to you know, look at the enclosure, um, the safety and security of the two properties, how to bring those together, but also um, how to respect the history and the scale okay. of, the, of the church. Okay. And would you say that the, uh, the uh, properties 
uh, both of them uh, with the, uh, the fence complete would fit in with the surrounding community and fit with the intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance for uh, uh, reuse of, uh, of uh, buildings? Absolutely. Okay. And um, it's not a circumstance that's generally applicable uh, to similar property. Is that correct? Uh, no, this is this is clearly a very unique uh, park property. Um, so I think that the, the conditions here are, are certainly um, unique in that in that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you reviewed the affidavit that we uh, prepared on your behalf and, and the proposed findings of fact that we submitted. Um, I did. And if you were to testify further, you would adopt the uh, the affidavit as your testimony. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Um, no further questions. Thank you very much. And uh, that concludes our uh, case in chief. And if uh, anyone has any questions uh, from the board, we'd be happy to entertain them. Thank you. Any questions from the board for anyone who's spoken? Uh, this is Commissioner Esposito. So essentially you're saying the hardship is the scale of the church building? Yeah, I, I think yeah. that uh, the, and, and Ben may be able, or, or uh, Jim can speak to this in more detail, but uh, the, uh, the scale of the church building uh, would make uh, a shorter fence uh, just look a little too puny. Um, you can see how much more massive uh, the building is, um, uh, you know, it's because of the, the steeple. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. that's why they wanted it to be at that height. And the neighbors were totally fine with it. If, if I might jump in here just for a moment. So it might be a little confusing the image you see there right now is the, is the fence across the front of the property. That is actually a six foot fence, uh, metal fence that you can see through, uh, which is code compliant. And we went through the permitting process uh, for that. Um, that's kind of the more public facing uh, fence um, that, that unites these two properties. Um, the fence in question that is over the six foot height is the wooden fence, which you can kind of see um, on the left side of the photo there. Um, that's kind of a secondary um, enclosure that uh, creates a bit of privacy and then kind of seals off the properties um, at the more private scale in the back. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions from the board? Okay, we have what we need, so we will take this under consideration and thank you very much everyone for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right, let's go straight to calendar number 248-22-Z. Um, this will be Councilor John Pekarski. And if anyone is on to object to this matter 248, please just raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Hey, Counselor. Um, looking to see if we have your, I do see your applicant. Um, I believe I see your applicant. No, we've, we've got um, Olabode Beckley. I'm looking for Doris. Doris is the applicant. Yeah. And Ola Bodem uh, Beckley is the design engineer. Do you know if Doris would potentially be calling in, Counselor? Uh, she probably will be calling in, yes. Okay, so Doris, if you're on the phone, you've just got to press star nine. Okay, good. Um, you can press star six now to unmute. Uh, yeah, let's let's see if you press star six. There you go. Great. Is that you, Doris? Yes, that's me. Okay, perfect. Um, and counselor, um, no one has raised their hand to object. Um, so we're trying to catch up on some time. Uh, so we're just requesting the fast versions when that when that happens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, uh, for the record, John Pikarski, 
uh, for the uh, applicant, Doris Inamoku. Uh, that's E N E A M O K W U, who is the owner of the property in question. Um, this is a, 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 a truly unusual piece of property. Uh, first of all, as you can see uh, by the uh, photograph, uh, it is uh, 65 uh, uh, feet uh, on the south by 125 feet on the west by 40 feet on the north by 127 feet on the east. Uh, and there's an alley that uh, parallels the building. Uh, the property uh, was developed uh, in 1920. And according to the client, this is a, uh, a landmark. It was uh, formerly used uh, and has been continuously used since 1920 uh, as an event space. The last users being, uh, as you can see, the Assyrian uh, American Association. My client, who uh, owns property right down the street, uh, is seeking to use the uh, subject site for uh, exactly the same purpose as, as her predecessors. That is for an event space, birthday parties, uh, conferences, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. Uh, she will not be preparing food and she will not be serving alcohol. Uh, she will simply be leasing the uh, hall out uh, to uh, uh, individuals. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a truly diverse multi-ethnic area. Uh, and uh, the uh, use, uh, the reason that we are here for variation is because it is across the alley from an R3 zone property. Uh, that's the only reason we are here. Uh, we uh, have, uh, uh, this property has been continuously used since 1920, which probably predates uh, all of the uh, residential uses uh, that are across the alley anyway. Um, I would call as my first witness uh, the applicant, Doris Ina Moku. Ina, uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Doris, uh, you're, you own the subject property. Is that correct? Yes, I do. And really, really quick, John, I'll, I'm, I'm just going to swear Doris in. So Doris, one more time, could you please repeat your name and address? My name is Doris uh, Ina Moku. Last name spelled E-N-E-A. M O K W U. My address is 1708 West Devon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois 60660. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Doris, you. Uh, you were present when I made the opening statement uh, concerning this property. Is that correct? Yes. And you intend to use this uh, for the uh, same use that has been there since 1920, is that correct? Yes. And you uh, will have uh, about five part-time employees uh, for the uh, use of the subject site, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, the hardship, of course, is created by the fact that you are across the alley from a residentially zoned a property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and without this variation, you can't use the property as, uh, as, as proposed. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now I have uh, in, uh, prepared and uh, offered to the board an affidavit on your behalf. Are you familiar with that affidavit? Yes, I am. And you signed it? Yes, I did. And uh, if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answer be the same or substantially similar? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions of the applicant. Uh, the uh, other witness that I would uh, offer for uh, questions basically 
is the design engineer Olabodem Mekli, O-L-A-B-O-D-E-M B-E-C-K-L-E-Y. Are you there, uh, Mr. Yes, Bates? I am. Uh, very good. Uh, and, and how long have you been engaged in? And, and really quick, sorry to cut in again. Um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings, Mr. Beckley? I do. Thank you very much. How long have you been engaged in the uh, uh, design engineering business? I've been doing this since 2003. Now, you have told me that you uh, had uh, researched the history of this building and that it was built in about 1920. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. And it's been used continuously for event space. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. Uh, were you here when I made the introduction uh, to this case? Yes, sir. Okay. And have I prepared an affidavit on your behalf? Yes, sir. And if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? It would be the same, sir. Okay, I have no further questions. Great, thank you, Counselor. Um, any questions from the board for either the applicant um, or Mr. Beckley? Uh, this is Commissioner Esposito. Uh, can you briefly describe the kind of events that you anticipate taking place? Uh, the event uh, anticipated taking place out here is for like a banquet hall, meeting hall with no alcohol and no cooking on site. And, um, you know, there is no changes in use because that's what it has been used for. And it, uh, the existence of the built building preceded uh, the re residential building that they were talking about. Thank you, sir. I would suggest birthday parties, conferences, uh, and different uh, family type events. Okay, thank you. And just to clarify, alcohol will not be served at these events? It, alcohol can be served at, at these events, but we, uh, my client, does not provide alcohol or food. So can you describe who will be staffing the events where alcohol is served? The, I'm online. I'll call you back. The event planner, the event uh, sponsor will be providing its own uh, uh, food if, if food is, is necessary and its own uh, 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 alcohol, if, if necessary, and they will be licensed for off-site uh, uh, food and, and alcohol. So you're saying the renter would engage a licensed provider? Yes, sir. Okay, so and who is certifying that that provider is licensed at this establishment? Well, the uh, client uh, in leasing the site to the uh, uh, proposed uh, event person uh, would, would be responsible for uh, checking, uh, first of all, for finding out what the event is going to be and then uh, uh, making certain that the appropriate licenses are necessary. Thank you. Um, let me just jump in here, uh, sir, just so you understand, they would have to use a catering liquor license person to do this. So they would have to, if they weren't using a catered liquor license, everyone could get in trouble. So, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, thanks everybody. Um, we have what we need here and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we're gonna go now to calendar number 249-22-S. Um, if anyone is here to object on this matter, please raise your hand and I'll make sure you're promoted. As everyone gets situated, I'm gonna read the department's recommendation. For calendar number 249-22-S, 
the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. Again, for the record, my name is John Pikarski, and I represent Alicia Fanny Zagui, Z-H-A-G-U-I, who uh, is seeking to establish uh, a beauty salon, a hair beauty salon at uh, 4421 uh, North Sheridan. Uh, the property in question uh, is uh, a, a zone B35. It's a 10 story mixed use building, as you can see by the uh, uh, photograph uh, that is currently being shown. Uh, the uh, site, the subject site, is a 725 square foot uh, vacant property. Uh, my uh, client, uh, has been engaged in the business uh, for uh, eight years uh, at uh, 530 West Diversity, uh, and she is seeking to establish her uh, use at this uh, subject site. There will be one person, uh, uh, which will be her, of course. Uh, the hours of operation are from 10 a.m., to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Uh, with that, uh, I would introduce uh, my client, uh, Alicia Fanny Zagui. Are you there, Alicia? Alicia, you're you're muted, but um, you've. Uh, let's see if we can get you unmuted. Can you can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, thank you. And really quick, I want to uh, make sure there's a hand raised. It's a 312 number. Um, I want to make sure that they're not on to object. So if, it looks like you can speak now. Who, who, who's on the 312? I'm here. Joe yeah, Ryan. Yeah, who, who is this? Joseph Ryan. Joe Ryan. Oh, okay. Got it. Thanks, Joe. Um, with that, Alicia, can you please state your name and address? I'll swear you in. Yes, my name is Fanny Alicia Shawi. And my address is 4421 North Sheridan, 60640. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Fanny, if uh, this board sees fit uh, to grant the uh, special use that we're seeking, you intend to establish your own uh, beauty parlor at this location. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, you've been engaged in, in the uh, uh, hair uh, salon business for about eight years uh, at 530 West Diversity. Is that correct? Yes. And you intend to move to this location? Yes. And your hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you will be the only employee, is that correct? Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, and uh, have I prepared an affidavit on your behalf, which you have signed? I have prepared an affidavit for you. Are you there? You're frozen. Yeah, she's um, she's not muted. Let's let's see, Fanny. Um, keep trying to speak. Ye yes, I hear you. Okay. And uh, if I asked you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answers be the same? Yes. Okay, so with that, I'd call uh, Joseph Ryan. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Okay, uh, please state your name, address, and occupation. Joseph M. Ryan, MAI President, LaSalle Appraisal Group with offices at 9455 South Horn Avenue in Chicago. Great, and, and, and Joe is previously sworn and acknowledged for his expertise, and he remains as such. 
Now, uh, Thank John, you, Chair. are you familiar with the criteria for a special use, especially uh, at this location of 4421 North Sheridan? Yes, I am. And you've inspected the subject site, is that correct? Yes, I did. And you reduced your findings to writing, is that correct? Yes, I produced a report that examined all of the criteria for this board to grant a special use, examined each of them individually, and uh, found that it does comply. Right. Uh, and uh, I have prepared an affidavit on your behalf as well, is that correct? Yes, it is. And if I ask the questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? Yes, they would. I have nothing further, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, great. Um, thanks very much. Um, any questions from the board for Ms. Zagui? What the? Okay, it sounds like we have what we need on this one. So thanks so much, everyone, for your time, and we'll take it under consideration. All right, let's go now to calendar number 250-22-Z and 251-22-Z. Um, if you're on to object for either of these matters, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. And counselor, I see your applicant is on um, and, and Joe Ryan, so you can go ahead and get started. I don't think Joe Ryan is there. I think it's uh, uh, Victor Drabshow, the uh, architect. Oh, maybe maybe my my roster is wrong because um, I have for these matters I've got Adolfo Orozco yes and and Joseph Ryan oh okay I'm sorry uh, we Mr Ryan will not be appearing on this matter but okay. Victor Drabshow D -E R A B S Z O uh, our project architect will be uh, testifying great we've got Victor on as well okay. Um, uh, again, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I know we're testing your uh, vigor here. Um, the uh, property in question is at 2600 West 25th Street. My client, who is a, a, a builder, developer, rehabber, uh, has purchased this property. Uh, Basically, as you can see, uh, it is uh, in, in horrendous shape. Uh, there are no windows. The doors uh, have been replaced, but uh, are, are in uh, substandard condition. The entire building is in substandard condition. My client would like to convert uh, this uh, eyesore into a single family dwelling with an attached two car garage. Uh, in order to do that, uh, strike that, the site is, is unusual as well. It measures 27 frontage feet by 81 feet of depth for a total of 2,150 uh, square feet. Uh, this is, again, a clearly irregular lot. Uh, we are seeking four variations, uh, a front yard variation uh, from the required 1.72 feet to zero, a west side yard variation from 2.66 feet to 0.7 feet, a rear yard variation from 22.68 feet to 5.64 feet, and uh, to be allowed to uh, provide the required uh, rear yard open space onto the roof. Uh, th this will be a, a two car garage uh, that will have uh, a, a, a roof deck. Uh, my client 
intends to use the existing foundation and the east and west masonry walls, which will be uh, cleaned and repaired uh, and put in first class condition. Uh, the uh, property is zoned RT4, and it is at the northwest corner of 25th and Rockwell. Uh, my client uh, will uh, once, uh, if the board sees fit to grant the variations, will develop the single family home, uh, which uh, his son will uh, be living in. Uh, with that, I would call uh, uh, Adolfo Orozco. Adolfo, are you there? Adolfo, you're muted. Yes, I'm here. Ah, good. Okay, Adolfo, uh, were you uh, present when I made the opening uh, to this case? Yes. Okay. Uh, the uh, just briefly, uh, you're uh, seeking to. And, and, and sorry, John. I'll I'll, I'll get him for you. So, Adolfo, can you please state your name and address? My name's Adolfo Roscoe. Uh, I live at thirteen twenty one South Sixty First Avenue, Cicero, six zero eight zero four. Great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Now, Adolfo, uh, you're the uh, owner of the property in question, is that correct? Correct. And it is uh, kindly uh, speaking a wreck, is that correct? Correct. Now, uh, you are seeking to use the basement, the foundation, and the east and west walls uh, of the uh, subject site, is that correct? Yes. These are masonry walls and you feel they're in good shape, uh, good enough shape that you can save them, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, in order to uh, effectuate your plans of creating a single family home uh, with a two car crutch attached garage, um, we uh, were required to have four different variations, uh, which I enumerated. Were you here when I enumerated them? Yes. Okay. Um, and once you uh, get done with this project, your son's going to live there. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, now, I have prepared an affidavit on your behalf uh, as to the standards for variations uh, and as to the use of the property. Are you familiar with that uh, uh, affidavit? Yes, I am. And if I ask you the same questions that appear in that affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? Yes, they would. Okay. I have nothing further. Uh, I would call uh, Victor Dropshaw. Yes, sir. And Victor, can you please state your name and address? My name is Victor Drapso, licensed architect, Red Architects. Uh, the address is 2123 North Damon, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thanks. Okay. Now, Victor, uh, were you present when I made the initial opening on this matter? Yes, I was. Okay. And... Uh, is it the intention of, of the client and you've drawn the plans for a two-story single family residence with an attached two-car uh, garage uh, with a roof deck? That is correct. And you feel that you're able to save the east and west masonry walls? Yes, we are able to. Okay. And you will take what is, uh, or the client will take what is a, a true mm -hmm. eyesore to the community and a, a, a true negative impact on the community and make it into a, a livable uh, single family dwelling. Uh, and as such, uh, his son will live there, his son and family. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, fine. 
Uh, are you familiar with the standards for uh, variations uh, in the Chicago zoning ordinance? Yes, I am. And I, have I prepared an affidavit on your behalf as to the standards uh, for uh, variations uh, for 2600 West 25th Street? Yes. Okay. And if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? Yes, they will. Okay. I have nothing else uh, for, to present. I, I would rest and stand for questions. Okay, thank you. Um, questions from the board. Okay, John, can you quick just remind me what the depth of this lot is? I'm, I'm working on a few screens right now and it's a little small, so I, I just want to be reminded. Okay. It's 81 feet. 81 feet. Great. All right. So any questions from the board? Okay. We've got everything we need on this one. We'll take it under consideration. So thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. All right, we are moving to calendar numbers. Um, it's two special uses. So it's calendar numbers 252-22-S and 253-22-S. Um, with John Pekarski again, um, if you're here to object on this matter, please raise your hand. We'll make sure you can speak. Um, we've got a hand, but it's Joe Ryan. So Joe, go ahead and, and speak. Yeah, I'm here, Chairman. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, wonderful. Okay. So I'm going to read the department's recommendations while everyone gets situated. For 252-22-S, the, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. And for 253-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the body art microblading and tattooing facility. And with that, Councillor, um, you can take Again, one. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is John Pikarski, uh, and I represent Armand Candia, C A N D E A, who is the owner of the subject site. Uh, I have with me two witnesses, uh, Armand Candia and uh, Mr. Joseph Ryan. We are seeking uh, to have a, uh, a hair salon and a microblading salon, which of course is uh, in, in the terms of the zoning ordinance, a tattoo. Uh, the property is uh, the first, half of the first floor of the subject site uh, at uh, 5434 North Clark. It is owned B32. It is owned by my client, Armand Candia. Uh, the lot in question is uh, 7,200 plus square feet. The uh, building uh, is uh, the lot measures uh, 48 frontage feet uh, by 150 feet. Uh, this would be the north half of the first floor of the subject site. Um, it contains about 1,690 oh, square God. feet. Uh, the, uh, it, it will have approximately eight rooms. Uh, each would be leased out to different uh, users, uh, for, uh, which is, has become more and more common in the, uh, the area. Um, I would call as my first witness, uh, Armin Candia. Armin, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Armin, can you just state your name and address, please? Armin Candia, 2820 West Berwyn, Chicago, Illinois, 60625. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. 
Great. And just to get ahead of it, Joe Ryan is sworn on. He continues to be sworn and, and acknowledged as an expert. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Armin, uh, can you please describe uh, the proposed use of the uh, subject site? Uh, they're salon suites. Basically, uh, you rent them out to individuals, and each individual runs it as if it's their own business. Um, that's it's kind of a common uh, uh, thing now. The the salon suites is kind of becoming a big thing in Chicago. You're seeing them all over the place now. And uh, this is the north half of the first floor of the building. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And your brother owns the south half. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, uh, I, 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 can you explain to me? Okay. okay. So, like around here? Yeah, I know that kind of move Sorry, someone needs to mute. Um, if you're not speaking, please just mute. Okay. It's it's my understanding, Ermin, that the space is about 1,690 square feet. Correct. Okay. And how many uh, salon suites uh, will, will be there? Eight. Okay. And what are the typical hours of operation? Um, it, can, it can be anywhere from, you know, eight or nine o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. And then each each person, of course, is is their own entrepreneur, uh, having their own uh, leased space. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, uh, how uh, does one enter uh, this uh, property? Uh, if if I may, uh, client. Um, so there's an intercom system. Um, the hairstylists all have their own key fobs. It's all it's we we lock them. Uh, 24 hours now because we, you know, we used to have them open between tix, you know, 10 and six or something, but just for the safety of, you know, somebody's there working late or something, we started just, you know, locking it uh, 24 hours a day and there's an intercom system and they just dial their hairstylist number. Uh, and then they, the hairstylist gets a call on their cell phone. They dial nine and it buzzes them in. Yeah. And then uh, each entrepreneur will have their own <clears throat> space. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, uh, I have no further questions of uh, Armand. Oh, I would add, uh, I have prepared an affidavit on your behalf, Armand, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that affidavit uh, contains the criteria necessary for a special use at the subject site, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. Great. Um, maybe get Joe Ryan on quick and then we'll go to questions. Joe, uh, are you there? I am. Joseph, please state your name, address, and occupation. Joseph M. Ryan, MAI President, LaSalle Appraisal Group, with the offices at 9455 South Horn Avenue in Chicago. Uh, at my request, have you examined the subject site? Yes. And can you uh, briefly describe what is proposed? Uh, what's proposed is uh, salon sites, which are um, individual pods leased to uh, individual uh, uh, either hair salon stylist or uh, uh, microblader in this case, um, which is a personal service use as well. And, and have you uh, prepared uh, a, uh, a presentation booklet as to this uh, subject site and, and the uh, variations uh, and our special uses that are being sought here? Yes. Okay, and has, has that been presented to the board? Yes, it has. Okay, and have I prepared on your behalf uh, an affidavit as to the criteria necessary for the proposed uh, special uses? Yes. And if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? Yes, they would be. Okay. I have no further questions or presentation. 
Great. Um, one question for Mr. Kandea. Um, what kind of vetting are you going to do of the people who rent um, chairs or suites in the studio? Are you going to check for licenses where applicable? Yeah, they, there's an application they have to fill out. They have to put their license number on there. They have to send a copy of their licenses um, and all that stuff. The microblading, they, that, there's like a there's like an Illinois state uh, tattoo license and all that stuff. So yeah, they, they have to provide all that. It's okay. a pretty ex it's a pretty extensive uh, application they have to fill out. Thank you. Other other questions from the board for Mr. Kande or Mr. Ryan. Okay. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and we'll take this under consideration. All right. Thank you. Yep. Enjoy the weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've got a string of um, variations now. It's calendar numbers 254-22-Z, 255-22-Z, and 256-22-Z. Again, if anyone is here to object on these matters, please raise your hand um, and we will make sure that you have the opportunity to speak. Councilor, go right ahead. Again, for the record, uh, John Pikarski, uh, representing Robert Whittle, W-H-I-T-T-L-E, who is a uh, Chicago fireman, and his wife, uh, Joanne Kalakowski, K-A-L-K-O-W-S-K-I, and the property uh, located at 3333 North Sealy. Uh, we are seeking uh, four variations uh, ne necessitated by the fact that the property is existing uh, and has a high basement. It's the only property in the area that has a high basement, which uh, means, of course, that the, the uh, basement uh, area is included in the floor area ratio. Um, so we are seeking an increase in the floor area ratio from 1.2 uh, to uh, 1.38. We are uh, in, in decreasing the north side yard from the required five feet to the existing uh, 65, uh, 0.65 feet. Uh, we are seeking a variation of the combined side yards from the required five feet to four feet, 4.88 feet, again, an existing condition. And we're seeking a, a height variation from the uh, required 30 feet to 34.83 feet. Uh, again, this is an existing uh, condition. Uh, because uh, the uh, existing building is 34.83 uh, feet in height. Uh, we are seeking to add uh, a rear one, two, and three floor addition, uh, taking out uh, an existing open porch, uh, which is in uh, substandard condition at this point uh, in anticipation of, of the uh, development. Uh, the, uh, we will be following uh, uh, both uh, the existing side yards uh, and uh, the height uh, of the existing building. Um, the uh, property uh, is, is owned by uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Whittle. Uh, and they are seeking to continue to live there. They are deconverting from a three flat to a two flat uh, and intend to live there with uh, their uh, two children. Um, with that, I would call uh, Bob uh, Whittle. Please state your name, address, and occupation, sir. Robert Whittle, 3333 North Sealy, Chicago, Illinois, 60618, Chicago Fireman. Okay. Thanks, Robert. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, Bob, uh, can you briefly describe what, what we want to do uh, as far as uh, this uh, uh, variation is concerned? It's a typical old school three-story enclosed porch that has slanted stairwells and slanted porches. We'd like to take it down and kind of secure the building, kind of close it off so the stairwells aren't accessible. Someone can't just walk all the way up to the third floor. Um, and we also want to uh, reinforce the stairwell. That's fine. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, we have to uh, obtain uh, four variations uh, that we're seeking from the board here tonight. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you've engaged an architect uh, to draw these plans? Yes. And Todd Israel is with us, I hope, uh, tonight. Yep. As well, Todd, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. Um, Anyway, um, back to Bob, uh, I have prepared on your behalf an affidavit as to the variations sought and the criteria necessary to obtain those variations. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, if I ask you the questions that appear in that affidavit, would your answer be the same or substantially similar? Yes. I have no further questions of uh, Mr. Whittle. Okay. Um, any questions from the board for Mr. Wh Mr. Whittle before we get on to the others? Okay, Councillor, you can keep going. Okay, uh, Todd, please state your name, address, and occupation, and then the uh, chairman will swear you in. Yep. Um, uh, this is Todd Israel. I'm the architect for this project. Uh, my address is 4878 North Sheridan in Chicago, 60640. Thanks, Mr. Israel. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Um, yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, uh, Bob, uh, or Todd, can mm -hmm. you please uh, briefly describe uh, the program for this uh, site? Well, uh, this project is basically converting, um, it's an existing three unit um, building and we're converting it into one larger unit that occupies the second, third and fourth levels and then keeping uh, basically a basement unit, but it's not a basement because it's at grade. So we have a, we ha it'll be a two unit building. Um, so in doing that, because the building is so tall, we have to maintain uh, the rear exit so um, in order to, to maintain the second means of egress, we, we want to rebuild it with a proper foundation and insulated walls and um, security access and all of that for, um, so that he can sort of use the upper part as a single family home. Okay, fine. Now, uh, uh, again, uh, have I prepared on your behalf an affidavit as to the criteria for obtaining the variations necessary for the uh, proposed uh, subject site? Uh, yes, you have. And uh, if, if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? Uh, yes, they would. Okay. I have no further questions of, of Todd, uh, nor of uh, Bob Whittle. Okay, great. Um, so Councilor said pretty plainly that the hardship here would be the existing house. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. The uh, existing house, is, is, it's unique on the block in as much as it's the only one in the neighborhood with a high basement. So uh, every, everything starts out uh, at a, a, a taller level, uh, and that uh, dictates what is going on. And of course, uh, at the rear, we have uh, what is now an open porch uh, and the client wants to put a foundation under it, uh, wants to insulate it uh, and wants to uh, uh, incorporate it basically into the house. Great. Um, other questions from the board? <clears throat> Okay, Councilor, I, I, you've got Joe Ryan on this one as well, right? Uh, no, uh, Todd Israel. 
So my sorry, my uh, roster has Joe clearly a little mixed up. Um, okay, so with that, it sounds like we have everything we need on this one. Um, so we'll take it under consideration. Thank you very much, okay. and have a good weekend, everybody. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank Happy you very Friday. Much. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, um, we're going to now go to calendar numbers. It's a string of another string of variations. It's 257-22-Z, 258-22-Z, and 259-22-Z. Um, if you're on to object for this matter, please just raise your hand. We'll get you promoted. Um, same goes if you're a witness and just haven't been promoted. But I see, I see Dan Cohen. Um, I see the, let's see if we Tom Longi and I also see um, Ben Kenwisher. So um, I think that we have everyone we need. Okay, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Patrick Turner. I represent the applicant Demoka 2745 LLC which is the owner of the subject property located at 2745 North Bosworth, uh, which is in a RT4 district. Uh, the applicant seeks variations to number one, reduce the required lot area from 3,000 square feet to 2,999.19. We just have a, a slightly substandard lot. Uh, secondly, to reduce the minimum required rear setback from 36.9 feet to zero. And uh, thirdly, to relocate the 195 square feet of required rear yard open space from the ground level to the roof deck of the accessory detached garage to allow a proposed three-story, three-dwelling unit building with three-car garage and roof deck. Um, as you stated, Mr. Chairman, I have Dan Cohen, the manager of the applicant, Tom Longy and Ben Kenwisher uh, on the uh, as my witnesses and are joining us on this Zoom call. So, um, if you could uh, swear them in, Mr. Chairman. Yep, absolutely. Um, so first up, Dan Cohen, will you state your name and address, please? Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, we can. Great. Uh, my name is Dan Cohen. Address is thirteen sixty seven North Mohawk Street, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. Um, okay, next, let's um, swear in Tom Longi. Will you state your name and address? Sure. Uh, name is Tom Longi. Um, my address is 440 North Wells in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. Thanks. Um, now, Ben Canwisher, will you state your name and address? And, and can you spell your name, spell your last name as well? Yeah, that's no problem. Uh, ben Canwisher, last name is K-A-N-W-I-S-C-H-E-R. Work address is 440 North Wells uh, in Chicago, Illinois. Same as Tom. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Uh, yes, I do. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so as my first witness, I'd like to call uh, Tom Longy. Um, Tom, you've already been sworn in uh, and you are the, um, you are a licensed architect in the state of Illinois, correct? I am. And you were, um, you're the architect for the proposed uh, redevelopment of this property, correct? That is correct. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like the uh, board to recognize uh, Mr. Longy as an expert. Uh, being a licensed architect and the architect. Yeah, the so to the extent necessary, but we don't, um, we don't require um, acknowledgement of expertise for architects. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yep. So um, we've got a kind of a tag team going here with between Tom and Ben. Um, so I'll just continue with, with Tom. Uh, and then Tom, you can defer to Ben uh, to answer any of these questions, but um, the property is in uh, an RT4 district and a slightly substandard lot measuring 123.17 by 24.35 for a total lot area of 
2,999.19 square feet, correct? That is correct. Okay, and the applicant is seeking to build a three-story, three-dwelling unit building with detached three-car garage with roof deck, correct? Correct. So we're, we're slightly substandard and we, we need a variation for the lot area. Um, the code requires a minimum lot area per dwelling unit of 1,000 square feet, correct? Right. And the standard city lot typically is 125 by 25, which gets you 3,125 square feet of lot area, which would clearly accommodate a three dwelling unit building, correct? Correct. The subject property is 0.81 square feet short of the required minimum for three dwelling units, correct? Correct. So the st strict compliance with the regulations and standard of the zoning ordinance would create a practical difficulty and hardship for the proposed development as the ordinance would only allow two dwelling units, which in turn would not allow the property to yield, to yield a reasonable return, as we will discuss further in my case in chief. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so with respect to the rear setback variation we're requesting, the minimum required rear setback for this development is 36.95 feet, correct? Correct. And the primary building is 43.8 feet from the rear lot line, exceeding the required minimum setback, uh, correct? That's correct. However, the roof deck access there contains a 90 degree turn, which allows for more headroom clearance and safer entering and exiting from the roof deck. But the code requires the entire staircase to be parallel to the wall of the garage, correct? Correct. Uh, this in turn prohibits um, the garage from being considered a permitted obstruction in the required rear setback, prompting the requested variation, correct? Correct. So, but for that turn in the staircase, we'd be okay. That's correct. Okay. And once again, strict compliance with the regulations and standard of the zoning ordinance would create practical difficulties and particular hardships as it would require a staircase with less head clearance entering and exit as exiting the roof garage deck area, correct? Correct. Okay, and then lastly, with respect to the open space variation, once again, the roof deck access stair with the 90 degree turn prohibits the development from meeting the minimum required rear yard open space, as well as the 12 foot radius requirement. Is that correct? Correct. The proposed variation would allow a safer access stair and the 195 square feet of rear required rear yard open space to be relocated from the ground level to the roof deck of the accessory detached garage, correct? Correct. This not only allows a safer staircase, but also allows a more desir desirable and more convenient and safer private yard area on top of the garage. Correct. Would that? Yeah, I would agree. And once again, strict compliance with the code creates a practical difficulty as it would not allow this, correct? Correct. Um, strict compliance with the code would result in smaller units by requiring ex an expanded private yard area at ground level, which once again would affect market values and not uh, allow the property to yield a reasonable return. We're gonna get more testimony on that uh, later in my case in chief. Would you agree with all those uh, statements? I would agree. Um, there are several other three dwelling unit buildings of similar size on the 2700 block of North Boswell, correct? That's correct. Um, a, uh, and a substandard lot such as this makes it challenging to design a development of this type, correct? Correct. Because of these nuances and uh, is that correct? That's correct. And then the purpose of, uh, of the requested variations is not based exclusively upon the desire to make more money out of the project, correct? Correct. Um, and the difficulties and hardships in this matter relate to a substandard lot, a safe and practical design amenity, as well as an economic hardship and have not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. Would you agree with that? I would agree. 
And then this type of development already exists in the immediate neighborhood and will therefore fit in well with the surrounding area. Correct? Correct. Um, so Tom, in your professional opinion, uh, strict compliance with the regulations and standards of the zoning ordinance would create practical difficulties and hardships for the subject property, correct? Yes, I would agree with that. In your professional opinion, the practical difficulties and hardships are due to unique circumstances and are not generally applicable to other similar situated properties. Is that correct? Correct. And if the variations were granted, in your professional opinion, that would they would not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood in which the property is located. Absolutely correct. Um, in your professional opinion, the variations will not impair an adequate supply of light or air or substantially increase congestion on the public streets. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, in your professional opinion, the variations will not increase the danger of fire or endanger public safety. Correct. Correct. And they will not diminish property values in the neighborhood. Correct. Uh, Tom, you submitted an affidavit in support of this application, correct? I did. And if you were to continue to testify, you would do so consistent with the other facts, opinions, and conclusions contained in your affidavit, correct? That, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions for Mr. Longy. Um, I would welcome any questions by the board at this time. And I, I do not anticipate putting Ben on as, as a witness, uh, Mr. Chairman, because it would just be reiterating what we just went over. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Councillor. Um, any questions from the board? Yeah, this is Commissioner Toy. I have one question because you kept going back to it a, quite a bit. The substandard lot. Is this only on this property or is it on the whole block that they're substandard lots? Um, just this property, sir. <clears throat> just this property. So nothing else on the 27 or 2800 block of Bosworth are substandard lots? So we have a, an alley just to the north of us. So we have a public alley that's just to the north of our site that may have impacted why, why our site is a little bit shorter uh, in both dimensions. That's my best guess. Um, from my understanding, everything else on the lot is a typical 25 by, by 125. Maybe the depth is, is the same, but um, that's my interpretation. Okay. Because um, usually my history is if there's substandard lots, most usually the whole block is a substandard. Uh, but this is interesting that you're just saying it's this property. It potentially could be, the depth could be, you know, the 123 something instead of the 125, but I believe the width is substandard because of the alley to, to the north. But you're not sure. You think I would have to go to the zone. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I'd have to go to the zoning website and double check, but. Hmm. All right. Maybe staff can answer that question before I vote on this. Thank you. Any further questions by the board for Mr. Longy? Let's see. Any, any questions from the board? Doesn't sound like a counselor. Okay, so uh, next I would like to call the um, manager of the applicant, Dan Cohen. Uh, Dan, could you state, uh, or you've already stated your name and address for the record, and you've already been sworn in. Um, you are the manager and sole member of Democa 2745 LLC, which owns a subject property, correct, Dan? That is correct. You heard, and uh, do you agree with all the testimony so far from Tom and Ben? Yes, I do. And you would agree that the proposed, the purpose of the requested variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make more money out of the subject property, correct? That is correct. And you also submitted an affidavit in support of this application, correct? That is correct. And if you were to continue to testify, you would do so consistent with your facts and the statements made in your affidavit, is that correct? That is also correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have no further questions for Dan. If I welcome questions uh, from the board at this time. Great, thanks, Councillor. One second. Um, any questions from the board? Okay, Councillor, we've got the info we need. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, everyone have a good, safe evening and a good weekend. Thanks for your consideration. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, I'm going to call a quick um, recess. So let's bring us all back at um, the precise time of 5.37. Sorry, 5, 5, 5, that would be two minutes. Um, 5.47 um, p.m. Commissioner Toya Seconds, Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Great. I vote yes. See everyone soon. Thank you.
All right, welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> I move that we reconvene this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeal. Commissioner Toya Sackins, Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Great, we are back and we are in um, a bit of the final stretch. So let's go straight to calendar number 260-22-Z. This will stay with Councilor Patrick Turner. If you're on to, um, uh, I'm promoting someone right now named John Rowan. And if you're on to object, please raise your hand and we will um, make sure you have the opportunity to speak. However, um, Jean Rouen is a witness on this matter. Okay, thanks again, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Patrick Turner. I represent Karen Taylor, the owner of the property, which is located at 8008 South Muskegon Avenue and is located in an RS3 district. Uh, the applicant seeks variation to reduce the front setback from the required 22.25 feet to 18.8 feet and to reduce the south side setback from two feet to 0.62 feet with the north side setback at 3.08 feet and combined total side setback of 3.7 feet instead of the required five. Uh, the applicant uh, seeks to uh, build uh, a new open or a rehabbed open front porch, one story rear addition, rear open deck and a second floor dormer addition to an existing two story single family home with basement and a two car uh, detached garage. Um, and with me this evening, I should have the owner uh, and applicant Karen Taylor and the architect on uh, June Ruan. And I see them there. Uh, good evening. Great, great uh, evening. Councilor, uh, I can swear them right in if that's helpful. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so Karen Taylor, will you st please state your name and address? Karen Taylor, 6693 Double Eagle Drive, apartment 306, Woodridge, Illinois, 60517. Thank you very much. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Um, and John Ruan, will you state your name and address? Uh, my name is June Ruan, my address 1686 Ithaca Drive, Naperville, Illinois, 60565. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As my first witness, I'd like to call uh, June Ruan. Uh, June, you are a licensed architect in the state of Illinois, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you are the architect for the rehab project involving the subject property. Yes, that's correct. And the property measures 25 feet by 124.4 and is improved with the two-story single-family frame residence, correct? Yes. Uh, the plan is to construct a new open front porch, one-story rear addition, rear open deck, and a second floor dormer to the existing home. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And the existing building is over 100 years old, is in poor condition, and in need of extensive repairs. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree. Um, and the home was built over 100 years ago, 0.62 feet north of the south lot line and 3.08 feet south of the north lot line, correct? Yes, that's correct. So it's got this funky positioning on the lot, correct? Yes. It also has uh, the home was designed with an open front porch that encroaches into the front setback area, correct? Yes. And as such, the existing build, building is a legal non conforming structure as it is not in compliance with the current side and front setback requirements, correct? Yes, that's correct. And then you heard me uh, call out the variations that we are seeking, and you're familiar with the variations, correct? Yes. Yes, in I your, do. In your experience, dealing with older homes situated on a lot like this presents a hardship and severely limits your renovation options, correct? Yes, that's correct. And but for the requested variations, the construction of the open front porch, the one-story rear addition, 
the rear open deck, rear yard open deck, and the second floor dormer of the existing building would not be allowed. Correct? Yes, that's correct. And the rehab project was designed to maintain the character of the home and the neighborhood by rehabilitating the house for modern residential use. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. And strict compliance with the code in this case would severely limit the renovation options for this home. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. And these practical difficulties and particular hardships are due to unique circumstances, unique circumstances, which are the original positioning of the home on the lot and the design of the home over a hundred years ago. Would you agree with that? Yes, I do. And these unique circumstances are not generally applicable to other similar, similarly situated properties and are specifically not applicable to the vast majority of single family homes in the city. Would you agree with that? Yes. And the purpose of the requested variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make more money out of the subject property. Would you agree with that? Yes, I do. And the practical difficulty and hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property as the home was constructed this way over 100 years ago. Would you agree with that? Yes. And you are familiar with the, the other standards uh, and um, required for variations, correct? Yes. And you, you feel that uh, the property uh, satisfies all of the requirements? Yes. And you uh, signed an affidavit in support of this application, is that correct? Yes, I did. And if you were to continue to testify here this evening, you would do so in consistent with the facts, opinions, and conclusions stated in that affidavit? Yes. Um, I have no further questions for uh, Mr. Juan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd welcome some questions by the board at this time. Sure, any questions for uh, Mr. Ruan at this point? Okay, Councilor, you can keep going. We'll, we'll check again at the end. Okay, at this point, I would like to uh, call as my second witness, Karen Taylor. Karen, I've already been sworn in. Uh, you are the owner of the sector property, correct? Yes. And you heard uh, June's testimony, and do you agree with everything he stated? Yes. And you wish to maintain the character of this home and the neighborhood by rehabbing the house for modern residential use. Is that correct? Yes. And the purpose of the requested variations is not based exclusively upon a desire to make more money out of the pro property. You're just trying to renovate a, uh, the home and fit in the neighborhood. Is that true? Yes. And you also, uh, submitted an affidavit in support of this application, correct? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, you would do so consistent with the facts contained in your affidavit, correct? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I have no further questions for Mrs. Taylor at this time and would welcome questions from the board. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, Councillor, we understand what we need to here, so we will take this under consideration. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Everyone have a good evening and a good weekend. Thanks, you too. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so um, the next string of matters um, is 261, 262, 263, and 264 dash 22 dash S. Um, and I just got recommendation letters from the Department of Planning and Development. So it appears that we will go so long as everyone is here. Um, I see Councillor Amy Curson. Amy, do you think you have everyone on that you need? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To my knowledge, I have my whole team ready to go. Okay, great. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Uh, Amy Curson, K-U-R-S-O-N, from the law firm Reyes Curson on behalf of the applicant. Our firm is presenting four interrelated special use yeah, and, and really quick, sorry, sorry to cut okay. you off. I've got a few announcements before of we get going. So 
Um, again, these are four, four matters. If anyone is here who object, um, just raise your hand and we will get you promoted. It's 261, 262, 263, and 264-22-S. Um, and before we get going, I'm going to read the department's recommendations for um, for each of them. So bear with me. Okay, for calendar number 261-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish residential use below the second floor for a proposed three-story, three-dwelling unit building with building design approved by the DPD Bureau of Planning and Design with off-site required parking located at 4710 South Marshfield Avenue, reference ZBA number 263-22-S. Provided the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site plan, floor plans, and elevations, dated July 14, 2022, all prepared by Group V Design and Landscape Plan. Fencing and furnishings details and landscape details, dated July 15, 2022, prepared by Design Bridge Limited, architects and designers. For calendar number 262-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish residential use below the second floor for proposed three-story, three-dwelling unit building with building design approved by the DPD Bureau of Planning and Design with off-site required parking located at 4710 South Marshfield Avenue, RAF ZBA number 264-22-S, provided that the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site plan, floor plans, and elevations dated July 14, 2022, all prepared by Group Z Design and Landscape Plan Fencing and Furnishings Details and Landscape Details dated July 15, 2022, prepared by Design Bridge LTD Architects and Designers. For calendar number 263 22 the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish off site required parking for three residential units located at 4706 South Marsh Marshfield Avenue, reference ZBA number 261 22 S. Provided that, that number one, the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site plan, entry site, site plan parking only, and landscape plan, fencing and furnishings details and landscape details. Dated July 15, 2022, prepared by Design Bridge, LTD architects and designers. And number two, the final landscape planning details, particularly with this, particularly the species spacing and locations of the trees and shrubs providing landscape screening along the north side of the parking spaces shall be approved by DPD Zoning Bureau prior to issuance of building permits. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, calendar number 264-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish offsite required parking for three residential units located at 4708 South Marshfield Avenue, reference ZBA number, number 262-22-S, provide that number one, the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site plan entry site, site plan parking only, and landscape plan fencing and furnishings details and landscape details dated July 15, 2022, prepared by Design Bridge LTD architects and designers. And number two, the final landscape plan and details, particularly the species spacing and locations of the trees and shrubs providing landscape screening along the north side of the parking spaces shall be approved by DPD Zoning Bureau prior to issuance of building permits. Okay, Councilor, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amy Kurson, K-U-R-S-O-N from the law firm Reyes Kurson on behalf of the applicant. As stated by the chairman, we have four special use permits. I will be presenting the matters related to first floor residential uses and my associate will be presenting the matters as related to offsite parking. In as much as that all four of these cases are interrelated, we ask that the board will allow us to incorporate all of the testimony from the first case into the second, the second into the third, and so on. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Chairman. Um, uh, we will just begin with the two applications for the special use permits to allow first floor residential uses. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, first I'd like to call um, Mr. Rafael Hernandez. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Hernandez, can you please state your name and address? Sure, uh, Rafael Hernandez, H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z, uh, 1535 North Lawndale. And Thank Mr. Hernandez. And, and you, Mr. Hernandez, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Please explain your role in the subject project. 
So yes, um, our role as uh, Blackwood Group, uh, which I am the, one of the principals of, we are both the general contractor and co-developer of uh, this um, development. And is the subject, sorry, part of the Chicago Invest Southwest initiative? Uh, yes, it is. And is Blackwood a part of the team that will redevelop these properties? Correct. Very good. And would you generally explain what the development team plans to do at the southwest corner of 47th and Marshfield, starting from the north end of the property to the south? Sure. Um, so this property, again, is, is part of four contiguous lots located southwest corner of 47th and Marshfield. Uh, the lots are currently oriented north-south facing 47th Street. At the direction of DPD, the four lots will be reoriented east-west and subdivided into new lots uh, facing Marshfield Avenue. The um, northernmost lot, which have, will have an address of 47 and 2 South Marshfield, uh, will be a new uh, brewery pub. 4706 and 4708 South Marshall will be constructed two three flat buildings, one per lot. And at 4710 South Marshall, we will be constructing new parking lot to serve the two three flat buildings being developed at 4706 and 4708 South Marshfield. For the subject cases, which are 261 and 262, we're asking the Zoning Board of Appeals to allow residential uses on the first floor of the three flats to be located at 4706 and 4708 South Marshfield. Why is it necessary to have residential uses on the first floor of these buildings? Well, the 40, the, the one more, could you rephrase that question? Yes, of course. Are the three flat buildings at 4706 and 08 prefabricated buildings? Yes, they, they're, they're both of the three flats are prefabricated buildings that have been built and are ready, are ready to be set on the site. Very good. And will that save this affordable housing project both time and money? Absolutely. And since you have a prefabricated building, are you able to redesign the first floor to put in commercial if you wanted to? No, since they are designed and prefabricated and built, uh, they're ready to come on site. And if you put first floor residential there, those will be affordable units, right? That is correct. And will the, um, will the uh, public convenience be served by having affordable units at the first floors of these two properties? Yes. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Aaron Wisner, please. And if I could get Jeanette just maybe to scroll up to the preceding slide. Yes, uh, Mr. And, Aaron Wisner. Yep. And Mr. Wisner, will you state your name and address, please? Aaron Wisner, 601 Greenwood Avenue, Glencoe, 60022. Thanks. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And Mr. Wisner's name is A R O N W E I S N E R. Mr. Weisner, what's your role in the proposed development? I'm with uh, Celadon Partners. We are the co-developer along with Blackwood Group. We are a affordable housing developer. Will the proposed first floor residential uses at 4706 and 4708 have an adverse impact on the surrounding community? No. And is the United Yards team creating a corridor of redeveloped properties? We are all the way along three and a half blocks on uh, West 47th Street. All along the south side of 47th Street? That's correct. And will these three flat buildings be located across the street from the New City Senior Living property, which is also owned by one of the United Yards redevelopment team partners? That's correct, immediately across uh, Marshfield. So immediately across Marshfield, residential uses, and this will be first floor residential. That's correct. And will the operation of the three flats on the subject sites be compatible with the nearby properties in terms of hours of operation, outdoor lighting, noise, and traffic generation? We expect all of these properties to be managed in tandem and, uh, and um, to be meant to be operated in sync with one another. So, yes. Very good. And if families live in the three flats, theoretically, those children could go to the Cesar Chavez School, which is located across the alley and across the street from the property. That's correct. So these residential uses are all compatible with each other. Very much so. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Gabby Zedsquitz, could you please introduce yourself? 
Sure, my name's uh, Gabriel Jekevich, D-Z-I-E-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. -E -E and um, I am a licensed architect with a master's degree in architecture. And I've been working in the field of architecture for about 16 years. I'm the president of Design Bridge and our offices are at 1415 West Grand Avenue. Very Thanks, good. Gabriel. And, and do you swear in swear or firm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. And sir, what is your role in the proposed development? Um, we are serving as the principal architect uh, for, um, as design bridge for the uh, ma master planner lead architect for the United Yards development. Very good. So you are the master planner of this site at 47th and Marshfield. Yes. Uh, could you please describe the design of the buildings, which will be at 4706 and 4708 South Marshfield and the proposed first floor residential units? Yes, these buildings are uh, prefabricated uh, modular buildings. They'll be delivered and assembled on site. Um, they're designed and built as, as fully residential units. The first floor will be um, just above grade, but uh, accessible units. The buildings um, themselves unit, are, go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry, will each unit have two bedrooms, one bathroom, a living room, kitchen, and an in-unit washer and dryer? That is correct, they will. And yeah, so each building will have three units. Very good. And since they're modular construction, is there any opportunity to modify the design on site? No, they're, they're not uh, possible to not be modified. And this helps promote affordability because they're already constructed and you can put them up quickly. Yes, they're ready to go. Very good. Will the proposed special use be compatible with the surrounding community in terms of site design? building scale and project design? Yes, um, the first floor residential use will be compatible with the surrounding community. Um, it actually will serve to connect um, and create a continuum of uses to the surrounding residential buildings directly to the south on Marshfield. Um, specific to site, um, you know, the three flats, they're, they're a low, low density, multifamily affordable housing option. Um, for the neighborhood with, uh, with accessible ground floor. And as mentioned, they, they will serve as a, as a, as a transition um, for fully residential uses just to the south on Marshfield and transition to the commercial uses that will be along 47th Intentional. Very good. And as to the height of the buildings, which will be approximately 30 feet, is that also a good transition height for surrounding properties? It is, it is. Um, across the street, the Goldblatt department store is approximately six stories. Goldblatt department is about um, building, building is approximately six stories. Um, all the other uses around on 47th are single story buildings, one, one and a half story buildings. So, this so it, these two to three story buildings would be a great transition between the larger structure and the surrounding buildings. Very good. And an active first floor site is in your professional opinion. Is that also an appropriate transition at this location? Yes. Has the first floor residential use been designed to protect pedestrian safety? Um, we spent a lot of time on the site plan in, uh, in order to create um, a safe environment, creating using landscape uh, and, and, um, and fencing to, uh, to create privacy uh, and uh, access to both uh, 47th Street and, and the, the, the offsite parking area. And besides a special use for the first floor residential, in your expert opinion, will the subject properties otherwise comply with all applicable standards of the Chicago Zoning Ordinance? They will. Will it be necessary to have a special use permit for offsite parking? Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's yes, yes, absolutely. So, yes, we comply with most things, but we will require offsite parking because of the rotation of the, of the, of the lot. Very good, and that's what we've already applied for. Thank you so much, Chairman. I'd like to introduce, please, Mr. Hugh Edfers from the Edfers Group. Great, and, and Hugh, when you're on, if you could just state your name and address, we'll swear you in. Hugh Edfers. Hugh's shown is unmuted. And now, now your showing is muted. Um, let's see. Mr. Edwards, you are unmuted. You just have to speak. Hugh, could you speak, please? Oh, no, no we can't hear it. Yeah, this is probably a 
parallel to my video issues from uh -oh. today. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Chairman, while he was working on that, I realized <laughs> that I forgot to ask my prior three witnesses whether if I continued to ask some questions, if that testimony would be compatible with the affidavits that they submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Can I ask each of them to just come on and say yes to that? Yep, you can close that out, absolutely. Very good. Um, gentlemen, uh, starting with Raphael, then Aaron, then Gabi, could each of you come on and so state that your testimony would be consistent with your affidavit? That's correct, Amy. Yes, Amy. Yep, yes, Amy. Great, thank you. And Hugh, have you cleared up your sound issue? Mr. Chairman, our, architect, our, um, our appraiser has submitted an expert report. He's well known to this board and has testified many times. In his report, he's uh, clearly addressed each of the standards of the special use. Um, I could uh, ask my associate to continue with the other two cases which relate to offsite parking while uh, Mr. Edfers endeavors to connect. Yep, let's, let's do that because we do have to, because of his role, we've we've got to get him on at some point. Uh, and Chairman, Mr. Atfors could call in uh, via the Zoom yep. phone. Yeah, I mean, you do that. Um, come on, is there the obvious instructions for that? Uh, Mr. Um, Chairman, would you like to have my associate start the next two cases while we wait for Hugh to dial in or would you prefer we wait? No, yeah, we would. Just hold on. I want to make sure that you knows how to dial in, please. Um, okay, so I, I, I can read off the phone number that he would use to dial in. Yep, let's let's do that. That would be helpful. Come on, thank you. Uh, it's uh, one three one two six two six six seven nine nine. Again, three one two six two six six seven nine nine followed by uh, you'll enter the webinar ID and then press the pound key and then the password and then the pound key. Great. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, we also texted that to Hugh. He should have that on his cell phone. Okay. You can go ahead, Counselor, your associate. Very good. My associate is Stacy Kim. I want to make sure that she's been promoted to be a presenter. Stacy Kim. Hi, good evening. My name is Stacy Kim. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you, Stacey. Okay, great. Sorry. Um, uh, my name is Stacey Kim, S-T-A-C-E-Y-K-I-M. Um, on behalf of the applicant, I present the witness testimonies in support of the special uh, uses requested at 4710 South Marshfield Avenue. Um, the first special use case, 263-22-S, is requesting approval for the subject property as offsite required parking for the benefit of the three proposed affordable housing units located at 4706 South Marshall Avenue. I'll present the same witness testimonies in support of the second special use, case number 264-22-S, requesting approval uh, to use the same subject property as offsite required parking for the benefit of the three proposed affordable housing using, units at 4708 uh, South Marshall Avenue. We are not aware of any community oppositions for this matter. Um, and I intend to present the, the testimony of the four same witnesses, Chairman. Um, do you, would you like for me to introduce them and you can swear them in again, or shall we just continue? Yeah, you can go right ahead. No need to swear them in again, but feel free to, to go forward. Okay, great. Um, the first witness I would like to call uh, for the special use is Mr. Rafael Hernandez. Um, Mr. Hernandez, um, you introduced yourself earlier. You're the master developer for this project. Is that correct? No, we're, I'm the, uh, we're the co-developer okay. for the project, yes. All right. Um, and this subject site is also part of the City of Chicago's Invest Southwest initiative. Is that correct? It is. It's one of the parcels that we intend to build on, yes. Okay. Um, and specifically for 4710 South Marshfield Avenue, that most southern lot, uh, what will the development team plan for the uses there? Uh, we intend to utilize the 4710 lot for parking 
for 46, 4706 and 4708 South Marshfield. Okay. And um, a special use is required in order to uh, have that lot used as uh, a park offsite parking lot. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And why is this special use necessary for this development? Because of the realignment of the lots, we have short lots now that are approximately 95 feet deep. So, uh, and we don't have an alley. So uh, providing 4710 as a parking allows us to, uh, to give both 4706 and 4708 uh, uh, parking spaces. Okay. Um, could you describe a little bit about the the design of the off-site parking lot as far as um, how many spaces there will be? Uh, I can refer that to, to Gabby, the architect, but there's a total of eight spaces with a handicap space included. Okay. Um, and is it correct that at the advisement of city planners, uh, the development team was required to, or recommended to um, reorientate these lots for the benefit of the property use and pedestrian safety? That is correct. Okay. Um, and will the proposed offsite parking be in uh, the interest of public convenience? It is. Um, Mr. Hernandez, uh, did you review and sign the affidavit uh, that was previously submitted with the board? I did. Okay. And your testimony, if continued, will be, be consistent with that affidavit. Is that correct? Yes, that you're correct. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Thank you. Um, I would like to introduce. And Mr. Aaron Wisner as my next witness. Um, Mr. Wisner, I, I only have a, a short question for you. Um, as far as the, the offsite parking lot, um, how who will be able to use it? Will any local businesses or the public be allowed to use it? These will be especially assigned for the, the six units within the three flats for the housing units there. Okay. Um, and how will uh, the applicant uh, sell it on, enforce or uh, make that happen? Uh, we will have management um, located within the, as we mentioned earlier, within this development at multiple locations, including the property um, across the street, um, as well as uh, two blocks away at the corner of Justine and 47th to patrol. If absolutely necessary, um, we would, you know, employ uh, towing service, there will be, you know, proper signage marked around that, but um, it'd be secured. We'll have, you know, 24 hour management and security available to the properties. Okay. Um, and Celadon is the owner of all of these uh, subject lots. Is that correct? That's correct. Currently Celadon Properties is the owner. Okay. Celadon Properties. And um, as the owner of all these lots, you intend or create, have created a deed restriction uh, tying the, that lot, the parking lot, to the residential uses uh, on lots two and three. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Um, and Mr. Weisner, uh, you, did you review and sign an affidavit that was previously submitted with the board? Yes, Stacey. Yes, thank you. Okay. And your testimony, if continued, uh, would be consistent with your affidavit? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Mr. Weisner. Thank you. Um, I would like to call my next witness, Mr. Gabriel Zikowitz. Yes. Hi, Mr. Zikowitz. Um, could you please describe um, in more detail the design of the proposed offsite parking? Um, it's simply um, surface parking accessed from the existing public alley. Um, directly adjacent to the the two three flats, um, we have we have a substantial screening. Uh, we're going to meet all the landscape ordinance requirements, um, and we also have a uh, trash enclosure as part of it. And these uh, parking spaces, how um, do you know how many spaces will be specifically? tied to the residential uses of each um, lot at 4706 and 4708? Um, I, I, at minimum six, uh, I believe all of them, but okay. that might be a better question for Aaron. All right, and um, at minimum three will be uh, specifically assigned to each residential uh, yeah, lot, minimum, yes. right? Absolutely. Okay. 
Um, and will this parking space also include a handicap accessible space? Yes, yes it will. But the parking um, area also be screened from um, the, the street off Marshfield. Yes, um, um, significant um, screening will be at, Mar at the Marshfield end, um, as well as a buffer between the residential portion as well. Okay. Um, is the subject par uh, property an appropriate location for the special use as offsite parking? Yes, I believe it is. Okay. Um, is, it, is the subject offsite parking uh, well within the 600 foot requirement uh, located at 600 foot requirement from the residential building at 4706 South Marshfield Avenue. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Um, is it approximately 41 feet away from the residential unit on 4706 Marshfield Avenue? Um, it appears that it would be, yes. Okay. And um, Will the parking lot be approximately 15 feet away from the residential uh, building located at 4708, sorry, 4708 South Marshfield Avenue? Yes. Okay. Um, other than these uh, two special uses required for offsite parking for this specific lot, is it your exper expert opinion that the subject property will otherwise uh, comply with the applicable standards of the Chicago zoning ordinance? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, Mr. Ziegowitz, in your opinion, is this special? And, the, uh, and of course, the, the special use for the ground floor residential. Okay. <laughs> um, Mr. Ziegowitz, in your opinion, is this special use for offsite parking, um, if, it, if it was allowed, will it have a significant adverse impact on the community um, and the general welfare of the neighborhood? No, it will not. It's, it's access from the alley, um, which other parking would be as well. Um, Mr. Ziegowitz, uh, did you review and sign an affidavit that was previously submitted with the board? Yes. And if your testimony, if continued, uh, would it be consistent with your affidavit? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, I believe my next witness is also Mr. Hugh Edvers, um, but Yeah, let's see. We've got, um, we've got Hugh on the phone. So I think Hugh, if you just push star six, you should be able to speak. Hear me? Yes, yes, we can. So I'm going to swear I'm you in. Yeah, yeah. No, no, don't, don't worry. I'm going to swear you in, and then I'm, I'm just yeah. going to ask the, no. the counselors. Um, uh, we've got a lot of good information here, so the counselors streamline the rest of the presentation. So first, Hugh, will you state your name and address? Yes, Hugh Ed Fors spelled H-U-G-H-E-D-F-O-R-S. And the address is 1150 North Lakeshore Drive, Unit 18K, and that is in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Pardon? What? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. And I want to add that all of the questions, the preceding questions, I have answered those in the written documents that I turned in. Yeah, everything. Right. The, yeah, so, so I have all that written form. If you need to. Oh yeah, it. we've 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 got that in our package. So oh good, um, good. And, and we've all we've all reviewed the package. So oh. you know, with that, up to council if they just want you to send your report, and then if we punt to the board for questions since there's no objectors on this one, but with that council, you can you can take it from here. Uh, very Thank good, you. Chairman. Good. I'll only ask three questions, which since we're sort of blending these hearings, I'll endeavor to do for both the first floor residential special uses and the offsite parking. Um, Mr. Edvers, will the proposed first floor residential uses be compatible with the surrounding area's character in terms of site planning and project design? Yes, they will. Will the proposed special use of first floor residential hurt the surrounding properties? Hurt it? No, not at all. Will the proposed first floor residential uses be in the interest of the public convenience? Yes. Will the proposed off-site parking and the use of the parking lot 
likely be compatible with the surrounding area's character in terms of site planning and project design? Yes. Will the proposed special use of off-site parking harm surrounding properties? No. If the off-site parking is approved, will that off-site parking be in the interest of public convenience? Yes. In your expert opinion, has the off-site parking been designed to preserve pedestrian safety? Yes. And you have submitted an affidavit as well as your written report. And if we were to continue to ask you detailed questions, would your testimony be consistent with that report in your affidavit? Yes, it would. Very good. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our formal presentation. All of our witnesses are available for questions from the board. Great, thank you so much. Um, any questions from the board um, on the project overall or either of the special use pairs? Okay, it's, we've got a lot of good information here. It's a great project. So I appreciate everyone for your time today and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Chairman. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, board yep. members. Yep, thanks Have a everyone. Weekend. You too. Thank you. Okay, let's go to um, the next matter, which is in, we're getting into our continuances. Um, so we're going to calendar number 97-22-S. Um, and this will be with Councillor Barbarian. And if anyone is on to object for this matter, please just raise your hand. We'll make sure that you get an opportunity uh, to speak. Um, Councillor, I see your applicant is on as well as, as Joe Ryan. I'm gonna go ahead and um, your applicant has has permission to talk to. Um, so I'll go ahead and read the department's recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to reestablish a non-accessory parking garage in the basement and sub-basement of an existing office building with 58 parking spaces, provided that the special use is issued solely to the applicant, ABM Industry Groups, LLC, and development is consistent with the design and layout of the conceptual basement and sub-basement plans dated July 13, 2022, prepared by Camburas Theodore LTD Architecture Engineering. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Talar Berberian, B-E-R-B-E-R-I-A-N, and I am counsel for the applicant ABM Industries, Inc. Um, I have on the line with me, Matt Andrews, who is an employee of the company. He is a uh, regional manager and uh, as well as Mr. Joe Ryan, who is the appraiser on this matter. Um, I see Matt Andrews on here by phone um, and I know Mr. Ryan was on earlier. Yeah, uh, um, and, and Joe has been previously sworn and we've acknowledged her expert, his, his expertise. I'll go ahead and swear Matt in just to get it right. over with. So Matt, um, and Matt, sorry, I had to put you on mute during, um, while I was reading because there was some feedback. So you might have to press star six to unmute again. Um, but when you do so, can you please state your name and address? Yes, Matt, Matt Andrews, uh, our, the address is 180 North LaSalle, Chicago, Illinois, 60601. Great, thanks so much. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. So this evening, we're simply here to ask that the board approve a special use to reinstate the existing or the former special use that was uh, approved on the property in 1989. <laughs> the uh, property was used as a parking garage. It's a basement and sub-basement parking garage in an existing um, office space. The reason the special use expired is that the former operator stopped operating and when that happens if a new license is not uh, approved within six months then the special use expires and so we had to apply reapply for a new special use and ABM will be taking over the operation in that garage uh, moving forward. So we're, we've submitted affidavits for everybody. Um, our application did change a little bit um, throughout the process because 
the parking garage is used as a valet garage. However, the department indicated that they needed to have a conceptual site plan showing uh, a legal parking arrangement if the garage were ever to be used as a self-parking garage, which would require a different type of licensure, I will uh, add. Um, that would be issued through the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. So there would be a second level a layer of a review at that stage, if, if ever that occurred. But um, the department wanted to have the, the records from the previous special use weren't great. And so we wanted to bolster the record, make sure there was a legal parking plan on file. So we worked with the department to uh, make sure that was squared away. And so now we're just here to reinstate that parking garage use. Okay, great. So does that second layer of approval, um, Councillor, is does that increase the number from 58 spaces? It does not. No, it would okay. not. So currently, yeah, go ahead. we will go in to get a license for a valet parking operation. Um, that's not a use in the zoning ordinance. Uh, the use is parking garage, which is what we're here for approval for, but we will have to go before the, not go before, but submit an application to the Department of Business Affairs to permit the valet use. Um, but this, if it were to be used as a self park, the site plan we've submitted would would be a, a way to do that legally. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, um, do you wanna get the applicant on and then we'll, we'll just take questions and see if there are any and sure. go from there. Matt, can you unmute yourself again? Thanks. Okay. So, Matt, I guess I'll just ask you, um, do you anticipate that this uh, existing parking garage, basement and sub-basement levels will be used as a parking garage <laughs> moving forward? Yes. And can you confirm that you and your company have extensive experience operating parking garages throughout the city of Chicago? Yes. In fact, ABM operates, I mean, I would say probably 40 parking garages downtown. Is that close to accurate, Matt? Correct. In the immediate downtown area, that is correct. Um, and so Matt, just confirm you'll continue to operate this uh, parking garage, you know, in accordance with the law, in accordance with your licensures, uh, once they're approved and, you know, similar to the way you operate all of the other uh, parking garages and parking lots, ABM operates throughout the city. That is, yeah, that's correct, yes. Um, and then I guess I'll ask Joe just to confirm, oh, Matt, you know, one last question I'll ask you is if you were to continue testifying today, um, we submitted an affidavit on your behalf, just indicating, you know, the operation, the fact that this is a valley operation. Would your testimony be consistent with that, that affidavit that we submitted yes. on your behalf? Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Um, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to question Mr. Ryan, or are you guys comfortable taking his testimony uh, in the form of his report? We're happy to ask him to confirm. Yeah, if you could just swear Mr. Ryan to his Certainly. report, I think that would be best. Certainly. Joe, are you on? I am. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thanks, Joe. So you prepared a report uh, in connection with this application. Uh, is that correct? That's correct. And if you were to continue testifying this evening, would your testimony be consistent with your report? Yes, it would be. And can you just confirm that your report indicated that the proposed special use is consistent with the standards that are required for approval of a special use in the city of Chicago? Yes, I examined each of the criteria for the board to grant a special use and it met all of the criteria. Thank you very much. That is my last question of Mr. Ryan. I'd be happy to answer questions from the board if there are any. Great, thank you. Any questions from the board?
Okay, I don't hear any. We have what we need, so we'll take this under consideration. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for, for hanging out to this point of the call. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Great. Yeah. Have a wonderful week. You too. Enjoy. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, let's go to calendar number 146-22-S. Um, this is the special use at 8128 Southwestern. And yes, um, I'm promoting Nicole right now. Um, and Nicole, I, I believe I remember that we spoke earlier on this call. Um, can you remind me just if you're here to object? And Nicole, you'll just have to unmute. Okay, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, and, and no need to say anything substantive yet. I just want to confirm, are you here to object? Yes. Okay, great. Um, good. So when we get situated, that's good to know. I believe we have Rolando Acosta on for the afternoon. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Good, uh, good evening. Great. And Rolando, just to confirm, that since it's an objective, you have an expert present? We do. Peter Peter Pula should be on the call. Great. And this part was not on my uh, roster. We've got Peter. I'm going to uh, get Peter promoted. Yeah. Um, perfect. So before I read the department's recommendation on this one, um, the process for when there's an objector is first, the applicant will give their case in chief. The board will ask questions based on the substance of that case in chief. Then we'll move over to the objector. The objector has time at that point to state their objection. Um, and also they have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant if they have any. From there, we'll move back over to the applicant for rebuttal and a brief closing if they'd like to take it. Throughout this time, the board may ask questions as they please. So I'm gonna read the department's recommendation and let's get going. For calendar number 146-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed barber shop. Once again, Mr. Chairman, Rolando Acosta here on behalf of the applicant, A-C-O-S-T-A is how you spell my last name. I have with me two witnesses, uh, Mr. Kendrick Brooks, who is the applicant, and Mr. Peter Poulos, who is our <clears throat> MAI appraiser. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I would like to get them both sworn in. So Kendrick, can you uh, state your name and address for the record, please? And Kendrick, you're on mute. Uh, hello? Yep, we've got you. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Kendrick Brooks. And my address is 3809 West 77th Street. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Peter, can you, yes. can you please state your name and address for the record, please? Peter Poulos, address 10109 South 83rd Avenue, Palos Hills, Illinois. Thanks, Peter. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great, and we recognize Peter's expertise based off many past perfor or not performances, appearances um, in front of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Terrific, Mr. Chairman. The matter before you involves a special use for a barber shop at the proposed location of 8128 South uh, Western Avenue. Uh, the proposed barber shop, just in summary, is to be operated in the uh, by Mr. Kendrick Brooks, the applicant here, who is a licensed cosmetologist, barber in the state of Illinois. <clears throat> it propo he proposes to have five chairs uh, and then one for shampooing within the facility. He, uh, it would be operated from, on, from Tuesday to Saturday, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed on Sunday and Monday. And with that, I would like to turn it over. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Brooks, uh, some questions. So Kendrick, you still here and can hear me and have your mic on? Yes, I'm here. Can you uh, can you hear me? 
We can, we can, thank you. Uh, you're a licensed cosmetologist barber in the state of Illinois, are you not? Yes, I am. Uh, and you've had your license for approximately five years? Yes. And uh, you grew up in this neighborhood? Uh, yes, and I graduated from uh, Bogan High School. Which is in the neighborhood? Yes, yes. And you were previously employed at a nearby salon uh, on 79th, 79th Street, I believe, for a couple yes. of years, is that correct? Yes. And that, that salon closed uh, because of the COVID conditions? Yes. And at which point you decided that you would uh, open your own salon to serve the neighborhood? Yes. You have an existing client base from the neighborhood? Uh, yes. That you hope to serve in your salon? Yes, I do. And uh, you also obviously, having lived in this neighborhood for a long time, have many friends and potentially even some relatives who live in the immediate neighborhood. Uh, yes, I do. And they also could ser serve as your a client base for your salon. Yes. Uh, mostly you will operate by appointment, is that correct? Yes, appointment only. Uh, and the hours of operation will be from Tuesday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yes. You will have uh, five barber chairs. Yes. Uh, one shampoo area. Yes. Uh, and you're obviously familiar with Southwestern in this portion of the city. And is there another salon nearby? Um, there are salons, but they're uh, salons for women. You, uh, you pretty much don't see any barber, uh, barber salons on, on that strip and or in, in fact, that area. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You pretty much don't see any barber salons. So clients, uh, when my, the shop that I previously worked in, uh, my clients had to travel to out the neighborhood far distance to get service. In fact, the one that's within a thousand feet of this location serves uh, primarily or maybe exclusively women. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And, and it doesn't seem to be even even at that very active. No, it's not. Uh, you are also familiar with the COVID restrictions for operating salons or barbershops? Yes, I am. Uh, and you will operate in accordance with those restrictions? Yes. The uh, In terms of parking... There's a couple of parking spaces to the rear of the property that can be used. Yes. Uh, there's also parking available along Western Avenue. Yes. Um, and there's also a, uh, a couple of uh, major bus lines, the Western bus and the 79th Street bus, both of which go to the terminal that's at 79th and Western. Is that correct? Yes. So, so individuals could even travel by bus and walk approximately another a block and a half, maybe two, to get to your facility. Yes. Uh, given your knowledge of this neighborhood and how you plan to operate, do you believe your salon serves a public convenience by being located at this location? Yes, it does. Uh, and do you think it provides any detriment or negative impact to the immediate community? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, you secured a couple of letters of support, all of which are in the file. Um, attesting not only to the need for your use, but also your good standing in the community, I'll call it. Is that correct? Yes. And Mr. Chairman, those are part of the record that we've submitted to the board. In addition, you had a meeting with some of the neighbors at the alderman's office regarding this. Yes, uh, I, I previously were, was uh, communicating with the alderman uh, throughout the process, and he should, suggested that I reached out to the uh, some members of the community that's close by the shop and suggested that we, we, we hold a meeting. Um, I Pretty much most people that I, I met in the neighborhood, they were fine. Uh, uh, Miss Nicole, she was pretty much the only person that showed up to the, the meeting held at the Artemis office. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to Peter Poulos. Yep, go right ahead. Uh, Peter? Yes. Uh, you reviewed the proposed facility in the area, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and you formulated an opinion as to its qualifications under the standards for a special use, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. 
Can you summarize that into a report? Yes. And that report has been submitted to the board. Correct. Uh, and did you find that the proposed use would be uh, serve the public convenience in this location? Yes. Uh, is that because there are few other salons in the area? That's correct. Uh, there's also a large population in the area. Right. There's been an influx of residents to the area as well. And also, obviously, Mr. Brooks has a uh, standing clientele that will be served from here. Right. Uh, did you find that, it, that this would have any negative impact on the immediate neighborhood? Um, no, we do not. Uh, this is generally, would you describe this as a mixed use residential slash commercial neighborhood? That's correct. Um, and you heard my question to Mr. Brooks earlier about available public transit at the 79th and Western Terminal, which would help serve this facility. Is that correct? That's right. Alleviates traffic. Yes. Also, the fact that he uh, will operate with appointment only also alleviates traffic. That's correct. And there's parking both on the property, a couple of spaces, as well as along Western Avenue. Yes. It can help service customers. Uh, did you find that the uh, proposed building in terms of site plan and design would be compatible with the neighborhood? Yes, it is as an existing building. That's correct. No change really to the building. That's right. All interior work. Right. Did you also find that the proposed use would be in keeping with the, uh, the, the character of the area in terms of operating characteristics? Yes, the, operation, the hours of operation will be consistent with the businesses along Western Avenue and other businesses in the general area. Uh, and have no negative impact on the immediate neighborhood. <laughs> That's correct. And in terms of pedestrian safety and comfort, uh, did you find that this would be compatible with pedestrian and promote pedestrian safety and comfort? Yes, as there is not going to, as there won't be any changes to the exterior of the, of the building as well. And also occupying this space at some level of safety to the neighborhood as opposed to having it vacant as it is today. That's right. Uh, I have no other questions for Mr. Poulos at this time. Okay, great. Any questions from the board for um for either the, either the applicant or Mr. Poulos before we move over to um, the objector. Okay, there will be another opportunity. So let's move over to um, Nicole. Um, so Nicole, if you could please state your name and address and I'll, I'll swear you in. Okay. My name is Nicole McDonald. I live 2347 West 81st Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you very much. And um, mentioned this earlier, I'll, I'll say it again. You've got the opportunity now to state your objection, but you also can ask questions of the applicant if you have any. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so good evening, Chairman. Um, what leads me to be objective in this matter is there are numerous barbershops and beauty shops in close proximity where Mr. Brooks is trying to open his barbershop. We have Ann's Beauty Shop at 7930 Southwestern, Chicago Silk Press at 7938 Southwestern, Lavish um, Suites Beauty Salon. 8036, Headhunters Barbershop 2617 West 79th Street, Bella Images 2509 West 79th Street, Alberta Salon 8114 Southwestern. Not to mention having a barbershop there to me and my professional opinion, as well as previous experience. I just believe having a barbershop I often cover ups for illegal activities after regular operating business hour, um, pretty much for the purpose of gatherings, party, and so forth. So forth as owners operate, uh, some owners operate business irresponsibly. Um, moreover, having a barbershop in a residential community can cause great concern as there will be an increased amount of unusual foot traffic in the area. And I stand firm in my decision of preventing from opening a barbershop in my community as I'm a vested stakeholder who's consistently concerned primarily for the safety of myself and other residents that reside within my community. And granted, a business license for a barbershop will certainly bring about a heightened level of concern, especially safety concerns, not to mention 
right across the street where he's trying to open his barbershop. That's also a place of worship um, who majority of the attendees are elderly. So a lot of them have public concerns. I spoke to one of the parishioners who attend the church. And like I said before, they didn't even know that Mr. Brooks planned on opening a barbershop because the community I live in is primarily elderly. So a lot of them don't know how to get on the internet or join by via Zoom. Um, as well as not to mention, I believe that him opening a barbershop there will also drive property value down as there is a, I believe a, an apartment building 8124 Southwestern um, and then it's his shop 8128 and then it's another apartment building 8134. Um, so that's my stance on Mr. Brooks opening a barbershop, not to mention, um, parking, parking is already limited where we stay. Um, so it's just a, a numerous of, I just believe it's going to be a nuisance for the community. Okay. Yep. And, and did you, so you were a part of some of the conversations with the older person as well, right? Yes. Let me just say this. It was only he and I who attended the meeting, okay. um, no other residents. As I told you before, um, the community is pretty much elderly. Okay. So a lot of them um, not able to get out. Um, they're not moving around ambulatory um, like you and I. So that posed a lot of issues as well. Okay, yep, I got, I got that. Um, uh, we've got your objection. Do you have any questions for the applicant or have you had ample time to talk? Um, we spoke, um, I don't doubt that he's, um, what he's doing, like I said, is great, but I just don't think the community needs another barbershop. What would he be offering that any other barbershop isn't offering in the area? Um, that's my whole concern. Um, not to mention, we stay close by the Forest Preserve, so it's always heavily traffic area on 83rd and Western. So we, we're having issues as well, too, as it's a place on 81st um, Southwestern where they throw illegal parties and everything. So it's just becoming a nuisance. Um, some people are buying these properties and they're renting them out, XYZ, alcohol, whatever, just increase um, nuisance for the community. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, good. Let me make sure. I want to make sure there's no other objectors on because we just want to get all this information. So if you're also on to object, please raise your hand um, or else we're going to move back, stick with the process to the applicant for rebuttal. Um, so is anyone else on to object? Okay, so let's circle back to the applicant side and the applicant um, has time to rebut and then the board can ask questions if there are any um, or else we'll close out. But again, closing statements are not necessary here. So with that, Councilor, go right ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, go back to Mr. Brooks. Kendrick, um, are you familiar with some of the salons that were mentioned by Nicole? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, also, I would like to add that um, Bell Images was the salon that I previously worked at, and Bell Images is no longer there. Um, Head Hunter, Head Hunters is the only barbershop, and that is miles away from where my barbershop will open up. Open up. And the other so, ones uh, that the other ones you mentioned are primarily women's salons. Yes. Uh, you also. I plan to operate a legal barbershop and not have parties or other types of uses that were mentioned. Yes. You, you've been a member of this community for virtually your entire life. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah pretty much my entire life. Yes. And a good a member, I'll call it in good standing. Yes. And intend to remain in that fashion. And yes. And, and might I add, uh, not only do I, uh, give back to the community with every every year back to school with haircuts. Uh, my family, we always volunteer to give back to the community, whether it's feeding the homeless or uh, donating 
donating uh, clothes and goods to the homeless. So uh, I would never intend to bring harm or be a nuisance to my community. And with respect to the uh, the church across the street, is their service hours mostly? Exactly. Right. Okay. With respect to the uh, the the church across the street, services mostly on Sunday. No yes. service. No, no ma'am, you're sorry, ma'am, you're. We stick to process here. Um, okay. So this is this is a rebuttal. Um, so your your time to speak is done. Yep. Go ahead, counselor. I was I was uh, Mr. Kendricks. Uh, do yep. you know when the services are across the street? Uh, to be honest, I do not know. I do. Not okay. Know. Okay. That that that's fair. But you're closed on Sundays and Mondays. Is that correct? Yes. And you're doing this by appointment, so there shouldn't be excess traffic coming to your facility. No, not at all. I always operate at appointment only. Uh, and my clients book via through app Booksy and uh, everyone else that will be uh, operating out in, uh, inside of the shop will be booking uh, booking only. Okay. So, you know, maximum five customers at a time. Yes. And, and this, this space is very small. So it's uh, you're getting service and you're leaving. Um, and then Peter, you have experience with barbershops and communities and especially looked at this community. Do you think this is going to have any negative impact on property values in the area? Um, no, actually in the report that we submitted, um, and as I have, uh, countless times in other cases, um, we, we've looked at other, other, um, hair salons and barbershops that have been approved within a thousand feet of, of another and we've, we haven't seen um, any detrimental property values. As a matter of fact, we've, we've seen appreciation um, in, most, in most cases. Uh, in other cases, maybe some steady, but never any detrimental value to, to any properties. To some extent, the service for the neighborhood adds to the, uh, the ambiance and the attractiveness of the neighborhood. Is that correct? That's right. The, uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, questions from the board. Okay, we've got a lot of information from both sides here, um, Counselor. So um, I, I think we can take this under consideration. Um, are you okay to waive your closing statement? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Anything to get you home earlier? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I'm home and this is remote, but <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, we'll take this under consideration. We appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have, Have a good weekend. weekend. All right, thank you. All right, let's go down to calendar number 171-22-S. Um, if anyone is here to object on calendar number 171-22-S, please raise your hand and we'll make sure you have the opportunity to speak. As the applicant gets situated, I'm gonna go ahead and read the department's recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair and nail salon. The department finds that the proposal complies with all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance, is in the interest of the public convenience, and will not have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. The department also finds the hair and nail salon will be compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of building scale and design and opening characteristics. Lastly, the proposed hair and nail salon is, salon is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Um, sorry. Uh, oh, Nancy, go ahead. Or, or you're probably just going to yell at me for reading the recommendation. <laughs> I didn't uh, want to interrupt, Mr. No, Chair. That's, um, that's my fault. This, when I saw this is the one pro se today, so um, I I will do this since um, since there's no expert for them. Um, <laughs> so. As you, you already said, um, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair and nail salon. The department finds that this proposal complies with all, comp all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance, is in the interest of public convenience, and will not have an adverse, a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. The department also finds that the hair and nail salon will be compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of building, scale, and design in operating characteristics. Lastly, the proposed hair and nail salon is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Thank you, I appreciate that and sorry again. Um, okay, so 
I want to make sure, do we have any objectors on? Um, I'm giving that opportunity. I said it once, but I want to say it again, just to confirm if you're an objector here, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, Mr. Marshall, are you on? Yes, I am. How are you doing, Mr. Chairman? I'm being on Marshall. Great. Good to see you again, Mr. Marshall. Thanks for coming back. Um, can you please state your name and address? My name is Dion Marshall. The the property address or the address I reside? Um, we'll go. The, the address you reside is probably best. 41 West 21st Street, Chicago Heights, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's um, hearing? Yes, I do. Okay, great. So we've, we've met with you before, Mr. Marshall, and there was the, um, the objector that came after. So for legal reasons, um, we're back here. We're back here now. So can you just give the board a brief reminder of what you're trying to do? And I think um, then we can close this out. So, so I'm doing salon suites, and um, I actually met with the objector. We, we spoke because I followed the rules from last call. You know, you said that when your case was heard, you know, the alderman had good things to say about me opening the business in the neighborhood and everything. Everything went well. And when I got off, I received a call like 45 minutes later, and I couldn't understand why. Because he objected. Yeah, no, case. no, and Mr. Marshall, and, and I apologize for that. That's uh, that's just something we need to do legally. But I'm more looking for if you can give the board a reminder of what you're trying to get a permit for. So if we so, can just talk about your business. Okay, so I'm getting, I'm trying to get the license for people who want to have their own business. They want to control who they are around. They want to have personal relationships and service people within a room. That's what I'm providing to the area for them to create their own professional atmosphere as I create my own while I'm there as well. Okay, great. And just as a reminder, who is vetting um, the people who are renting suites from you to confirm that they have the right certifications? Is that correct? Yes, yes. They all will be licensed people in the field that they'll be uh, representing. And will everyone have to stick to, will you have certain closing hours? Yeah, well, we close the doors. We'll definitely be closing the doors between six and seven. We'll be taking our last clients. We'll be opening at eight, but that's when we'll be taking our last clients. We'll be closing the door. It's a buzzer system anyway. So the people that's coming, they are coming for the one person that's in their room working on one-on-one -on -one basis, basically. Yep. Okay, good. Um, and you said it's a mix of hair and nails. We've got that. Um, any other questions from the board for Mr. Marshall? Okay, Mr. Marshall, we're going to vote on you today. So again, thanks so much for your patience and we will uh, take this under consideration very shortly. Well, thank you. Can I expect to get a resolution by next month for next month? Um, yeah, you'll hear, uh, you'll be able to hear news tonight. We, we vote oh, good. a few left and then you'll hear. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Enjoy the weekend. And, and again, sorry about last time. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. All right. Let's go to calendar numbers 188-22-S, 189-22-Z, and 190-22-Z. Um, all with Councilor Sarah Barnes. Um, is anyone on to object to these matters? Please just raise your hand if you are. And while we're confirming that, I'll read um, the department's recommendation on 188. So for calendar number 188 22 S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends denial to establish residential use below the second floor for a four-story, six-dwelling unit building and six-car detached garage in rear. The subject site is located mid-block of a street that includes both residential and mixed-use buildings with ground floor commercial. The site, as designed, includes a six-car detached garage, which spans the full width of the 50-foot wide lot. After accounting for the wall widths, the remaining width within the garage is limited to the six 
eight foot wide parking stalls and provides no access route from the rear yard to alley for residents to move trash containers to and from the alley. Ultimately, any potential alley storage of all the trash and recycling, recycling containers for the op occupants of these six dwelling units will likely adversely impact access of some vehicles along the public alley, particularly in inclement weather. Based on the foregoing, it is the department's opinion that this proposal to establish residential use below the second floor for a four-story six dwelling unit building and six car detached garage in rear at the subject site is not compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site plan and project design and is not in the interest of the public convenience and will have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. Okay, Councillor, um, you can go right ahead. Oh, yeah, Councillor, your sound is really, really light. Oh, no. Is it better now? Yes, it's better. Sorry, yeah, I you. moved my hat away. Um, and not no to worries. say anything about this honorable board, but I may have to call emergency meetings. I have a nine week old puppy that's here with me today who's been listening to the entire hearing and he's usually a complete spaz chasing himself around. He's been sleeping the entire time. So <laughs> yeah, I might have to put you guys on, on speed dial. Um, but with no further ado, um, I am I do want to be considerate of the board's time since I know it's been a super long day. My only apprehension, Mr. Chairman, is the recommendation from DPD because this is the first time that we're getting it um, despite my previous requests. So I do want to get some information on the record yep. at least. So I apologize. We, if we've got we've got Nancy on. I, yeah, um, we're going to talk internally. I want to see if we can make sure to get people their recommendations um, ahead of time going forward. So great. Yeah, um, my colleague, Mr. Fatikas, and I were going to petition that as maybe one of the new rules to help us prepare a little better and also to make good use of the board's time, especially on these late evenings. So I will do my best to expedite and abbreviate my um, presentation without obviously not um, zealously advocating for my client. So with that, I believe we should have with us here. Um, did any objectors sign in that you know, Mr. Chairman? No, no objectors. Okay, thanks. Um, so with us here today, we should have online um, a Mr. Christopher DeLue, uh, Terry O'Brien, and John Hanna. I think that should be it. Can you just maybe affirm that everybody's on? Uh, let me see. I think I saw everybody. Yep, we've got uh, Mr. DeLue. We've got John Hanna. And, and we've got Terrence, yep. Perfect, okay. I believe that Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Hanna have both been sworn in here today because I think they had other cases. So maybe perhaps we could just get Mr. DeLue sworn in. Great, yeah, Mr. DeLue, can you please state your name and address? Chris, you're muted. He's had a lot of coffee today. Is better now? Yep, yeah, exactly. there you go, Chris. I I can't see a video on myself, but I don't know if that matters. But anyways, okay. You're uh, on now. Chris Delue, 2007 West Charleston Street, Chicago, 60647. Great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Um, and as Councilor stated, we have John Hanna previously sworn in. He remains sworn and same with Terrence O'Brien, and we recognize Terrence's um, expertise. Um, yes. So with that, I'm very happy to be here today on behalf of the Applicant Development Group LLC Bucktown, which is owned and managed by the sibling duo of Christopher DeLue, who we have here today, and his brother, Paul DeLue, who's not with us here today. Um, joining us remotely, in addition to Mr. DeLu, is our project architect, John Hanna, and our expert appraiser, Terry O'Brien. As one more item of quick housekeeping, Mr. Chairman, 
During the last several months of internal review with the Department of Planning and Development, a couple of different iterations of this proposal were contemplated, which such iterations and all of the communications that are related to the same are a part of the record for this matter and two are referenced in Alderman Wagaspeck's letter to this board, which was sent by his office to ZBA staff yesterday. Um, you should also have a copy of that letter in your respective files. Um, these iterations were related specifically to the parking accommodations for the proposed new building as we attempted to balance the interests and preferences of both the aldermen and the affected community members and organizations in contrast with the Department of Planning. For the sake of clarity and for purposes of any final decisions that are rendered by this board and per the alderman's letter of preference, um, the applicant is going to proceed here today with their original proposal and the corresponding applications, um, which such programming calls for the construction of a new four-story, six-unit residential building with a six-car detached garage, the design for which such improvements is reflected in the plan package that is dated November 17th, 2021, as is prepared by Hannah Architects Incorporated. Um, I did advise ZBA staff of this intention prior to the hearing, so those should be the plans that you guys have in front of you. Um, as set forth in our applications, the permitting of these proposed new improvements require a single special use to establish a dwelling unit below the second floor of the building and two variations, one to reduce the minimum lot area requirement by not more than 10%, which will allow for the sixth dwelling unit on this substandard size site. And one variation to increase the area occupied by an accessory structure within the required rear setback, which will allow for the erection of a code compliant detached garage on this substandard size site thereby providing the required secure off-street parking for the residents of each of the units. If I can say anything about the DeLue brothers who have been improving this city with their many residential developments over the last 20 plus years, it is that they do their very, very best to design their buildings so that no relief from the applicable ordinances are required which is why you do not often see them appearing before this honorable board. As such, when approaching the programming for the subject site, which is fraught with challenging topographical conditions and functional hardships, they exercised months and months of due diligence before e even hitting the drawing table with Mr. Hanna, which included garnering preliminary feedback from Alderman Wagaspeck. It was only after these many months of careful deliberation and consideration that the Deleuze and Mr. Hanna created the already generally described programming for the proposed new improvements, which necessarily requires some moderate relief from the strict standards of the zoning ordinance, which such relief is available to property owners when they are faced with unique and difficult conditions. Accordingly, the Deleuze and Mr. Hanna have carefully crafted the programming for the proposed new improvements in consideration and satisfaction of every applicable standard for a special use and for a variation as is set forth in the current zoning ordinance and as is more fully memorialized and corroborated in the corresponding findings of fact that were submitted prior to these proceedings. This same programming was endorsed by Alderman Wagaspeck even before the corresponding applications were filed and throughout the entirety of these proceedings. As acknowledged in the Alderman's letter, such programming has also been met with the respect to, met well with the respective community organizations and the other residents and property owners in the immediate area. In fact, I have received phone calls from many of the residents on this same block 
who have expressed excitement to see the property reactivated and to add new vested residents to this tight knit community. As a quick overview before proceeding to my witnesses, the subject property consists of two contiguous lots of record. As combined, the site measures 50 feet in width by a mere 109 feet in depth, so that it is 16 feet shorter than a standard depth lot, as is defined by the current zoning ordinance. A standard depth lot of 125 feet being that on which the bulk standards and requirements of the cur current zoning ordinance were drafted and ratified. The subject site is sandwiched between two multifamily residential developments a four-story, three-unit condominium building with an attached three-car garage plus roof deck to the west, and a four-story, three-unit condominium building with a full rooftop deck and a detached three-car garage with a roof deck, the access to which is connected to the main building to the east. Both of these buildings and the corresponding accessory improvements were constructed on a single substandard depth lot and therefore would require relief from this honorable board to construct and to occupy under the current zoning ordinance and the interpretations related to the same. And that is both in terms of the number of units contained within those buildings, so the density or MLA, and the footprint of those buildings and improvements. This same general pattern of development is present, present on both sides of this same block of Webster Avenue, extending for several blocks to the west. As already briefly described, the programming for the subject and proposed improvements calls for the construction of a new four-story, six-unit condomini condominium building with a detached six-car garage. Though a roof deck is proposed for above the detached garage, it will be accessed via a separate stair structure that runs parallel to the wall of the garage so that both the principal building and the detached garage with roof deck comply with the 30 foot rear yard setback requirement. Moreover, and in consideration of the policies expressed by Alderman Wagaspak, as well as in the interest of the future residents of the building and their neighbors. The design calls for eight feet of permeable and landscaped open space between the detached garage and the rear of the building, providing an actual rear yard for the development, though no such rear yard open space is required. To wit, both of the developments on each side of the subject site have no rear yard. Additional considerations were provided as well with regard to the massing of the new proposed building, even despite the significant deficit in the depth of the site. Accordingly, the principal building as conscientiously de designed conforms to all of the bulk standards and requirements of the current zoning ordinance, even going above and beyond to provide meaningful front and side yard setbacks, though again, none are required. As such, the Deleuze are not attempting to maximize or inflate the envelope of the building or the floor plates of the units therein. To the contrary, they are attempting to deliver to the community functional and affordable new housing as a viable alternative to the exorbitant single family residences and the impractical micro units that otherwise saturate this neighborhood. At this juncture, for the Deleuze, who are builders by trade, not by investment, this project is about viability as opposed to profitability. Without the requested relief, this project for which we believe that we comply with every single standard and requirement for approval of the same, there is no alternative viable development for this burden site and the Deleuze will most certainly sustain a loss, much less the expectancy of even an unreasonable return on their investment. With that, if there's no preliminary questions, I will get Mr. Deleuze um, on the record, please. Yep, go ahead, Counselor. Thank you. Mr. Deleuze, is it true that um, you and your brother have been 
designing, constructing, occupying residential buildings throughout the city for over 20 years. Yes. And you actually, you live in the city with your family only a couple of blocks from the subject property, is that right? Yes. Towards these ends, um, when designing your buildings, you and your brother are always sure to reach out to the local alder person for the neighborhood in which you are building, as well as to local community members and residents to be sure that your proposals will be compatible with and embrace the character of the respective neighborhoods, while too being mindful of any neighborhood specific policies or guidelines that may not be codified in any of the applicable ordinances. Is that right? That's right. And that's true even if you have what was once termed an as of right project. That's Is that right. also correct? <clears throat> so over the many, many years that you've been developing in the city, um, you've become pretty proficient at adapting your designs to both, again, comply with the strict requirements of the codified ordinances while also making sure that they embrace the character of the neighborhoods and any guidelines and policies that are invoked by the residents of those neighborhoods and the older people. Is that right? We have this correct, yes. Um, and this agility of yours um, was tested and proven true in this very specific instance when you were faced with conflicting preferences from older women Alderman Wagaspak and his community members, as opposed to the Department of Planning. Is that right? right. Um, yet, even with this significantly burdened site, you and your design team were able to come up with two different iterations of this proposal in specific regard to the parking accommodations um, that satisfied each of the respected diverging interests. Is that right? Yes you're kind of your sound is a little bit muted Chris so I just want you to be aware um no worries um unfortunately despite our ongoing communications with all of the respective parties and even providing these two different iterations we were never able to bridge this discord between kind of the local neighborhood policies and the policies and opinions of the Department of Planning. Is that right? That's right. Yes. So you were ultimately forced to choose between the iterations and in doing so deferred to the aldermen and the most immediately affected community members since both of the iterations that were proposed do conform to the specific codified specific specifications of the applicable ordinances. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Yet even still, up to the very 11th hour, you and your brother and Mr. Hanna were looking at the project sideways, forwards, upside down, crunching numbers to see if there was any way to modify the programming further to accommodate all of the diverging interests. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Delu, going back to the subject property, is it true that when you purchased the subject properties over eight months ago that both of the sites or both of the lots were improved with older multi-unit residential buildings? Yes, it is. They were, yes. Um, so then when you purchased the property, you paid good consideration um, for them as they were improved with these existing structures. That's correct, yes which such buildings at the time were generating um, income because they were there were tenants residing therein. Is that right? That's correct. So you paid consideration for improved land as opposed to vacant land. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you also incurred considerable holding costs since the taxes are higher for improved properties than for vacant properties. Is that also right? That is correct. Yes. Yes. And, and ultimately, you were not generating any revenues from the existing buildings due to the COVID rent moratorium. Was that correct? That is correct. Yes. And ultimately, those buildings were vacated as a result of certain circumstances that were beyond your control. Is that right? That is also correct. Yes. Towards that end, and to make matters even worse, shortly after purchasing the properties, both of the buildings, 
sustained substantial fire damage at the hands of the tenants that were living, that were then living in the West building. Is that right? That is right, yes. And you um, and your brother were directed by the city's fire department and department of buildings um, that those buildings were now a, a safety hazard. They contained dangerous and hazardous um, conditions, making them uninhabitable. And you were directed to tear down those buildings. Is that right? Yes, we were. Yes. And you did so resulting in the now vacant two sites. Is that right? That's right. They're vacant parcels now because of that. Yes. Thank you. And this all occurred while you have been working with the alderman and the community um, towards coming up with a viable development project for the reactivation of this site. Is that right? Yes, it is. Yes. Um, and the reason why I kind of alluded to it already, but the reason why this one of the primary reasons why this site is so frustrating is because it is so significantly substandard in depth, um, measuring 16 feet shorter than a standard site. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Yes. And that results in a 800 square feet foot deficiency um, as opposed to a standard sized lot of similar composition. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, further aggravate, aggravating matters, the Kennedy Expressway almost directly traverses the um, site to the east and north. Is that right? It is, yes. So you had to give additional considerations towards noise mitigation and security, which necessarily increases your already exorbitant construction costs. Is that right? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, and then finally, as well, this particular property is still zoned for mixed use, even though almost every other existing improvement on the subject block and moving west for several blocks is wholly residential in design and function, but for one building, and that's the building that actually has its frontage on the corner of Damon, which is a commercial street. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Add to all of that, the less traditional hardships, including a very volatile market, trade embargoes, a supply chain recession, a mounting interest rates, and an over 250% increase in construction costs. And you are quite literally left with a perfect storm. Is that right? That's correct. Um, nonetheless, and despite these many, many real hardships, you and your brother, who have been enduring these same turbulent waters for many years, remained hopeful that you could conscientiously design and deliver, more importantly, a meaningful development to the community. Is that right? We do, yes. Um, once you did finally hit the drawing table with Mr. Hanna after receiving preliminary endorsements from Alderman Wagsback on your concept, it soon became very clear that despite your very best efforts, it would be impossible to craft viable programming for the reactivation of this site without some relief from this honorable board. Is that right? That is right, yes. And that's relief that is expressly available under the current zoning ordinance when people like you are faced with these types of conditions. Is that right? Right. Yes. So Mr. DeLue, um, even though you were aware that the zoning ordinance allows you to petition for this type of relief, at no time did you go into any of this with a presumption that such relief would be granted. Is that right? Right, correct. No, we did not. And rather, you also knew that in order to succeed on any such petitions, you had to design a development that conforms with and satisfies every standard and requirement for both a variation and a special use under the current zoning ordinance. Is that right? Yes, it is. Mr. DeLue, is it your opinion based on the carefully crafted programming and in light of the surrounding facts and circumstances that the subject plans calling for the construction of a new four-story six-unit residential building with a detached six-car garage do in fact satisfy all of those standards and requirements for a variation and for a special use? Absolutely. That's, that's my opinion, yes. Wonderful. 
And lastly, let's get to economics. Um, Mr. Deleu, you heard me refer to this project being one of viability versus profitability. Um, towards those ends, is it true that you and your brother have met with financial institutions regarding the lending that would be necessary to support construction of a new development for this site? We have, yes. And over the six and over six months ago, we submitted certain financial data to this board with your findings of fact that demonstrate explicitly the economics and the risks that are inherent in this project. And that was again over six months ago. Is that is that right? That's right, yes. And those um that data showed six months ago that this project for a six unit building was marginal at best. Is that right? That's correct, yes. And that if all of the requested relief here today um, was granted and you were able to finance and construct the building, that it would result in a very modified, excuse me, modest return on your investment. Is that right? That is right. Yes. Of approximately, again, this was six months ago, that was, we um, estimated that to be around 6%. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. And that falls quite short of maximizing or even neutralizing profits. Is that right? It does. Yes. Um, this financial data, again, six months ago, also revealed that having to attempt to redevelop this property without the requested relief would cause you to maybe, maybe barely break even with a very significant risk of sustaining an irreconcilable loss, especially following the disastrous fire that nullified any potential for readaptive reuse of the then existing improvements. Is that correct? It is, yes. Thank you. And that is so in part because the cost that must be relinquished in order to construct an alternate building, for example, a five unit building, as opposed to a six unit building, those costs are the same as the costs that would be necessary to construct the proposed new improvements. Is that right? That's right, yes. Yet the revenues that would be generated by an alternate building without the variations would be significantly less, thereby not offsetting or compensating for the already expended costs. Is that correct? That is correct, absolutely. Fast forward six months to the present with construction costs and insurance and interest rates continuing to soar and supply chains at a practical halt the viability and financing for even the proposed new six unit building and improvements that do require belief from this board, those start to come into question for you and your brother. Is that right? We do. That's correct. Yes. So then, Mr. DeLu, if this honorable board, goodness forbid, um, denies the requested relief, is it your opinion based on all of your due diligence here um, that you would most assuredly sustain an irreconcilable loss on your investment? No. Yes. And yes. that's true if you were forced to attempt to resell, resell the now vacant land. Is that correct? Uh, they are absolutely correct. Yes. And that's also true if you were forced to attempt to construct and occupy um, an alternate building without the requested relief. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. DeLeo, prior to these proceedings, um, you were provided with an affidavit and you executed that affidavit as well as findings of fact. Um, if you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements and representations that were made in those documents and supporting exhibits? It would be yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions for Mr. DeLue. If you had any um, questions that should be directed um, to oh, Mr. I think DeLue. we should go in, Counselor. And I know we do have a recommendation of denial, but I, I think the recommendation was pretty focused in a way where it, with the next two witnesses, if, if we can 
um, streamline the pace a little bit and focus yeah. on what the denial said. Yeah, what I might do is just get Mr. Hanna and Mr. O'Brien on the record with their opinions, and then we can address those questions because I Great. think we have all of the answers forthcoming. Um, so with that, Mr. Hanna, if you can please go back on the record. That's me. Hi. Um, so you were retained by the Delu brothers to help create a bio, some viable programming for the activation of this pretty troublesome site. Is that true? Uh, that's correct. Um, and as I've already alluded to, and Mr. Delu has kind of affirmed over the many, many months, it's been over eight months, we've, you especially, have been back and forth to the drawing board trying to come up with different iterations that either would require no relief or that could satisfy kind of all of the conflicting um, policies and opinions of both the aldermen, the community, and the Department of Planning. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> and um, despite our best efforts, this is the most viable um, programming and it's programming that is supported and endorsed by the aldermen. And, um, and the community as well. And, but for some of the vari the two variations that we're seeking um, strictly complies with all of the other bulk standards of the zoning ordinance, is that right? Uh, that's correct. Thank you. Um, in reading the recommendation of the Department of Planning into the record, um, there was reference to some concerns being um, asserted about trash removal um, and the fact that this the proposed detached garage, which again was the preference of the alderman, um, necessarily has to occupy the entire width of the lot. Mr. Hannah, is it true that on any, this particular lot is standard in width, is that true? Um, that's correct. And pursuant to the strict requirements of the zoning ordinance, isn't it also true that in order to design and construct a code compliant garage, detached garage on any standard width lot for a six unit or three unit building respectively, it is inherent that that garage will have to span expand the entire width of the lot. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And there is no relief available under the zoning ordinance or the building code from those um, strict requirements. Is that true? Uh, correct. There is not. Thank you. And even still, um, and towards that end, both of the properties on each side of us that have some exact same density as we do, both of those garages span the entire width of their lot. Is that correct? That's that's correct, yes. And in fact, in moving down the lot or down the block to the west, all of the garages for the multi-unit buildings, again, necessarily span the entire width of their, their lots. Is that correct? Uh, it's, it's standard operating procedure. That's correct. Correct. Thank you. Um, towards those ends, trash. We hear it all the time. What do you do about trash? So you have one part of the ordinance that's telling you that for all multi-unit buildings, you have to have interior trash enclosures now so that trash cans do not end up in the alley. But then another part of the same exact ordinance that's telling you that you have to have a detached garage that spans the entire width of the lot. Um, even still, in consideration of those concerns, you and the Delu brothers have designed a, for lack of a better word, patented garage that allows for a gap between, um, an internal gap within the garage to allow for unfettered um, removal of the trash cans. Is that correct? Uh, uh, it's true. And this is uh, more than four or more units require a private refuge contractor. Um, so they work it out with them. And, uh, you know, typical garbage cans are two foot two wide. And, and we, have, we have measured and we are able to get the cans. And I think we have a diagram 
in the package that shows that the garbage can can fit between the cars and out the garage door. Yeah, and Ms. Vazquez, if you're still um, controlling the presentation, there is a site plan of the inside of the garage. That sh there you go. Perfect. There you go. Um, yeah. this, is a this is a depiction of how um, trash removal will work for this type of building. Um, Delu the Deleuze have done it for all of their multi-unit buildings and have encountered no complaints from any of the neighbors for trash cans um, blocking the or even residing in the public alleys. Um, we can get into further detail on that, Mr. Chairman or members of the board, if you have further questions. This exhibit, however, was disclosed and provided to the Department of Planning and Development very early on in the application process, um, and it is a part of the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. Um, moreover, if this were a commercial building or a mixed-use building, which it is zoned for still, um, is it true that any such building, if it had a commercial use on the first floor, could span the entirety of the subject site, so the entire width and the entire depth of the lot? Uh, that's correct, yes. Thereby totally eliminating any open space and once more creating that same difficulty in where do the trash cans for a commercial use go, um, which such trash cans can oftentimes be more extensive than that for the residential building. Is that right? Yep, that's true. Thank you. Um, okay, finally then, Mr. Hanna, um, based on kind of everything that's been set forth today, everything in the findings of fact, um, and just your ongoing due diligence throughout this eight-month process, is it your professional opinion that the design for the proposed new improvements does in fact meet all of the standards and requirements for the specified variations as set forth under the current zoning ordinance? Yes, it does. Thank you. And Mr. Hanna, you too were provided with an affidavit which you executed and a copy of the findings of fact prior to the hearing. If you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements made therein? Uh, it would. Thank you so much, Mr. Hanna. I'll quickly get on Mr. O'Brien and then it's question time. And, and real quick, Counselor, I actually, I yeah. want to see someone raise their hand. So I'm going to promote oh, them quick to yeah. see if they are here um, to object or otherwise. So Jerry Cairo, I'm promoting you right now. We'll go ahead, Counselor. We will. Jerry, are you there? No, uh, I'm. I'm sorry. I was just listening. I have no complaints. Okay. Okay. Great. No worries. So, thank um, you. I'm going to lower your hand for you. Okay. Thanks. Jared, I might have lulled him to sleep. Sorry. Um, okay, Counselor, go ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> quickly with Mr. O'Brien. I promise. 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 Mr. O'Brien, hi. Um, may you once more go on the record as well. You, yes. sir, you, sir, were retained by the DeLue brothers in order to evaluate the subject property, the proposal for the subject property, and most importantly, the surrounding area in order to make a determination, an expert determination, as to whether the proposed residential use at grade complies with all of the standards and requirements for a special use as set forth under the current zoning ordinance. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. And Mr. O'Brien, did you have an opportunity to visit the subject site and to make those observations? Yes, on two occasions, first in December of 2021, and then uh, this past week, July 11th of this 2022. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. And um, as I described the subject area and as is set forth in your report, as well as the findings of fact, is it true that well more than a majority, predominantly all of the improved, existing improvements on this block of Webster Avenue, both sides and moving west are all residential in character and function? Um, to begin with, if you commence at 2008 West Webster, which is really 
uh, the building that fronts on that 2008 in, in east of there is a building that fronts on Damon Avenue. It's a mixed use with some commercial retail on the ground floor and apartments above. Commencing at 2010 West Webster for the next four blocks all the way to Levitt, I'm aware of two commercial uses in that four block strip. One is at the corner of Seeley and Webster, which is several buildings to the west of the subject where you have the Webb Pub. Also located in the next block, there is a four story modern structure that on the ground floor has a law office in it. Beyond that, the entire strip for the next four blocks, excluding St. Hedwick, which is uh, several blocks to the west, is all ground floor residential uses. And you would say, roughly speaking, on each block, there's well over, well, except for our abbreviated block, there's at least eight to 10 buildings on each side of the block. Is that right? That Except is true, and not only that, but in my research, I have found approximately six instances where special uses were granted to allow the utilization of the ground floor for residential purposes. And these were in buildings or locations to the west of the subject. Wonderful. And then Western, oh. Webster Avenue. Yeah, and towards that same end, as you start to move west on Webster Avenue, the zoning underlying zoning classification actually changes over to residential, isn't that right? That is correct. It changes over to the R, R residential, RM5 and R3 and so on and so forth. So in your expert opinion, you've been doing this a while, once you get off of Damon Avenue, which is it, is it your opinion, Mr. O'Brien, that Damon Avenue or this segment of Damon Avenue is a more commercial um, street thoroughfare? Damon Avenue is primarily a, a busy thoroughfare and it is commercial, a substantial amount of business commercial along uh, Damon Avenue. That is correct. And that would maybe explain the anomaly of that corner property, that 2008 building on Webster, which has frontage on Damon having grade level commercial. Is that right? That's right, because it orientates itself to the Damon Avenue frontage. That's correct. Thank you. But then moving west off of Damon, aside from, again, those two other anomalies, which are really more residential type services anyways, Moving west, this is really a transitional area into all residential, is that correct? Yes, it is. It's, and when you say transitional, actually based upon the age of the, many of the structures in the subject area, it would appear to be that it's been residential for a long time. Yeah, and actually, if you uh, look at the zoning map, which should be a part of the record here and is part of your report, but for this one north side block 2000 block of webster avenue on both sides and you can move north and south all of the properties are zoned residential but for this one block of webster that still has this kind of archaic underlying mixed use zoning is that correct that is correct they're primarily rs3 thank you zonings and rt4 yeah and that's um you can see some of that on here. Perfect. Then, Mr. O'Brien, <coughs> in super quick summation, um, is it your professional opinion that the proposed res the proposal, which calls for a residential use on the first floor in lieu of a commercial use, would be compatible with the other existing improvements with in the neighborhood and would not have a deleterious effect on the same? In my opinion, it would be very compatible to other land uses immediately to the east and west of the subject, across the street from the subject, and for approximately the next four blocks in the westerly direction. And Mr. O'Brien, is it also your opinion that um, the proposed residential use below or so below the second floor is um, meets all of the other standards and requirements for a special use under the current zoning ordinance? Yes, I believe it does. And those opinions you have set forth um, in a report 
that is supported by your observations and which was tendered to this honorable board with our findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes, I addressed the criteria for the special use as well as the criteria for the two variations requested. Perfect. Um, well then, Mr. O'Brien, if you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements and the representations as well as the opinions that were made in your expert report? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I have no further questions for my witnesses, but we're happy to entertain any of yours. Okay. Um, any questions from the board or else I want to hear from uh, DPD in order to get to the meat of this, but any questions from the board? Okay, Nancy, do we still have you on? Yeah, I'm still here. Great. Okay, can you um, just, you know, give us a little bit, especially with all the um, the testimony we just got, a little bit of a summary of what, what TPD is uh, thinking on this one? Right, sure. Um, and if I could ask Jeanette to kind of go to that plan that showed the um, kind of layout of the garage with, um, with the parking uh, back. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the, the concern here is um, what you have is um, a special use for ground floor residential with, with not one, but two variations, one for, for density, one for the garage area. And then it, it ends up being um, what happens here is, is I, I don't think DPD is so much opposed to ground floor residential generally at this site. I think this is one of those cases, again, I think where it's, where it's what's being proposed and as it's proposed is, is the challenge. Um, so even though this shows this kind of walkway between these parking spaces, um, if you look at the actual dimensional controls and look at what's needed here, both in terms of the structure and the support, um, that walkway actually encroaches into the legally required eight feet wide stalls. And so what's shown as a clear path actually has the cars pushed over to either side. Um, eight foot wide parking stalls are pretty tight anyway. So, um, so it's just very challenging. And then this particular layout, you know, the, the added concern is, is because of how this has been, um, what's, what's being proposed um, holistically. Um, you know, they, they've got a trash enclosure that basically shows two, I guess, two, two trash um, containers. Um, and this is a six unit building. So, so there's not even room on the site for all of their trash. So I guess the balance of the trash would go into the, to the, um, maybe in the alley or throughout the yard. Um, but it's, it's, you know, the, the big concern is that, um, holistically, again, comprehensively, how this is proposed. Um, there's just concerns that this doesn't um, operate in, in a manner that's um, um, beneficial or without impact, without impact to the, to the neighborhood. Okay, thanks. Any questions from the board for Nancy? I guess just one question to maybe sum up um, I think what you're trying to say, and you correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but the way I the way I understand DPD's objection, it's not so much that the first floor residential is incompatible with the neighborhood, but the, that doing the first floor residential with this many units requiring this many parking spaces leaves no room for the trash, essentially. It, it needs no room for the, the, the comfort and ease and the functionality, right? And part of that is, is the trash and to be able to accommodate that um, accordingly on site and, and um, without having it in, impose on the residents or to actually get it out of there. Um, but you're correct, you know, and, and I believe um, Sarah had a lot of information uh, today, but, but she acknowledged, I think, as she was talking that at one point, and, and I think from the beginning, actually, we suggested they go down to five units. Um, so it wasn't so much the, the ground floor residential as trying to find a, something that, that might work that, that didn't seem as burdensome to, to and impactful. 
Did that Thank answer? You. Yeah, that answers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Any other questions from the board for um, Nancy? Okay, then let's go back to the applicant. And you know, we've we've got a ton of information here. So, counselor, I just ask that you combine a kind of rebuttal with the closing. Um, Am I allowed to put my witnesses back on real quick? I just want to address the specific. Yeah, um, just keep it, just keep it relevant to um, the the DPD rec if possible. Okay, just Thanks. um, we'll start with the last um kind of opinions that were shared um, between Commissioner Sanchez. Thank and thank you for clarifying. Um, and Miss Radcevich. So this six car garage again, this is on a standard width site. So this is a problem. We actually had very <laughs> lengthy discussions with Alderman Wagasback. And as you can see um, in his letter that he tendered to the board, there's a conflict internally inside the zoning ordinance. And that is this type of garage is going to be found in every as of right six unit and three unit six unit building for a double wide lot, three unit building for a single wide lot, which again can be completely permitted as of right, the density including, because the building ordinance requires that these stalls be eight feet in depth, or sorry, width, which necessarily, if you include the building walls themselves, the masonry walls, which again, the garages now have to be masonry, then they necessarily will always occupy the entire width of the site. And that's as of right or if relief's being granted or being sought. Um, so in light of that situation, these developers and property owners and condo associations have been working with the alderman and the community organizations, including the Deleuze and us working with Alderman Wagasback and his community organizations on ways to facilitate getting the trash in and out so that it doesn't remain in the alley. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> Alderman Wagasback, who should be of most concern um, with regard to trash since it's his office who gets all the phone calls when there's a trash can blocking the alley, has said it's not as big a concern for him as is an attached garage, which would alleviate um, some of these concerns. So that's why, again, we went with the proposal we went with. But I would like to get Mr. DeLu back on the record to kind of explain to you how they have been um, facilitating and ensuring that the trash cans do not end up in the alleyway, since that does seem to be the primary concern of DPD as well. Um, so Mr. DeLu, if you can just quickly go back on the record. Okay. Um, yes. so Mr. DeLu, you, as Mr. Hanna, um, indicated, whenever you have a unit with more than four, a building with more than four units, you are required to use private refuse company. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. And can you explain to the board what you and your brother have done to um, adapt these condominium buildings with the um, private refuse companies to ensure that the trash is adequately and safely removed only at the time of trash pickup and then that the receptacles are returned back inside the site so that they do not ever remain in the alley. Can you please just briefly explain that to the board? Yeah, so when we have a building of four more units, uh, we work with a company like Republic Services, for example, and we saw had this regular practice on the, on the uh, outside of the garage and they get the code and they know on that night to come in, um, grab the trash cans trash cans that they provide they don't even want them in the alleys they want them you know so they don't get stolen or destroyed uh they, they wheel them out and they wheel them back in and this is sometimes like many months until we sell uh, a condo association turnover the final unit is sold and you have a condo association uh, turnover and then it's explained to the homeowners that you know this system that's already been in place for many months now sometimes it's uh just a continuance and 
the spaces between the cars. I mean, when you have, yeah, you, yes, you have eight foot, but we do have an extra foot here when you have a six unit, especially you know, most times you, you do. That's why Mr. Hannah drew it this way. And it's just, there's, there's always space between these, uh, between the vehicles to get, to get them in and out. And the homeowners understand that it's not a real nuisance really. And it's just an ongoing standard practice. That's just, you deal with in the city. And they were required. And those, oh, sorry. sorry. And, and um, you, you reduce those practices and procedures. You, you even include those in your um, covenants and for the association. Is that, is that right? When they take over ownership? That's right. So when our uh, our attorney goes and does the condo turnover meeting, you know, they, they elect someone, the president of the board, a treasurer, et cetera. And they, you know, there's not a title for it, but someone's going to be in charge of trash and someone's going to be in charge of, you know, the contact information with the uh, private, you know, refuse uh, company that we've already retained and has already been enacted and explained the process. And, you know, this, this is how it works. Perfect. And that information is going to be given and, and in all of your other circumstances is provided to the local aldermen so that if there ever is any incident, um, they can contact the association president and make sure that it's rectified immediately. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. And again, you have several of these buildings that didn't require any relief that are fully occupied and operational throughout the city. Are you aware of any incidences or infractions with any of your buildings um, with regard to trash removal or having trash cans blocking the alley? No, I'm not. It's quite a simple process and it, it works. And if not, I think uh, Alderman Wagon's back will be calling us. You know, we'd like to keep a great relationship with the community and the Alderman. Thank you. And then just lastly, um, although a five, we contemplated a five unit building, is that right? Even before you started all of this, you looked at a five unit building for this site, is that right? Correct, we did. Um, and that was eight months ago, six months ago, even up until, like I said, the 11th hour, you and your brother were trying to look at the numbers every which way to see if there was any viable way to do five units. And and, and again, still be able to finance and deliver this um, project to the neighborhood. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. And no matter which way you looked and no matter how many different financial institutions and lenders you spoke with, there was just simply no way to get financing for a five unit building on this difficult site in light of just the exorbitant cost. Is that yeah. correct? That's correct. At this point, it's about viability. Uh, this project, a, a five unit building will not get financed, especially now, because, well, not especially now, but considering, well, we're, we're, we're at a loss considering the buildings are gone. So we're saying these vacant parcels, but, um, you know, we, we, we most likely cannot even get, we, we, we would sustain a loss and would not get financing for a five unit building. Let's put it at that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that addresses, I hope, everything. Um, Commissioner Sanchez or any of the other commissioners, chairman, if we missed something or you wanted something to be clarified, please yeah, let me know. I can, I can direct any questions from the board. No, I think we got everything we need to weigh this. Um, Thank you. Then, yeah, yes, we yes. just respectfully... Um, request your consideration and hopefully um, the approval of the requested relief that would be necessary to deliver this to the community. Thank you so, so much for all your time. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thanks. Okay, let's go to the final matter of the day. Um, calendar number 215-22-S. So if anyone is here to object on this matter, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Meantime, as Councilor James Stola gets situated, I will read the department's recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. Okay, Councilor Stola, do we have you? Yes. Um, uh... Great. Okay, go right ahead, sir. Pardon? Go right ahead, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I have uh, two witnesses. Uh, the applicant, uh, Jaime Gutierrez, who will be testifying via his daughter uh, as a translator. 
and also uh, my expert witness, Michael T. Gilligan. So would you like to uh, swear them in and get their addresses? Yep, first, first I'm gonna swear in the translator um, so that we can then get Jaime on. So uh, will the translator please um, state their name and address? My name is Teresa Gutierrez and address is 5040 North Kilbourne. Chicago, Illinois, 60630. Thanks so much, Ms. Gutierrez. And do you swear um, to translate directly from, is it Spanish, just to confirm? Will you be translating from English to Spanish? Yes, sorry, I was muted. Oh, no worries. So um, do you swear to directly translate from English to Spanish and Spanish to English when translating the words of your father? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's um, swear in then Jaime Gutierrez. So um, Jaime, will you state your name or address? Name and address. Tu nombre y tu dirección. Jaime Gutierrez, 5040 North Kilburn. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and, and Teresa, will you just translate the number for the court reporter and, and the, of the address? Yes, 5040 North Kilburn. Thank you. And Mr. Gutierrez, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Que si puedes decir la verdad en la sesión de hoy. Sí, claro que sí. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and then we'll swear in uh, Michael Gilligan. Will you state your name and address? My name is Michael Gilligan, G I L L I G A N. And my address is 10448 Southwestern Avenue. Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Thank you, Michael. And do you swear, swear and affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, go right ahead, Counselor. And just so you know, you've got um, no objectors here. Um, and DP was in, in favor. So um, you can, you can uh, streamline based on that content. Thank you. Um, would you please state your name, Mr. Gutierrez? Your nombre. Jaime Gutierrez. Okay. And you're the applicant for this uh, special use to operate a beauty salon uh, within a thousand feet of another such uh, business. Is that correct? Que si tú, tú eres el aplicante de permiso para poner un salón de belleza que está a mil pies sí. de otro salón de belleza. Sí. Yes. Okay. And in 2011, did you, were you granted a special use for the operation of the same business uh, uh, by the uh, uh, Zoning Board of uh, Appeals for uh, this operation in 2011? Okay, and your application is for substantially the same business that operated for uh, about 10 years. Y tu aplicación es para la misma, el mismo negocio que ha estado operando por ya 10 años. Sí, así es. Yes, that's and, okay. and uh when you attempted to renew the business during COVID or after COVID, uh it was uh the, the renewal was denied and they said you had to uh reapply for a new license. Y cuando volviste a, a tratar de renovar la licencia después de COVID, te dijeron que ya no era posible renovar, que tenías que volver a meter una nueva aplicación. Exactamente, así fue. Exactly, that's what happened. Okay. And so we're applying for a special use today for the operation of the same business. Entonces hoy yes. estás aplicando para esa misma permiso. Exacto. Yes. Right. And we submitted an affidavit indicating that uh, the operation proposed now would it be complying with all the applicable standards of the uh, for special use uh, the special use provisions of the uh, uh, applicable uh, ordinances of the city of Chicago. Is that true? Y ustedes sometieron un affidavit que viene siendo este papeles para asegurar que todo esté en orden de acuerdo a las reglas del son y del del board. Eso es correcto. Es verdad. Yes, that is true. And if you were going to testify further today, 
that your uh, testimony would be in compliance with that affidavit indicating that uh, you are in compliance with the uh, uh, with the uh, applicable ordinances for special use. Me too. Yes. Y estás este listo para seguir tu testimonio y decir asegurar que tú estás en orden con las reglas del estado o de la ciudad este con el salón de vías con sí. el permiso. Sí. Yes. Uh, I have no further questions at this time of this uh, witness, Your Honor. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Um, any questions from the board for Mr. Gutierrez? Okay, Councilor, you can uh, you can go ahead and um, give Mr. Gilligan on. Okay. One, one other, I think one other question, it would be the hours of operation. Uh, what are the hours of operation that you intend to uh, have at this uh, location, Mr. Gutierrez? Las horas de operación del negocio, ¿cuáles serían? Uh, este lunes a viernes, de 10 a 8 de la noche. Sábado, de 9 a 8 de la noche. Y domingo es 11 a 4 de la tarde. It would be Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday from 11 to 4 p.m. The same exact hours as they were previously. Thank you. And on that note, it's safe to say nothing significant is changing about the business. Is that correct? Y en eso, este, no hay nada significante que ha cambiado del negocio, ¿es correcto? Ah, sí, es correcto. Todo está. Yes, that's correct. Everything is the same. Great, thank you. I would like to call uh, Michael T. Gilligan. I don't know, he received... Um, Michael, can you unmute again? No, I'm here. Oh, great. Okay, thanks. I want to state your name and address, and I believe you were already sworn in. My name is Michael Gilligan. My address is 10448 Southwestern Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Okay, and what's the nature of your business? Real estate appraisal. Okay, and um, you're uh, certified and licensed to be an appraiser in the state of Illinois? Licensed in the state of Illinois as general certified, and I also carry the MAI designation from appraiser. So you're, so you're a member of the Appraisers Institute, is that also correct? Correct. Right. Okay, and you had occasion to prepare a report with regard to this location at 6142 North Clark Street, and your observations there uh, in that report was, was completed by you based on those observations. Is, is that right? Yes, it was. Okay. And uh, your findings in that report indicated that the uh, location and the operation would be in compliance with the uh, uh, applicable provisions of the uh, special use requirements of the city of Chicago ordinances. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, and if you were gonna to continue to testify, your testimony would be uh, substantially the same, uh, if not the same as what, what's contained in your report. Is that, is that also correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, uh, I have nothing further. The board okay, any questions? You. Yep, any questions from the board? Okay, we don't have any. So I, I thank everyone a um, lot for sitting on uh, this late into the night, this deep into the meeting. We really appreciate it and we'll take this one under consideration. Appreciate it. I think we're all, we have a, a severe endurance. Thanks, have a good I, I do have a headache, so from listening <laughs> to everything. So thank you. Have a good evening and a good weekend. And uh, uh, I tried to make it as quickly as possible after the length of the last year. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Counselor. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Mr. Gutierrez. Gracias. Okay. Um, one second, everyone. Make sure we got everything. All right. I, uh, I, I move that we convene into closed session pursuant to Section 2C4 of the Open Meetings Act for the purpose of considering the evidence and testimony presented in open session. For those viewing by live stream, we will return from our closed session and the live stream will continue at that point. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, we are closed and we'll see everyone shortly.
Okay, thank you everybody for your patience. Um, I move that we return to open session. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Thank you, I vote yes, um, we are back. And we will now vote. Note that any motion to approve a special use will be tied to the recommendations of the department and any additional conditions read by me. Okay, I move to approve all continuance requests to the date stated by me um, during the meeting today. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, that is approved. Um, I move to approve all withdrawal requests um, stated in the meeting today. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. Those withdrawals are approved. All right, let's get into the call. I move to approve application for calendar numbers 275-21-S, 276-21-S, and 277-21-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. Those matters are approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 219-22-Z and 220-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matters are approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 224-22-S and 225-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, those matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 226-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 227-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 231-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Sanchez? No. Commissioner Esposito? No. Commissioner Toya? No. I vote no, the matter is denied. I move to approve application for calendar number 232-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 233-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 234-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 235-22-Z and 236-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 237-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 238-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 239-22-S. Commissioner Toya, second. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. 
Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 240-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 241-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? No. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 244-22-Z and 245-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 246-22-Z and 247-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 248-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 249-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 250-22-D and 251-22-D. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 252-22-S and 253-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 254-22-Z, 255-22-Z, and 256-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar numbers 257-22-Z, 258-22-Z, and 259-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve the application for calendar number 260-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 261-22-S. 262-22-S, 263-22-S, and 264-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. Those matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 97-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 146-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 171-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 188-22-S, 189-22-Z, and 190-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? No. Commissioner Esposito? No. Commissioner Toya? No. I vote no. The matters are denied. I move to approve applications for calendar number 195-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 215-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. 
I moved to approve the written resolution containing findings of facts consistent with the votes of the board for board calendar numbers 81-22-Z, 92-22-Z, 138-22-Z, 139-22-Z, and 124-22-A. Commissioner Toya second. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, they're approved. I move to approve the written resolutions containing findings of fact consistent with the votes of the board for the board's June 17th, 2022 regular meeting with the exception of board calendar numbers 199-22-Z, 200-22-Z, 202-22-Z, 203-22-Z, 204-22-Z, 205-22-Z, 210-22-S, 216-22-Z, 11-22-S, 116-22-Z, 117-22-Z, 118-22-Z, 199-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, they are approved. Um, I move that we adjourn the meeting. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, we are adjourned and I wanna give the always thanks to staff and the legal team, but a super special one this week because they put a lot of work in, a lot of things going on and a lot of moving parts. Um, so we really appreciate you all. Um, Victor, Jeanine, Jeanette, Nancy, everyone. Um, so thank you and everyone enjoy this month of summer. All right. Thanks.